Good morning and welcome to the Coolidge Cricket Grounds here in the north of Antigua. And actually the place that you can get perhaps the most direct view of Flat Barbuda. We're delighted to greet you. My name is Seth Burton and with me is Marley Richards. We're here because it is the final match of the CWI Tri-Series. In fact, being dubbed the Headley Weeks. Or if you want to turn that around and say the Weeks Headley Tri-Series. This tournament uh, being inaugurated by CWI, bringing together two senior teams, Team Weeks and Team Headley, and the West Indies Cricket Academy. As we are here for the final game, the Cricket Academy, they have already played their two matches and they ended with a win, first against Team Headley by seven wickets and then against Team Weeks in the game that finished last weekend they ended with, well, in fact, winning on first innings. Excellent performance. But today, the two seniors, Team Weeks and Team Headley, will clash. Mali, just before we go into the toss, there's much to play for. Yeah, very much so. Uh, almost the seniors now uh, on exhibition here. Maybe more of the present of West Indies cricket. We saw the future. Uh, with the West Indies Academy and just how well they would have acquitted themselves in those two matches. But now Team Headley, Team Weeks, both will be looking to end this inaugural Headley Weeks Tri-Series on a positive note. On a positive note, and a positive note may mean some outstanding individual performance uh, as we have seen some excellent individual performance from the Cricket Academy players. This morning, Joel Manning was at the pitch side for the toss. Good morning and welcome to the final match of this Headley Weeks Tri-Series. It's Team Weeks taking on Team Headley. The captains, Alec Athanes and Joshua De Silva. The match referee for today once again, Mr. Stephen Proverbs. Joshua De Silva, he has the coin in his hand. Tails is the call. And it is heads, so Team Headley has won the toss. All right, what are going to have to do today, Josh? Oh, we're going to have a bat. All right, any particular reason why? No, the pitch just looks a little dry. Um, it just looks like we're going to get the best out of it, hopefully early up, and, and do better than we did in the last one. All right, so you had one match already. Any changes coming into this one? Uh, yeah, we have Darren Bravo out with Stiff Neck. Um, so um, the rest of the boys, Moti is also still out. So yeah, the rest of the boys got to go. And then finally, what are you guys hoping to achieve in this last match here? Uh, just stats. We want to get our stats up. We want to play well. We want to win as a team. We want to show everybody here wants to show the selectors what they're made of. So yeah, just okay. put a good, good performance in and, and hopefully get the result we're looking for. Yeah, thanks a lot, Josh. All the best today. Alec Athenes, no you've Cheers. lost the toss once again. All right, so what are you going to do? Or rather, how you feel about the fact that you guys have to bowl first on the surface? Uh, well, <laughs> not too good, I would say, but I, I would have batted as well. Like you said, the wicket looks a bit dry, and I really? know you would really get the best out oh, of it right yeah. now. Oof. Any changes for your side today? <laughs> yes, um, Jamal Hamilton is out, and Brandon King is out, and Raymond Riffa comes in, and Devon Thomas comes in. Uh, Josh talked about getting those taps up, getting a good performance. What are you guys hoping to accomplish here for this last match? <laughs> I think it's like you said about it. No, it's not really about stats. I think it's to, to you know, get yourself in target, get yourself in some good form because a lot of cricket is coming up. Um, I think it's really about improving our personal game. So we're just really looking to, to build as a unit. I'd say. Cheers, Alec. All the best today. Well, there you have it. News from the toss. Team Headley, they've won it. And they're going to have a bat first. So, as you have heard, Team Headley winning the toss and deciding to bat. Josh De Silva, uh, Mali Richards, he would be thinking that he did very well. In fact, he was the first to register 100 here. And that was, in fact, the trailblazer of the 300s that we have seen. In fact, uh, we would say 200s and a double 100. But Josh De Silva, in that opening game, scoring 136. So, he would like, he would be happy to have his team batting first. And now we see what is happening the two openers are emerging as we look at the teams though Mali we have had some changes uh forced one by injury uh the other situations uh not really forced but uh, I'm, 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 uh, it may well be tactical because team Headley uh, they have brought in Matthew Nando the young Guyanese left-hander who scored 100 on debut and you may have said pleated away a little bit naturally he will be happy to get into the team here out on this occasion we have darren bravo uh, they says he has a stiff neck and uh well good to catch moti he had been out from the start also 
uh, being injured at this time. But on the team uh, week situation, there are also two inclusions. Yeah, um, obviously Raymond Reefer, he comes into the squad. Jamal Hamilton misses out through injury. We saw him suffer quite a nasty blow to the to the leg in the previous match. Devin Thomas will keep wicket in his absence. And that's about it, really. A couple changes for team weeks. So we're just seeing guys that, uh, the more experienced guys, the guys that would have played international cricket and test cricket most recently, now come in for this final match, which seems to me like it was a, a planned situation. The plan was to probably expose the players that we probably wouldn't have known as much about. And now here in the final match, we see players such as Rifa and Thomas coming in for team weeks. Yes, and it looks like, well, Kyron Powell would have young Nando partner in him. Therefore, he has to set an example. He has to be the model. It looks like Raymond Rifa will pick up the attack from this the broadcast end. And he will be bowling to Kyron Powell. Uh, we're expecting good competitive uh, a good competitive match here. Bragging rights uh, will be the order of the day, but individual performances matter. And I think the players are cognizant of that. Yeah, and Kieran Powell in particular, we spoke about at the start of this tri-series just how important this opportunity was for a player such as himself. And here he is again. He probably would want to start better here in the first innings. And what he did previously against the West Indies Academy. The first inning is actually getting removed for a duck by Johan Lane. Would have just faced the four deliveries. So in the second innings, he would have looked a lot better, more assured. Played a few spanking drives through the offside. But he was removed by a pretty good delivery from the young Kelvin Pittman. We think about that spell as well. Yes. So here, here is Reefer. Oh, that's straight off the middle of the bat. Ball one set. <laughs> Greetings. That's what he says. Just easy as that. Uh, probably looking so good just on the back foot and as usual. In fact, he's adept both at the back and the front foot play. He plays that cover drive with so much assurance. Yeah, when he's playing well, uh, the offside is he's really flowing and fluent through that offside of both front and back foot, as he said. A good start. Good start. This pitch looks a pretty good pitch for batting here. Oh, that one came back late. Not Powell was not playing a stroke at it. Yeah, not quite the amount of grass that we would have seen previously. In the previous two matches, actually, we've moved now back onto what the second, third, fourth, fifth pitch on the square. More central here at Coolidge. Just a little uh, observation. Reefer is coming in with the first. I know he's the test uh, player on the team, but given our sighting of uh, the others, Drakes, McCaskey in particular, uh, Naeem Smith, would you have gone for Reefer straight up? Um, it's probably here. You can tell maybe he's just been given a workout here and they're having a look at his bowling as well in this match steer nicely Powell looks are uh, quite relaxed here at the start of hit the innings because to be fair to, to Raymond Reefa he would have come into first class cricket more as a bowling all around that's right and recently, especially when he's made his test debut and been around the squads and even played some one-day cricket, he hasn't bowled as much as you would think. So here, probably just being given a slightly different role again, almost. Back to the future a bit. Yeah, that's a notable observation about... You know, uh, back and forth as an all-rounder. The well, I, I don't think there is any challenge in being an all-rounder. I think 
you're expected to be an all-rounder if you're an all-rounder. Uh, the issue is that some may, 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 may taper towards batting more, some taper towards bowling more. The balanced all-rounder would just be a genuine all-rounder, but how they're used. Yeah. And to be fair, I think the challenge is physically, Seth, That's more than goes. anything. As Reefer ends the first over here today. Team Headley, six without loss. Yes, you were saying the ch challenge. The challenge is, is, is physic physically uh, a lot, especially for genuine all-rounders, fast bowling all-rounders, batting all-rounders who bowl medium pace. It's, it, it's uh, being able to deal with the physical workload more than anything. And also, uh, just how much time is devoted, especially in training, to, to, to the different disciplines. It's always a fine balance, especially when you're a genuine, genuine all-rounder. It's, it's a lot harder yeah. than you think to maintain. Yes. You know? <laughs> <coughs> it depends on the, the team's demand as well. Mm. You know, how balanced is the batting that you're not off. expected to be the mainstay for both but what it does though is is, is especially genuine all-rounders really afford the team balance that's right uh, especially uh depending on conditions you know if you've got that extra bowling option or or even batting option you know in spin friendly conditions you could probably play the extra spinner in fast bowling conditions you can play the extra fast bowler even in the extra batter as well so here is Naeem Smith. Well, Nando was leaving that one alone. Kept a bit low for my liking. Uh, but these two know each other well. They represent the same team. So, yeah, so I think what's happening, what's going to happen here over the next couple of days, especially if it stays as hot as it, as it is now, is that this pitch is going to be absolutely fantastic to bat on, probably today and most of tomorrow. But as this game wears on, this ball's just gonna we're gonna start seeing that inconsistent bounce that we've grown to see here. Ball's just scooting through a bit lower than batters expect. Well, in fact, we're we're clear here. Today is going to be a hot day. We have already had Met Met Office warnings, okay. so we may have some of those breaks again. Yes, double the breaks. They say between ten and four, if it's possible. Yeah, avoid the sun yeah and what i noticed in the uh, last game when we did have those excessive heat warnings was the breaks came every 40 minutes that's a, right as opposed to every every hour, hour yeah. which is good thinking on the part of the umpires here it's amazing how how cricket can sometimes apply that thinking to some things and not to others Took well he gets win. off the mark nicely he does so with a boundary. The youngster must be confident now. He's having a chat with Powell. Got to that one though on the pads. So he could have worked it wherever he wanted. Well, Niall Smith, he's already started here uh, to the left-handed Nando very differently to the previous match. He's forced him to play a lot more already just the three deliveries but he's just shows you that fine balance he's just started on a little too straight and nandu gets away with a sweet bit of timing through the onside and that may be a discussion that they may have had he has resorted to the <laughs> <laughs> first game line that's what four that's what four <laughs> runs you do to you <laughs> <laughs> it may be a discussion that they may have had at the team level or with the with the coach, the Definitely. bowling coach, that he was just spraying the ball too much outside the off stop, really wasting the new ball. So then he resorted to a line of attack. I wouldn't necessarily say spraying, but I would just say just a little bit too, too wide. wide. Mm -hmm. And that's something, as you said, I'm sure Kirtley Ambrose would, would, would have spoken to both teams about, you know. Still good on the stumps. Tight lines, tight lines here from Smith. He's made the adjustment. Not quite the, the movement yet. As we said, less green grass on this pitch. Uh, hot day. 
it's looking a pretty good wicket for batting. Well, you know, uh, Mali, we have our two friends from Trinidad and Tobago. I didn't quite get their name, but two very knowledgeable gentlemen. Yes, or are they back again? And they're back again. I actually call them the West Indian grumpy old men. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope they don't <laughs> hear you. Yeah, I, I told them. I, I said that to them. They, they, they loved it. They, were <laughs> they laughed. Uh, <laughs> One said, oh, do you know there's a movie like that? <laughs> Ten without <laughs> loss out of the two of us. Oh, 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 there is a movie like that? Yes. Oh, so I said, yes, that's why I said it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But they they, have, they 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 stimulate you yeah. in terms of cricket in history. And they do, they do. I'm just wondering. I think sometime during the, the the day we'll see if any one of them would. You must you must brush up on your movie set. Jack no, Lemon. I'm, I'm Jack Lemon and Walter <laughs> Walter Matthau. I'm I'm terrible on movies. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I am sport news. <laughs> they were funny. And business. That's, yeah, they. I'm I'm getting there. Yeah, you know because. Yeah. Sometimes you have the wife and children yes, want to watch a movie yes, and I'm falling asleep, yes, man, in watching. the middle. <laughs> 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 Domestic life, huh? I, I will brush it. <laughs> <laughs> Good contest here. I like to see how Powell, in fact, every delivery that he has played, he has middled it. Yes. It has come, even the one that he steered uh, with soft hands uh, past Gully. He looks to be in command. He looks to be uh, in touch, if we will go back. He got docked in the first innings of their game against the academy. In the second innings, then he got at least up to 20, but really did not bat on. Got a snorter from Kelvin Pittman, absolute, which really... Yeah, not A special half. delivery that yes. you won't see many more like that. For sure. <laughs> to reefer. I guess now I saw that little shuffle. Uh, sort of second time. Yes. Yeah, he's just, just looking to advance slightly to Rifa. And one of the shots that he has played, not against the pace, but against the spin that I think has created his downfall many times, he walks down the track and he looks to hit the ball down the ground. He, he's successful on many occasions, but oftentimes he is left stranded. So perhaps his thought and his mind, his mindset... <coughs> This time he blazes that one for four. Authority, power, and precision. Powell is on the go. Yeah, authority indeed. That one was hit uh, on almost the top of the bounce from Reefer. Not quite a long half volley, but it was full in length. But it was the width that was prevented by Reefer. They allowed Powell to really free their hands through that one. And he started brilliantly here. And he, he will have fond memories of this ground. Yes. He burst onto the scene here the at the for coolest, T20? Yes, as a 16-year-old, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Somewhere around there. You also played in that tournament. I did, yeah. For the second Barbuda, He played for... Nevis. Nevis. Also, when I looked at Jama Hamilton's uh, profile picture on, on the site, I said... That looks like a Jamal Hamilton that you would not recognize because <laughs> he's now fully bearded and you don't see any resemblance. Mm, that was from the, the Sanford T20. Yep. That tournament really, I, 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 you know, something like that is a platform, a model on which we could have built stronger teams, stronger franchises, a stronger West Indies team. But it's almost come full circle a little bit in terms of just what you're speaking about in terms of building because this facility here that we're That's at right. was actually <laughs> built by Sal and Stanford. It's now owned by Cricket West Indies. That's right. And uh, it's, pr it's housing the next generation of West Indian cricketers as we speak. <laughs> Developing. Uh, we know Cricket and West Indies have got some pretty big plans for this property, for That's this right. area to develop and you know to put a hotel and more accommodations and develop the nets even more so a lot a lot going on so it would not just be the home of west indies cricket but the center of excellence i would say of west indies cricket 14 without loss after three a good start so far by Team Headley. Yeah, and Powell in particular. Just almost picking up where he left off before, he, as you said, he got that snorter from Kelvin. Yes. Pittman. He was looking pretty similar. Really looking good. Yeah. As well, you know, uh, was playing some sweet drives, especially off that front foot through the offside. You know what he said to me? 
he said that delivery was special. He said, I don't think he can bowl one more like that. <laughs> so who else would he bowl that against? Yeah, you know. Sometimes well, you have this little team rivalry and Pittman was really on a, you know, it was perhaps the best spell we would have seen from Pittman himself in which he got three wickets. Yeah, just giving us a glimpse into to what could be, you know. We saw that with Kirk McKenzie as well. Uh, Kevin Wickham. That's right. So when we look at how things are panning out. Once again, Smith strays in that line. When we look, the youngsters have really uh, come up well. Kirk McKenzie topping the batting so far. 271 runs, an average of 90.33. That is in uh, his two games here. 221 is highest score in the, s in the first innings of that match against Team Weeks. Uh, then we have Kevlon Anderson. 195, including his top score of 153, with an average of 65. Josh De Silva, we mentioned that he did score big, 136 not out. He has 139 runs uh, so far. So in the in the two matches that the West Indies Academy would have played, we would have had two batters go above 150. That's right. So we've had one. One double century, one batter above 150, 50. and another century. Century well. from, from Wickham. From Wickham. Yes, and Wickham. So far, the standout batting performances. And, uh, and, and if you think about just where West Indies cricket has been weak in the last 20, the 30 years, is our batting. So that should give us some, some hope. Some hope indeed. Matthew Nando, another one who perhaps can make a statement here. So with Wickham's 100, so we would have had uh, at least four batters scoring 100. Wickham scoring his, uh, well, 123. He, what, 126 runs mm. in total here. But Mac both McCaskey and, and Brendan King, they came close to 100s in the 90s, did not get it. Uh, we saw Kevin Sinclair getting into the 80s. It, it did not go beyond that. Uh, we saw a couple of other half centuries, but I think the standout would always be the 100 and also the consistency of a player like a Kevin Mc, uh, McKenzie. Kirk, sorry. Wide delivery from Niall Smith. So when McKenzie set it up nice with a half century and then a commanding knock of 221, yeah. you have to say consistency. And as much as they would have been hitting balls and doing drills and, and the like. I think fitness is so key in That's these right. situations, especially for these batters to go as big as they have. There's a reason why it's the academy batters that have gone as big as they have, you know, Seth. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. No, definitely not. It's not a fluke. Oh, that's wide of the off stump. You look at Ashmead Ned, you can tell just yes, how fit. You did mention that. Are so the system, that the system is working. I think. The system is working. Yeah, and, 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 and uh, not as much emphasis, I think, is placed on, on the fitness. Yes, the skills. Obviously, you've got to have the skills. And guys are working on the skills. But the constant yeah, I training. Think, I think it's, 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 it's a testament. To, yeah. to fitness as well when you see opening batters batting An well over day. 100 overs you know in a day and looking fresh coming out the next day right. looking for more you know and in very hot conditions here very hot conditions well the over has completed has been completed the fourth of the day it's a maiden over 14 without loss, the first maiden of the innings, but not a particularly good penetrating over. So you have seen it, it's all uh, Mackenzie with his uh, excellent 221 being the highest score of his 271. Again, the academy, Kevlon Anderson, 195, including his 150. Uh, Josh De Silva, his 139, the only player outside of the academy to score 100. Mm. Then we had our young uh, Kevin Wickham with his 121. Uh, from his 126 total. Otherwise, relatively uh, good batting performances. Reefer is not ready. 
dead ball call. We have umpire Brathwaite who is standing at the this the sudden end, and umpire Leslie Reefer Jr. Is it standing at the well? He's at square leg now, but he stands at the northern end. So these two are ensuring that things go according to plan. On the stumps, and he gets a quick single. We for not happy. But when we hear about Headley Weeks, uh, especially for our younger audience who may not know, George Headley, the man who, uh, one of the men, uh, is an outstanding, he's considered the father of West Indian batting, George Alfonso Headley, born in 1909, Mali, quite a long time ago, mm. died in 1984. That was before your time. No, it wasn't actually. At I was one. You were one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I I did stop you around there. Yes, you're uh, 1983 baby. That's right. Than I know. <laughs> <laughs> he died at the age of 74. But George Headley was an outstanding West Indian batter. In some way, uh, when they used to call him the Black Bradman, his fans used to say, "No, Bradman is the <laughs> is the white head." <laughs> That's how outstanding he was considered. But he only played 22 test matches. Mm. Uh, between the wars, would have played, uh, well, started his career in the 1920s. He would have a remarkable record. Though, exactly. 22 was. matches, an average of 60.83, still mm. the fourth highest <laughs> average in test cricket. So you get a sense of that. And from those 22 test matches, 10 hundred. Yeah. 100 every other game. <laughs> That, that is sort of amazing. And five half centuries. His highest, 270 uh, versus England in 1935. Played over 100 first-class matches. Naturally, would have been to England. And he would have been one of those players who have a sort of dynasty. His son did play test cricket for the West Indies. His grandson also. And for England. For England. Dean. In well, Dean. You remember that? Yes, that tall yes. youngster. Played only 15 tests. Dean. But... 60 wickets from 15 tests, that's quite good, but o injury. Only, only 15 tests? I'd, yeah. ki I'd kill for one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I, I appreciate that. appreciate that. But I said only yeah. in the context of, you know, what opportunity was there for him. You, had it not you. been for injury. Right, right, like right. He played just seven less than his granddad. Mm. <laughs> and uh, when you look at those players... He had 33 hundreds from his 103 uh, first-class matches. So you've seen what? Just every, a run every three, scorer, just yeah. 100. He just that perennial run scorer. Still has the fourth highest carry average, as we said. And he is actually the fourth in terms of the length of his test career, spanning, what, 24 years. And he has been celebrated by <laughs> CWI. Also by the International Cricket ICC. He is known as that man who many believe. In fact, he did score 100 on debut against England right at Kensington Oval in 1930. Scoring 176. His last test was also against England in 1954. So George Headley. They would call him the father of great West Indian batting. And you know who are the great ones who followed him. <laughs> Nando trying to Let's rotate the, the strike. Over completed. One run scored in that over from Raymond Reefer. Powell is in double figures. Nando is still on four. And good cricket still. Yeah, Nando looks a quite a compact, uh, nuggety type batter, doesn't he? Yes. Just uh, likes width as well, but also likes the ball on his pads. You know, if you just stray onto those pads, looks to whip it through the unside. He's quite diminutive. Yeah, uh, in stature. Yes, uh, looks almost like dwarf to Powell. And Powell's a tall guy. He's a big yeah. guy. Yes. Well over six foot. Yes, he's maybe the shortest of the virgin you'd get in. Guyana by the name of Ch Charles. That's right. Uh, we could keep <laughs> uh, his brother. Uh, Nasty Dion Ryan. That's right. Not mm. a very tall uh, player. But a very good player. Yes. Sweet, sweet time of the ball as well on his day. Well, we are seeing a change immediately. It tells you that Mali is correct in terms of Smith's line and young Drake's, Dominic Drake's. 
to power wrapped on the pad not given oh, oh, oh. but you ask yourself the question <laughs> what would have caused that first ball up he wants to go over the top we'll have a look at that i think he got length there power and the, the 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 mood that he's in he's looking to be aggressive Heading down leg. Heading well down leg. Probably just recognized that line and saw it almost as a free hit. Wanted, perhaps I believe he really wanted to hit that hard. Probably went to hit it too hard. That's probably why he missed out. Just like that. He doesn't miss out this time. That's well timed. But at least there was McCaskey on the boundary. Backward of square. And he was able to collect easily and i think this is honestly when kieran powell is at his best um when he's looking to be ultra ultra aggressive uh, I, I said mccaskey but that's Ma McAllister, McAllister, yes. yeah not ultra aggressive but looking to be positive when yes. he's looking to play shots it sets him up for, for for a better defense as well down the leg side again a big chase by McAllister. But he does not stop it. Nando gets, in fact, leg by. Signal by umpire Reefer. The question is, one fast bowler strain too far outside off has been pulled out of the attack. The other one starts going down leg side. Yeah, and this is uh, almost a bit more of the same from what we saw from Dominic Drakes in the previous game against the West Indies Academy. Just inconsistent in his lines and lengths at times, bowls genuine wicket taking deliveries but at other times it's a little too inconsistent Jeez. that's a better delivery got some bounce on it a little pace bowling to both left-handers uh would need to have that line that line just a touch outside the off stump on wicket i taught the left arm uh, raman simmons who came in as a replacement during that game for kelvin Pittman, also showed them that you can attack stumps and hit stumps and that's something he would have been uh, doing a lot, especially last year during the CPL, uh, really honing those skills. And the covers up well. You know, looking to land the ball on the pop increase. That's a skill that translates throughout formats, regardless. That's right. To be honest, that you So the strength of learning and, and, and bringing that particular skill into but also the innovation to counteract that is what we've seen batters come up with the A.B. de Villiers uh -huh. the, the Tiller Karatni Dilshans the Scoop the Naram you know uh, well, I would love to see how a Curtly Ambrose would <laughs> no honestly it would be fascinating that's right um, oh Nandu almost was in a situation where he was trying to decide whether to play or not to play he was going aggressive I got the impression halfway through deciding should I that one went between bat and pad. Yeah. Good end for him, though. Six overs completed, 20 without loss. Yeah, because if you remember, Kurt Ambrose also possessed yes. that slower ball. Slow ball. Going for the Yorker and that length ball and that bouncer, but that slower slow ball, ball that he bowled to, I think it was Ian Healy at the time, yes, properly outfoxed him. But at the time, we didn't see too many bowlers so, bowling that. So you, you're speaking about... A.B. De Villiers, who is one of my favorite batters. Mm. I was trying to explain to one of my sons about your dad. And I said, okay, you would have to combine A.B. De Villiers and Virat Kohli. Mm. <laughs> so my son asked me, he's so good. <laughs> 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 Lovely shot. And that was so good from Powell. He really just leaned into it and punished it over mid-wicket. And he is delighted. You can tell he comes out here, uh, Powell, and he's saying, I am not mincing any matters. The first maximum of the day. Yeah, and he's picking up that inner length really quickly here, Kieran Powell. Uh, that time again, recognizing that ball, just angled in, sliding down the leg side. No, uh, yeah, just the fielder at square leg, really, in front of the wicket on the onside. And it's a free hit. And he fully obliges. Six runs, as you said, uh, as they now send back the man via Sammy Pumal to the mid-wicket boundary. I guess that was in his intention in the previous over for Drake's first ball. That's close. That's close. 
that he's not stopped crying. No, nah, he's that's close. I, I guess why. maybe it's a bit high because the front foot is down the track. He's not even moving. And that extra decision perhaps created some doubt in umpire Brathwaite's mind. We look at it. Yeah, he's here outside the line here as well as we see him. Just yes, outside the line. Again. Yes. Yes. It was also heading down. But a good shout from Raymond Reef had a good loud shout. But Powell, like the umpire, was confident that it was not. And, and w sorry. But that little movement, him advancing again, just getting outside the off stump, that is what would have saved him there on that one, sir. <laughs> He's really concentrating. But the point I was making, and I didn't just bring it up because of your dad, you mm. spoke about innovation, and a lot of us sort of believe innovation started just around T20. Right. But I used to see Saviv just move across the leg stump in fact, I saw young Joel Andrew play a shot. Similar. And I said the last time I saw a shot like that was for some survey right across and glanced the ball over square leg for six. And he would also allow a ball outside the off stump. You, I, I, you'd hear the bowlers shouting as though they think he would have been bowled. He stood there and he just steered it down to a fine leg for four. Yeah. Right. He would have changed entirely when you see A.B. De Villiers going across to the paces and hitting over square, hitting over cover. The, that was almost, he didn't perfect it, but that replication. Yeah. So innovation is about how do you seek to adjust based on circumstance and stay cutting edge at the above time. the rest yep. at the time. Yep. Oh, lovely uh, way to play the bouncer. Oh, no, no, it no. was not a, 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 a real fast one. But I guess having struck the bowler for six, you could have you could have gone for a full-blooded pull, get in trouble. But he just decided to roll the bat over it. Powell. Yeah, um, as you said, just showing real control. Yes. Here in Powell. Quite easy pace conditions here. Not too much movement with this new ball. In his last game, we saw it swing a bit more. That was That's probably because one. of the overhead conditions as well, as Raymond Reefer ends his fourth. Team Headley 27 without loss. 19 to Kyron Powell, batting rather well, almost going at a run per ball. So we spoke about uh, Sir, 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 uh, well, George Headley. And then I said he played between the wars. You know, you had the war in the 1940s, the war in the 1920s. So he had that distinction that many yeah. other batters did happen. But then Everton Weeks. Uh, came along, what, 1925 from uh, that famous part in Barbados, St. Michael's. And he was an outstanding batter. Died just the other day, 2020. Yes. yes. And at the age of 95, Sir Everton would have been the outstanding batter. We spoke about 48 tests for, for Sir Everton. Yeah, exactly. And in that 48 tests, this man also has a phenomenal average of 58.61. Serious record. <laughs> Powell still looking up. commanding. But 48 tests. 4,455 runs. 1,500. If you work that, that's what every three plus games you're having 100. Those were some of the great guys. And he still has a standing record. Five consecutive hundreds. Uh, versus India, five consecutive hundreds every time you bat in a wow. series. You know, you make a hundred. Serious purple patch <laughs> that was. That's, that, that's what it was. And there is a story to it. That's uh, Everton Weeks, when he was dropped after he didn't have such a good start to his career, um, they said that he would have replaced Headley, who was not available or was ill. But in Jamaica, they thought somebody else should have played. Mm. And they booed him <laughs> throughout the entire game while he fielded. His response Hundred. was 100. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I guess we can go into the politics of the cricket. <laughs> and uh, those two men have been picked out for this particular series. And just my last talk about to bring a little politics out of it before Vernon and Joel uh, get ready to come in. I was reading something on Sir Gary Sobers, the phenomenal all-rounder. And Sir Gary was saying that when Wes Hall would have made his entry into cricket, which I was discussing with our two Trinidadian pals, 
he said him and Sir Everton decided to go at a particular fast bowler. Mm. And he said we went to him at him real hard. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about the politics of cricket, he said we wanted to beat him. He said we wanted Wes to play. I didn't even know another fast bowler around. And he said they, as two seniors, they went after him. And that's how Wes got into the team. Not that Wes was not good, don't get me wrong. But at times, you know, that sort of national pride is important. That sort of personal touch. Yeah, we, all that is part of West we all, We know all about Sir Everton <laughs> in our family, especially as uh, David Murray, his son. Yes, y your dad's pal. Yeah. And also my cousin Shami, who is David's daughter and Sir Everton's okay. grandchild. So okay, yeah, so it's a full close family tie. Close family tie indeed. Yes, and apart from David Murray, his son. There was also uh, Ricky, Ricky Hoyt, Hoyt yes. who was also a prospect. Yes, yes. For played West for Indies, Barbados. Played for Barbados, was wicket keeper bat then. Played a lot of cricket in yeah. Bermuda as well. So that's a sporting family, pretty similar to your sporting family. I guess that's why they were so cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good defense on the part of Matthew Nando. 28 without loss. Powell on 20. Nando on 4. Team Headley trying to. Uh, stay afloat because they are in fact setting the platform here for this game. Vernon Springer, good morning to you. Good morning to Joel when you come. Mally Richards starting off the morning and May has started so far. I want to say happy belated birthday to El Comida Willett, um, out of the island of Nevis, and to Sir Gordon Greenwich, and to Brian Charles Lara from our entire team here, and all of the folks all over the world who have been celebrating in this special month of May. We'll be back with the cricket action. Team Headley winning the toss and opting to bat for us here. Good positive start by Kyron Powell and Machu Nandu, young Machu Nandu, emerging Guyanese opening batsman. As Reefer to Powell, whipped away into the square leg area. He comes quite easily back for a second run. A little strange to see Raymond Reefer opening the bowling here this morning. Um, based on what we would have seen before is in his exploits. Originally, he would have been maybe promoted to be the number three batter for the West Indies test team. But maybe in this format here, they've decided to chart his exploits and his skills. Not really much effective so far in his spell here. It's only five overs. This is his fifth over, not for 20. And I maybe have to kind of look and figure out what are the selectors are looking for because somebody like a Preston McSween who is not here, Ryan John, and maybe the list is long, I can maybe keep going on and on. Not a lot of options here for young Alex Atenez this morning, but we'll find out. <coughs> Powell just looking to play around his pads there. Played it up to Dominique Drakes. 30 without loss. Good morning, Joel. Good morning, Vernon, and good morning to the viewers all around the Caribbean watching the stream for this match, number three, the final match of the Head the Week series. Refer from the media center in here, the home of Cricket West Indies, Coolest Cricket Ground. No pace at all. This looks like a good, solid batting track. And Powell has maybe decided that he's going to cash in here this morning. But it's early days yet. You always look to see what is going to happen in the first hour's day's play. There's no Bravo today who can come and wobble the ball around and get a couple of wickets. And there's no Brandon King. And no Jama Hamilton who's out injured. Reefer. Arms working, arms pumping <laughs> to Powell. Powell getting a early stride out there. He looks a lot confident today. 
simply because you can see that stride. You can see him coming out. Looks positive. I like the look of Matthew Nando. He's certainly not going to be rushed. He's not going to be phased. He's got good defense. Sort of remind me of Shivnu and Shonda Paul. You could look at that, that, that copy area. Sure, Shonda Paul, Shiv, Shiv Shonda Paul would have been his hero. Very much relaxed. Keeps it simple. Plays within his limitations as he does just a while ago there. So three wins coming off of Raymond Reefer over. And the score at the end of 9 31 without loss. Yeah, for young Nando, certainly another lovely opportunity for him here. But he played his first first class season this season with the Ghana Harpy Eagles. And you, you could say it started off perfectly for him, getting 126 in that first innings versus Barbados Prey. But then since then, he's not necessarily gotten many of the scores that he wanted. He got a 60 versus the Windwards in the second innings. And I had a chat with him before the start of this match in an interview you know i asked him his thoughts with regards to how he would have assessed the season for himself and he told me that cricket is one of those games that lifts you up one day and then it pummels you into the ground the next and i think that was because of the fact that you know the expectations heaped on him from getting that 126 on debut People expected that it would have been a dream season for him, but it didn't necessarily turn out that way. He started to feel, I guess, a bit of pressure. But another opportunity for him here, coming in as a replacement for Shane Mosley. Drake's to Powell. And Powell is playing across the line of delivery. A poor shot by Powell. He's out, giving out leg before. I don't think that shot was necessary. <laughs> It was pitched between wicket and wicket, and Powell is looking to have a heave over the mid-wicket area. Let's look back at the replay here. Um, he just missed the length. It was just too close to him. Yeah, looking to go after another one it was Kyron Powell. Uh, this time, though, miss again. And certainly talking about that length a lot fuller than he would have predicted for on that occasion. Looking uh, to clear a uh, deep mid-wicket, finds the pad. And an easy decision for umpire Nigel Duguid. In fact, sorry, umpire Leslie Reefer. So the first wicket down is 31 for one poll. He has to go for 23. And he just ended up in a... He didn't open up. He was just out of position. Um, really just lapsing concentration there from Kyron Powell. And he was cursing himself that he was coming out. He looks so good. Um, and when you look at the period, it's just now 10.40. 10.39, 10.40. And he got out. Um, you know, you when you got starts like that, you 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 want to capitalize on that. And it wasn't like it was an express ball. Um, it was just a miscalculation there from Kyron Powell. So he goes back into the hut, and straight away, Team Headley loses their first wicket. Or their most experienced players and Test player Kyron Powell. Out comes Kevin Hodge, and Kevin Hodge be, has been uh, around the system also. You know, maybe you know, went to England 2019, 2020. And with the, the less opportunities of really getting to play cricket and your know, mindset, you, you come in and you come out. You know, I just hope that you know, somewhere along the line, our doors have been closed. Originally, young players would have got an opportunity to go to England. That door is really closed because of the requirements. You have to play sometimes five first-class games. Some people maybe might only get three, or only get two, then you know you don't get an opportunity. And even if you go to England, the sort of quality of cricket that you play, it's also going to be important. Drake's to Hodge. Hodge leaves alone a wide delivery. Um, and then there are not a lot of opportunities available um, for young West Indian cricketers, maybe even to journey across to Australia. And saying that also, the entire landscape of cricket has also changed. Because if you get a big contract now, it's either to play T10 or T20. So the opportunities, uh, you know, for really playing the longer version of the game or test cricket is more or less diminishing quietly. Here is a good positive shot by Hodge, stroking it up to cover. Tejan Ryan Shandapal comes across and knocks that down. 
and I think we, we have to deal with the reality to understand what we, we, we are faced with now. As much as we would like to see Test Cricket around, it's a conversation that has to take place. We have to ask ourselves, is the governing body really interested in Test Cricket? And if so, um, how are they looking to try and save the game? Lot of chatter coming now from Devon Thomas and Sinclair and Athens. Drake's picking up Powell in his first delivery here. And after that, he has been spot on with three good deliveries. He's bowling from the CIU Road end here in Antiguan Barbuda, the home of Cricket West Indies. Dominic Drakes, the son of Vasbert Drakes. Big effort there. Nothing really much, Joel, that has bounced around this morning. This track has just played almost like a street. Yeah, I certainly expect that probably for the first day and a half or so, but looking at that surface is by far drier than the one that we were played on in match number two. And I also like to touch drier because it's the very surface that we use in match number one. It looks just a touch drier here on day one as well. Drakes. Bounding away. Touching down into the right area, just about the top of the fourth stump line. A maiden wicket over there by Dominic Drakes. Um, a much better spell as compared to the last game. Yeah, it certainly has started quite well. He has Drakes on this surface. And you probably expect that Jeremy McAllister will be introduced very soon into the piece. Uh, here he comes as well. So he's going to replace Raymond Reefer from this media center end. But yeah, just looking at the surface, you probably would tell yourself that in terms of the majority of the runs, the bulk of the runs, they'll probably come across the first day, day and a half of this encounter because I remember being out there when one of the bowlers was marking out uh, their run-up uh, at a piece that the surface came out uh, already and it told me about how dry it is underneath so you probably don't expect that it might right hold up uh, across the the entirety of this match a couple of cracks out there as well and not just that but uh, the size of the cracks already the directions that you're going you're probably going to tell yourself that coming on to maybe the latter half of day number two into three and four you expect the up and down nature as you would have seen in match number one as we would have seen across the first class championship as well for, so for the batsmen the batters out there they certainly would tell themselves that this is the time uh, to get their runs similar to how we would have seen in that game play out between Team Headley and the West Indies Academy. I think credit will have to go to the curators and the assistants based on the lack of water to prepare these pitches all around the world. McAllister not getting it right first up. I like his energy. He brings a sort of effort and, you know, sometimes he's all over the place, but when he gets it right, um, he gets it right. So good morning to the folks in Barbados, in Jamaica, Ghana, the OECS, full toss. That dipped, came out of his hand and just died, more or less. Good take by Devon Thomas in the end. And the first two spells that McAllister bowled, in that match versus the West Indies Academy from this very end, this very media centre end was brought on in the 10th over today, brought on in the 11th. But the first two spells that he bowled uh, to the top order of the West Indies Academy was certainly probably where he would like to be this morning. He's trying to bang that one in, but don't think not today. But you never know. He might just get one to get an under edge under Nandu or Hodges bat. Yeah, the surface that he played on in match number two had a, a bit more for the bowlers in terms of the, the bunks on offer. This surface, this is certainly a wicket to wicket surface. I like to see him bowl of a fuller length. Kenny's pushing the ball here. Yeah. And I just found, Joel, that they, they took them a long time to make the adjustments against the Cricket West Indies Academy in terms of adjusting their lengths. And you've got to understand the conditions around you. 
and trying to bang the ball in short here. It's almost going to come up like a tennis bumper, more or less. And so I feel that the McAllister will have to bowl a, a fuller length, inducing Nando to, to, to drive, more or less, down the onside. So, like I said, he's getting warm. He normally gets an over or two so he can get his radar going. Tricks keep talking to him and just telling him this is a different track, different day. Remember the plan? With all these messages going through his head, it's about muscle memory, remembering which, which is the right one. And he's so passionate, he wants to get a wicket. The leg slip is now being employed for him in Shem Holder for Nando. Ooh, it's gone wide of him. And down to the boundary for four. So leg buys, more or less. So even if it went to Shem Holder, it wouldn't have been a catch. But you could understand the tactics and deploy. Yeah, certainly looking to work out Nando. And I was actually very impressed with the fact that they made that change quite early because I was thinking back to the 100 that Nando would have scored. And as we see there, just on the hips of Nando, had it gotten back, you probably would have said that maybe that is what would have taken it in the direction of Shemho. But the thigh pad uh, a bit thinner in terms of the edge. And he takes a step to his left now. And it looks like that ball probably hit a bird as well, maybe. But in terms of a lot of the runs that Nandu scored in the 100 that he had versus Barbados and McAllister, will remember it. A lot of the work works off of the hip, very uppish as well. The first boundary of the morning as well from Matthew Nandu was a ball he worked off the hip as well to that very similar position. Over bold, it's 35 for one. And as you're talking about birds, a lot of birds flying around here. Uh, we see some visitors who originally were trying to stay on the mound. They have now decided to come into the main stand here and join our Trinidad and Tobago friends and colleagues. I know Seth said that he will be trying to see if we can get at least one of them during the break. So much history. Uh, I, I learned so much over the past week of the days of all of West Indies cricket. And it's so important really to be talking to to fans all around the world. There are so many people all around the Caribbean who have seen so much cricket and they can tell you of the conditions. Drake's too hard, who is not. Gets a wide delivery. Still want to get Drake's to get Hodge to play the ball. Got a brand new ball. And because they love cricket, they have walked straight up and found the colleagues who are sitting in the stand. Sure, it'd be a better relief for them because the sun is hot. It's not only hot here in Antigua Barbuda, it's hot around the Caribbean. Expected to have heat levels warming up. Dominique Drake's to Hodge. Wicket to wicket. Yes, that one trapping him on the crease. He was caught in no man's land. And I don't think he was coming back and across there, Kevin Hodge. Ronnie, can I see that re re replay there? Height might have been the issue. Devon Thomas trying also to run him out. But I think he was well into his crease. If we look, his right foot really didn't go anywhere. It didn't go deep enough. And then he moved again. Height. So, good decision by Leslie Reefer Jr. I'd like Kevin Hodge to get deep. You know, he kind of moved once and then he tried to move his right foot again, but not really. I think maybe early in his innings, he tends to not get moving very quickly. Trix is trying to push him back. No! That's a lot better. He was backing across and defending nicely. It's going to be a test for him. And that's what I want to see Drake do is maybe bowl attack the stumps more often. I think it almost could be maybe a case to uh, Drake's looking to maybe set up Kevin Hodge because in terms, especially Ernest and Kevin Hodge enjoys playing off of the back foot, whether or not it's those punches, cuts, pulls. So if you kind of feed him just back of a length, him getting back onto that back foot, and then slowly but surely move that length up, he, there might be one similar to the delivery for but he gets trapped on the pad in front. Come back to that. Can gets a good stride out, leaves his stride. And the other thing too is that when you're facing a, a left arm seamer, Joel, 
you originally should be trying to make an adjustment in your stance. And I, 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 when I look at the movement of, of Kevin Hodge, I think he's right around. He could have maybe just make a slight adjustment because Drake is, as you rightly said, trying to set him up. And because he's so side on to the ball and not staggered in his stance, he could get trapped, more or less. Drake can bring the ball back. He's driving. Can't beat Raymond Reefer. Mid off. Devon Thomas is asking Drakes if he's on a roadside. There's no room for driving here today for Kevin Hodge. Drakes from the CIA road end here in Antigua and Barbuda bounding away to Hodge. Back and across, that's much better. Back of the length, made over. Drakes moving into a rhythm here confidently. So another lovely over for Dominic Drakes. And what it means is that Jeremy Caster will have another burst at Matthew Nadu. Just allowing bowlers here to begin to, to work on a plan of attack because they've not been able to really rotate the strike recently. So they've been able to just string together some deliveries to either batter. 35 for one, some 61 dot balls here so far. Very early days still. We're inside the first hour. Wide delivery. Maybe if we were playing in the cool and smooth competition, that might have been called a wide, Joel. Quite possibly, indeed, given the shorter format uh, of the game. In a situation, sorry, Joel. Mm. In, in a context like this, uh, you, what do you think will be the, the mindset going through for Matthew Nando, 4 from 35? He's all caught behind. We were just talking about the mindset and the pressure. He, there was no feet movement. The hands wet. His left foot never got in line with the ball. And he fished at a wide one, full of length. And just as Joel was talking... Team Headley striking. They've lost their second wicket this morning. 35 for two. Yeah, I was just about to make the point. That was, in fact, McAllister who took the wicket uh, of Matthew Nandu in the first match that they would have played in the first class championship. But different delivery to this, though. This one going across Nandu, uh, looking to force it through the covers. Just takes the edge and the easy catch behind for Devon Thomas. I don't think he was balanced there, Joel. His two feet was in the air, as you said. I, kn I know he's a short guy, um, but he was just thrown off balance um, entirely there. And good catch by Devon Thomas. Nando walks back, disappointing. But at least he had a good out in here, more or less. This is, will grow in his exposure and his confidence going forward. Uh, I don't think he probably classed this one as a good outing for him. Uh, unless it was a case of just the sweat aspect of it. Uh, knowing Nandu and knowing what he's hoping to do, especially coming off of the first class season and it not necessarily registering as the mark that he would want to make, he would have said that, you know what, he could have probably put that shot away because, as I mentioned, he was looking to force that one going uh, across him and there wasn't much in it. In terms of the line of the ball, it wasn't necessarily there with the room to play the shot so he would certainly be disappointed with the fact that he's got to walk back for four and given the fact that they mentioned that in terms of the conditions today and into probably the first half of tomorrow the better time to bat on this surface he would tell himself that you know, this was not the, the start that he, he would have wanted so testing time at the, the first drinks breaks team had the 35 for two and it is now a sort of pressure situation for Ambris and Kavanagh who will have to rebuild, will have to refocus. And this track, really, in, 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 in fairness, is not going to be an easy track, but it's, it's a good surface to bat on, um, less bounce, and you maybe have to grind it out here today. Yeah. 
Yeah, I certainly will have to, to grind it out. He can almost tell himself that in terms of time spent, he got the start in terms of time spent at the crease. Because Fernando, he's not necessarily a very flashy batter. He's that accumulator of runs type of batter. So for him, yeah, the pace of scoring would not have been a problem for him. It was more so about time at the crease. And he got that because he was there almost for what we would consider the first hour of play got through the opening bowlers even though they're very short spells for the opening bowlers today but just that i guess that additional pace factor as well uh, of jerry McAllister getting on to him before he got into the position to play the shot i mentioned the fact that McAllister took his wicket in the first round of the first class championship that time though it was a short delivery that rushed nandu so you can maybe say the pace factor is maybe the slight undoing, but he's got to go. 35 for 2 they are into over number 13. Karen Powell, LBW to Drakes for 23 of 27 deliveries. And you heard there from Joel Matthew Nandu going caught behind of Devon Thomas for 4 of 36 deliveries. So 35 for 2. 12.2 um, overs, early days, yet seems like a long day. Team Headley versus Team Weeks, that's the composition for the final round of the Tri-Series encounter. Just a bit to you. A little bit more. Ambrose awesome. taking an off-stump guard, pretty interesting. Ball is right arm over. And... Uh, Bowler will be coming right arm over by Gregory Bratwet and Leslie Reefer Jr., uh, the two standing umpires today. I want to say thanks to the 360 team, Warren and Tegan Barbuda, offering their services to us. Rani and the entire team have done an excellent job. And we thank you guys very much for working with us. Rani is a master, he's a whiz. That one is hustling Ambris. He kind of tentatively just played it into the offside. Never seems to be ruffled, um, Sonel Ambris. Always just looks almost unconcerned. Mm, certainly is always unconcerned once he gets to the crease. He's that type of battle who likes to impose himself on the opposition. We've seen it time and time again, especially in terms of how he opts to sometimes walk down to put bowlers off of their lines. And Lems really looks to get the scoreboard ticking. There's Ambrose. That one going down the onside. Leg by the signal by Gregory Bathwit. Team Weeks putting some pressure on Team Headley. A wicket to McAllister. So he continues to pick up ones and twos. He got four wickets in the last game. To all the folks who tuned in and viewing us via the West Indies Cricket YouTube channel. And for all the comments, the folks who have been commenting, we thank you very much for engaging us. Here is a delivery which is back of the link and Hodge trying to get fancy and just turn it. But the, the pace there, bouncing onto it. At the end of this over, we'll hear the voice of Nickel and Mali. Thirty six for two. Ambris both batsmen are not. Hodge not from twelve. Ambris not from two. Hodge looks uh, fighting to get a run. It's driven it. True cover. Um the chasing the birds and it hits the rope now. So a boundary to Hodge in the air. Over completed. Forty for two. And We'll have more comments. Uh, new team in Nickel and Mali coming up.
Thank you very much, Vernon Springer. Excellent conditions. Batting at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. And what is the final opportunity for these 22 players? To really show their expertise. Big year of West Indies cricket coming up. Momentous year. And speaking of momentum, Amanda, of course, oh, has played at the first class it. level. Oh, stop it. Mali Richards. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Nikhil. How are you doing, man? Fantastic. Dominic Drake is continuing. Mali, interesting passage of play so mm. far. Conditions have really supported batting. Given the surface, of course, Joshua De Silva winning the toss, batting first. The two wickets that have gone, Matthew Nandu and, of course, Kyron Powell. What do you make of the way they went about things? Uh, pretty soft dismissals, dismissals in the grand scheme of things, to be honest. Powell's, in particular, uh, a, a, a really, really wild shot. Uh, his shot selection there, really letting him down. Slog sweep across the line. Wow. That's dead. I wonder if height was the oh. problem. Drake's was convinced. He didn't even look back. Miley Richards also similarly convinced. I think he's hit that. That's the only thing that is saving Sonny Lambris on that one, to be honest. Let's have a look and see. Ronnie, you got that reap? Yes, here we go. What do you reckon, Nikhil? Oh, oh, days, probably just, oh. Yeah, I just wonder if, was it inside edge? Because I initially thought it hit him high on the th that mm. thigh pad, but on second look, hit him just above the knee roll. On the back leg as well. Was it outside the line, Mali Richards? Maybe just, maybe just. Good decision, I think. Tell you, umpiring not an easy job. Let's for Junior standing from that end. That goes to show you, because if I was standing there, I'm giving that. You know, because to the naked eye, to in real time, it looked absolutely stone dead. But maybe just outside that off stump. In the end, Leslie Reefer, I'll say yes, good decision. Very good decision. It has been impressive what Dominic Jerks has done with this angle. Four and a half over his ball. He's only conceded two runs and, of course, picked up that wicket. I find it interesting the way he's able to shift his line. You can see there, pretty much stop delivery operating on that four-step line. But the one he got Kyron Paul with came back, was very straight. So he has that in his arsenal. And that's something he's doing better in this match. Mm -hmm. In the previous game, I'd say he was a little inconsistent. Just struggled for his lines and lengths. Especially when right hand, left hand, uh, uh, with the right hand, le left hand combination. But today, so far, he's definitely looked like he's hit his strap and he's been more, more consistent. The same straighter. And it's been interesting with Drake's because we're used to seeing him all around the world in the various leagues. Recently played in the Lankan Premier League, the ILT20, but he's only played now this being his fifth, fifth first class yeah. match. Mm. So, new to red ball cricket and he's... Really loved being in the red ball side, playing with the Barbados Pride at the end of that 2023 season. He told me that he feels it's really helping enhance his game, just playing a longer form of cricket. Well, it's a different style of bowling, isn't it? Especially, like you said, in the franchise cricket, it's more variations, especially the type of bowler he is. Cutters, back of the arm, slowies. Slower bouncers as well. Another maiden for Drix, his third, end of 14, 40 for two. But here in the first class game, the longer format, it's more seam up, isn't it? So he's got to have that wrist behind the ball more often than not, looking to snap through his action. And he's also bowling on better pitches more often than not in the, for in the uh, longer format of the game. You really got to bowl guys out as opposed to, you know, using that scoreboard pressure. Or, or you've got to produce wicket taking deliveries in this format. So far, he's looked a lot better, a lot more consistent. Yeah, the big test, I think, as you mentioned in the last over, will come the longer that Team Headley stays in the middle. Because when Kurt McKenzie registered that double hundred and I came to the ground the day after, they think that was day three. Mm. You could see the consistency from Nell Smith and Drake's, especially. Just seem to have faltered. And that's exactly what you talked about. So that will be something for Drake to learn from. And McAllister as well. I found when he adjusted his length and went a lot fuller. Similar length to where he got Nando out today. 
he looks completely more menacing as opposed to those deliveries that just bounce over the stumps. Yeah, and uh, he was probably a bit too short. Guilty of just being a bit too short in that previous match against the West Indies Academy. He would have started really well, started bowling that fuller length. You know, uh, his stock length is probably that hard back of a length. That's where he's most comfortable, similar to that. But he's got to find a way at times to just go that yard or two fuller at the risk of being driven because uh, it, it really uh, increases his, his penetration. It makes him more of a threat. And uh, batters aren't just sitting on the back foot as they did in that in that uh, game against the West Indies Academy. Mackenzie in particular was severe on anything short. Yeah, still two slips and a gully for McAllister. This time much full and that's probably the ideal length there. And to your point, the statistic back it up as well, Mali, because he took four wickets, yes. He conceded 84 runs though and 45 of them were behind square. So a lot of those pulls, a lot of those cuts Today, though, I have seen that extra intent. And having someone like a Sir Curtly Ambrose in your camp will help manage some of those things. He mm. has a lot of potential with the pace he's able to generate. Definitely can provide that X Factor uh, uh, element to a team, especially in conditions such as this. This is where you probably want to see the real uh, value of, of the man. He's strong. You know, it's... it's Batting friendly conditions. It's a hot day, but I anticipate this pitch is going to get lower and lower as this match goes along. So if he can hone in on that hard back of a length added to the inconsistent bounce, he could be a handful later on in the match. Again, that hard length delivery. I wonder if he can, Jerry McAllister, can look to someone like a Shannon Gabriel. I mm. think similar trajectory mm. in the way that mm. they started their careers, mm. but. When Gabriel got to the test level and was really in the prime, of course, excluding the injuries, when he, at that pace, when he got it full, slip always was in play, got a lot of those deliveries, bowled and leg before. And then the, when there was times like on a surface like this where you had the variable bounce, remember that England series when they played England at Kensington Oval, caused Joe Root all sorts of problems because of that variable bounce. Just so hard to predict at that pace. Mm. Exactly, exactly. Similar, you're right, in terms of their, their cricketing uh, development as well. End of another maiden. Good spell of bowling from both ends. 14 weeks, 40 for two. Yeah, Jaya McAllister, you can tell. Ch Shannon Gabriel would have improved immensely over the years. You know, I would have actually played against him when he would have first come into first class cricket and then we would have seen him again uh, almost halfway through. Uh, his career and he's just grad he's just improved steadily over the years you know his fitness uh, that fitness has has aided in that improvement but he's also understood more about bowling understood more about his body as well And I think, as you said, it's a pretty good comparison to be honest, Nikhil. very similar maybe. McAllister, what, 26 years old now? Hasn't probably been a benefactor of the system per se. So we're trying to accelerate his uh, development as much as we can to see just how much of an asset he could be to cricket, to, to West Indies cricket. But like you said, all the raw tools, the minerals are there. This will be runs, but don't think Drake will mind that too much. It wasn't convincing by any means. I'm not sure he played a shot there, to be honest. I like by his given, so yeah. the runs will go to the overall <laughs> score. But yeah, just on McAllister, mm. specifically the way that you mentioned the fact that he's just come out of nowhere because he's from the Wonders Cricket Club, has been in and around the, uh, the local Barbadian cricket setup, but it's only really in the last two seasons where, because of the pace, he's caused and created some attention around his name. Mm. Then, of course, got into a Barbados setup, but doesn't have a benefit of someone like a Drake's who's been consistently through the Barbadian local youth system. Yeah, age group cricket and the like. 
you know, the pathway, per se. So he's trying to learn almost on the job, isn't he? But I think he's, he's done a pretty admirable job so far. So how he's handled, I think, is absolutely key. And to be honest, I don't think he was probably put in the best situation to be successful last week. In, I think, what were more bowler-friendly conditions as well. The only bowled from this media center and throughout the match. Yes, yes, this will be runs. Point was in the circle. Tejan and Chanapo will have work to do, but it's a quick outfield at Coolidge. Ambrose off the mark. Yeah, Ambrose off the mark. All of a sudden, runs really hard to come by since that wicket of Kieran Powell. Just a shot out of the blue. Almost, he was in such control. Looked like he had the bowlers at his mercy, like a hundred for the taking, to be honest. And uh, that shot, I'm sure he'll have nightmares about that shot this evening. It was the first runs off the bat in 16 deliveries. Mm. So it tells you how well Drake's has been bowling. <laughs> that looks good. And the finger goes up. Playing across. And Dominic Drake's again expertise to bring the ball back and keep it very straight paying dividends yeah this time picking up the wicket just bringing it back to Ambrose who at times is probably just seen as a little bit especially early in his innings as an LBW candidate just falling over looking to play across that one that one came in to him as you said Dominic Drake's on the money so he's Come back here in this match versus Team Headley. This one's just pitched on, I think. Yep. That's probably hitting middle and leg, to be honest, Nikhil. Yeah, and he's done it with the angle as well because Ambers may be expecting left arm over ball to go across him, but Drix has that innate ability to just bring one back. He had tried it a couple of times down the leg side, didn't quite get it. That one, though, straight. And anytime you're playing across the line, you're always going to be in trouble. And after a comfortable start on a good surface for batting, Team Headley again have some work to do. Tevin Walcott strolls to the middle. Yeah, and, and young Nandu looked quite compact and solid as well, but also just struggled to, to probably just rotate strike. Was fed one outside that off stump. Soft shot as well, especially in these conditions here at Coolidge. You've got to make use of this pitch especially when it's as good as this I wonder Mali as a batter do you think you feel more disappointed when you know you have conditions suited for batting yeah. day one of the surface the best I think that you'll get this surface and then you've seen shots like the slow sweep from Powell across the line from Ambris greater praise on the wicket maybe yeah, that wide one uh, from Nandu getting that on the edge. Yeah, you you really got to earn the right to score to score big, regardless of the conditions. But here, uh, you probably feel like it's going to be a little easier. You don't have to grind as hard, even though batting conditions are quite favourable. Starts well to Tevin Walcott. Both, of course, Barbadians. In the middle, Drakes and Walcott. And successful over though for Dominic Drakes. Set up by a good spell of bowling from both ends. 46 for three. Yeah, and what we've seen is, is batters contribute to their downfall here this morning. Drakes has come back. He's been very consistent. Uh, McAllister, he's always going to run in. Maybe Niall Smith. <laughs> Looking forward to see what we see from him probably later on. But the batters will be very disappointed. Team Henley to be 46 for three. The youngsters almost showed us the, the modus operandi of how to go about building an innings here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground in these conditions. So Hodge and Walcott, of course, both teammates from the Windward Islands this season. So we'll have a good understanding. McAllister. Walker, who's at the non-strikers end, he was impressive. Led wicket keepers this season for runs. New team, new challenge, and it worked well for him. A couple of 50s. Would have been, I think, disappointed that he didn't kick on and get a big 100. But the fact that he has this opportunity after not getting runs in the, against Team Academy, this is an 
ideal chance for him to really prove himself as someone behind the stumps and who is capable of batting as well. Just rode the bounce well, Kevin Hodge. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I've been very impressed with young Walcott's uh, wiki keeping. He's coming as a replacement for Rivaldo Clark here in the. No, actually, it was Imlac, sorry. Uh, I've got my wiki keepers mixed up. We've got a couple young wiki keepers on show. Tevin Walcott would have been uh, dismissed by Johan Lane, actually, in the previous game, one of Lane's debut five for 15 so he'll be looking to get some scores as you said his wiki keeping has been pretty good that is runs and Walcott knew straight away that's some way to get off the mark as well timed it to perfection yeah pretty similar to what we saw from Sunil Ambris actually he knew straight away almost that he was out he turned instantly and Walcott also that bottom hand coming off the bat Throwing the hands at that delivery. Probably similar to a shot that we saw from Zach McCaskey as well. That hand coming off the bat through the offside, but well timed. There are a couple of deliveries bought by McAllister where he's really trying to bang them in, but because of the nature of the surface where at Coolidge, we've grown used to seeing balls just keep a bit low. There have been a lot of times where the ball just hasn't gotten up. Yeah, and I'm interested in, in the use of McAllister, you know, in this game. Once again, he's here in from the media center and hasn't really been given a burst with, with, with the wind at his back, per se, from that CIU road end. This time straight. And a touch fuller, but it will be more runs. And it will be a boundary, second boundary in the over. This one less convincing, but four nonetheless. Yeah, probably just sneaking down that leg side, but that inside edge coming into play for Walcott. So he's picked up two boundaries already here. Better length from McAllister. He's been predominantly... And that back of fuller length here today. So we've seen him make that adjustment. Oh, that's a beauty. Excellent. If he can find that more consistently, Molly Richards, he will be a handful for batters to contend with. End of 17 overs, 55 for three. Yeah, and it, it was his usage, you know, against the West Indies Academy. Probably Alec Athenes. He was being asked to be more of that um, enforcer, almost, that aggressor, as we see that one again. Just angled in, forcing the batter to play. It looks like it's coming in, but it just holds that line outside the off stump. Slightly wide on the crease, McAllister. So you always get that impression that the ball's coming in as a right-handed batter. Drake's into his sixth. Two for six now. No. This is very impressive from Dominic Drake. It's not only, of course, because he picked up the two wickets, three maidens, but also now seven overs on the trot, running into the wind. So it's not been easy conditions for a fast bowler. And he's showing that he has the fitness to not only bowl the overs, but be effective as well. Yeah, and... and Quite hot conditions here. Excessive heat warnings, as you said, showing good fitness so far. Into what, his seventh? And he's been very good as well. He's been accurate on the money. Not quite the amount of, 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 of seam and swing that we saw last week. But I think he just struggled to control that at times as well, you know. And, and also a couple of his best deliveries, you know, we were right behind uh, the bowler's arm. A couple of his best deliveries really swung in late 
uh, in that first game. Actually swung into the middle of the bat a couple of times from Kevin Wickham, which probably just highlights uh, the kind of future that maybe Kevin Wickham has as well. Those were some threatening deliveries, but handled relatively easy by the young man. Easily. He's still learning, Dominic Drake, that's for sure. Mm. And he'll be happy with this return. None for 86 in 26 overs in that game against the Academy. Already today, he's got two inside of his first 39 deliveries. Yeah, and both him and Niall Smith probably just a little guilty in giving the batsman too many sighters. Uh, especially outside that off stump, not allowing the batter to play uh, often enough, especially with the new ball in hand. Okay. Very straight. But Drake was the only one that was excited, and this is what he can do when he gets that delivery right. A developing bowler, a developing young seamer. Exciting stuff that we're seeing from Drake this morning. Keep an eye on that bounce as well as this match progresses, Nick. Uh, just short of a length there, but not quite getting up. And if it stays as hot as it is, expect this inconsistent bounce. Especially, I mean, the ball's keeping lower than batters expect. That's closer than you think, to be honest. Has that pitched on, Nick Hill? Love to see that again. You can see why Drake was so... Up for that. Oh, that's... Oh. Edged and gone. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It could be the perfect setup. One straight and then one with the angle. And Tevin Walcott, after two boundaries, departs. Yeah, that one just holding its line outside that off stump. Regulation catch to first slip. And as you were saying, uh, Dominic Drake's in the middle of a pretty, pretty... Uh, not necessarily hostile, but threatening spell in terms of his wicket-taking ability. I tell you what, this is some spell of bowling from Drake's because he's getting the ball to go both ways. First, the leg before, which is very straight. As you said, that one just held its line with the angle. Mm. An easy catch. This has been deserved for the Barbadian Seema. And out walks Joshua De Silva. And yet again, another crisis situation did it in the last game got a hundred a gutsy hundred in a game which they still lost but similar situation for him as skipper and using his west indies test experience he will be needed well whether i think they were 50 yard for five if i wasn't mistaken when joshua the silver walked to the crease 59 for five to be exact Really showed all the class of, a, of an international player, to be honest. Looked like someone who would have been playing consistent test cricket uh, in, over the past few years. Looks a real leader as well is Josh De Silva. Yeah, this would be a good challenge as well because... The Silvers face a lot of Dominic Drake. They yeah, both yeah. spent time at the Patriots mm. in the CPR. They're both very good friends and understand each other's games well. So I'm excited to see this battle unfold. Still Drake's opting to come over the wicket. That is an excellent delivery. Kevin Thomas, tell you what, he's tried his luck at the run up from behind. End of the over, another successful one. Dominic Drake's, his tail is up. End of 18, 56 for four. Yeah, and that final delivery tells you that his tail is up. That one just taking off there with the extra pace and bounce from Dominic Drake's. Probably just getting that extra pep in his step from uh, the wickets that he's taken here this morning. He'll be really happy with his performance so far. And if you're a West Indian cricket fan as well, you'll be happy with what you're seeing from the young man showing uh, that he's learning from match to match. But well, this was the delivery before the wicket, which we thought was close. Mm. Hit Walcott, well, Kevin Hodge it was, on that back foot. Walcott would have seen that from the non-strikers end. Seen the ball come back a long way. The very next delivery, he followed up brilliantly with one that just held its line, got the wicket. McAllister. Oh, that's a full toss. Height could have been a question, but the umpire's hand stays down. 
I think that's been the problem with McAllister, the control. If he can continue to develop that control, which I think he's drastically improving from when mm. he started this season in first class circuit, I think he's come a long way watching him bowl in that last that's game. Middle. But yeah. still a long way to go. Yeah, and you don't want to necessarily change him too much. You want to make the improvements where you think necessarily maybe uh, just uh, maybe just a few technical refinements here or there. But you want him to stay as an unorthodox as possible. You know, sometimes you think, oh, the arms are probably just flailing everywhere. You want him to go through that, that, that everything to be probably more streamlined. But what I've found as a bowler is you can use that unorthodoxy to your benefit. Batters like actually facing bowlers, regardless of pace, with classic actions. Think that they can see the ball, the gather from, from, you know, from from a mile away, almost. But with the unorthodox bowlers, they just keep you a little off balance. You're not quite sure what's gonna come. Even that full toss, you know, that plays into that. Yeah, much better length. You can see. He's like working on the consistency, Jai McAllister, like trying to put together yeah. some deliveries, building some pressure. This is the wicket again from mm. Drake's. Delivery before that was straight. That one gets the outside edge. And you can just see good, tail up. His tail is up. Bowling with good energy. Seven overs on the trot. He's been a major puzzle, piece to the puzzle, I should say. Yeah, and that delivery pitched on middle and leg as well to Walcott. He had to play that one. Especially, as you said, you had the context of the previous delivery just coming back to him. He would have known that's a lot closer than probably uh, everyone else would have thought. Batter as well, just getting across his crease a little bit, across his stumps. As you said, good piece of bowling. <laughs> from Dominic. Yeah, I just wonder with Drake's. And I'll get back to that after this delivery. Mm. I wonder with Drake's, Mali, especially if, let's say, he has a really good game with both bat and ball in this one. We've already seen him close the first class season well for the Barbados Pride. But he's getting no. <laughs> opportunities in franchise leagues around the world. I wonder wh whether he values playing a red ball season a bit more than playing in the T20 leagues in terms of developing his game for a few years. It'll be a good thing to see what he decides in the future if he does get the opportunity to play in both. Full delivery right on the money from McAllister, but Hodge keeps it out. Two runs from the over, 58 for four. That's a good point, Nikhil. And to be honest, that's, that's, that's something that these young players uh, will have to think about. You know, that will be his decision more often than not. You know, it's pretty clear Brandon King has, has an interest in playing red bar cricket, you know, as well. Now, you know, you're seeing making himself available uh, for, for this series and, and playing a few games as well in the season in the just concluded season so these young players definitely have some decisions to make but you don't fault them when they probably choose that franchise cricket as well when you weigh up the benefits in terms of the the, the monetary benefits that is the financial benefits oh. oh. is continuing again for yet another over into his eighth mm. this is impressive stuff from the all-rounder yeah, and that's what you want to see. That's what, exactly what you want to see from these young guys, you know. That showing that 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 uh, that ability not only technically, but physically as well. And it's hard to 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 actually run in continuously in hot conditions conditions such as this. As you said, into his eighth. And he's bounding in now as well. Really bounding in. Seems to be really up for some hard work here. He's bowled 44 deliveries now 
and 41 of them have been dot balls. So they've only scored off three deliveries in his spell. That's why he's only gone for six turns. That is massively impressive. And not only that, Nikhil, is that he was pretty, you know, Niall Smith would probably have pretty similar uh, s figures in that first game as well. But a lot of those dot balls came from the batters just leaving the ball outside the off stump. Here, Drake's on the money, every delivery. Now, so over the wicket here to the right-hander, really causing problems in terms of what to play, what to leave. Even a player of Josh De Silva's class just posing a few problems. You can see he's really thinking hard about it. Yeah. Tell you what, that was a very close lead from Joshua De Silva. Mm. Could have easily shaved the off stump. Drake's just wanted it to come back a little more. Oh. He bangs it in. And I do think as well with Drake's, maybe a couple of years time, if he continues bowling in the red ball game, I have the personal opinion, Mali, that I think he could get a yard or two quicker. Yeah, definitely. I think as he fills out as well, even more. Definitely think that he can add, add a yard or two apiece. Uh, I agree with that. Especially with the rhythm that we're seeing. Especially here this morning. His rhythm looks really good. Rare miss in terms of lane from Drake's. I mean, he's still a human. I expect that to come at some stage. But what was interesting, when that last delivery was replayed, the leave outside the off stump, Drake's ran down the pitch and had a word to the Silver. And the Silver had a stare as well. So that's something to watch. The longer the Silver spends at the crease. We saw it with Kevin Wickham and Drake's as well. Also have a good relationship. And it was Wickham that got the wicket of Drake's. Yeah, with an absolute cracker as well. I think Dominic Drake's wasn't too happy. I'm not sure if he kept 75 of that match for you or not. Because uh, uh, he really did show some descent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A quality spell continues from Dominic Drake's. Three for nine in eight overs. End of 20, 61 for four. And a commentary change. Vernon Springer and Seth Burton. Young Mally Richards and Nickel. Pretty excited listening to Nickel talk the options. Only one thing I would love to ask Nickel. When the full Barbados squad is available, if Dominique Drakes would get into the Red Ball squad. You know, uh, <laughs> you're asking a question in the late days. I like to go back to those days when you had when you had the outstanding fast bowlers. We break for a while as Drake starts. Reefer. Reefer. Just you're for a moment. You're into the Drake's discussion. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It looks like he's run out. Oh, He yeah. stumbled on the non-striker's end, Joshua De Silva. And instead of he deciding no, he committed himself still. And an excellent throw from Shanda Paul right over to Devon Thomas and team headley captain Joshua De Silva is run out. This is a big blow, Vernon. This is a big blow. Uh, he is the man who scored that critical 100 for his team in the first game. Now he walks. We're going to see it. And How did he get in the tangle? He stumbled. Look Shander Paul picks up. But he's there, halfway there. He's, he's struggling. He's str yes. He's Wobbling a bit. The return yeah. comes. And yes, he definitely is out in spite of diving in. But look at that. But I think, I think when he, uh, if we get the camera guy to pick up, on, on when he came on the first one set, he, he slipped. And that is what... Then try to recover. Uh, and it was too uh, late. It and was that too is why... It was too late for him. So the decision for the second... Ooh. Yeah. 
Um, yes. if, we c if we can just get that. And I know Ronnie the Wiz will be able to, to pick that one up. That's the man you yeah, didn't want to get should, out. He, he, he committed himself to saying two. But I'm saying that he slipped and maybe he should have just, just changed his mind. Stay. And just say stay. Yes. Um, but the commitment from him to, to go to, um, I think it was a costly one. Um, and Ronnie, once Ronnie can pull that one back up, then we can see in terms of what's happening. So straight away, um, we for coming into the, the contest and creating um, an, an opportunity. Um, 62 um, for five. Uh, almost similar to what we would have seen before. Yes, what we would have seen in the first game when uh, they played against the academy, they, they were down. Really, uh, most of it was due to some good bowling on the part of Johan Lane then. But we're seeing a similar pattern, the inability of the top order standing ground, building a platform for the team. And when they did not, it was against the background that... Uh, the captain was able to stand up and stood up well with Akeem Jordan. No! Justin Graves, who moved from Barbados and went to the Windward Islands, would have picked up some 16 wickets, 257 runs, 109.3 overs, and would have earned a call up here in this tri series. And it was healthy off air set. We were talking, you know, since the first game, we've been talking about um, somebody like a Jeremiah Louis who has been. Even was around the West Indies A team setup was not considered. He ended with 13 wickets in the season. And he also got runs as well um, to, to back it up. And again, a little ambling there, lackadaisical attitude here from. Yes, from between Graves. the wickets. Yes. They, they, they got to get it right because at this level, you'd have just seen Joshua De Silva going as a result of calling a second, stumbling. You don't want to be run out at this stage. Uh, so, they would really need to fight back here. They showed the fight in the first game. Can they show the fight in this game? Prefer looking to get into that wicket column. Hodge just defending. Pressure here on Kevin Hodge. Six from 31. It almost looks like a different game to their set as compared to when we were looking at the Cricket West Indies Academy and Team Weeks and Team Headley. Only seven boundaries have been scored here so far. Well, if you look at those games... Uh, First innings, uh, you had teams going in excess of 300. Uh, in this case, we're not sure where it's heading. Bang on target. Model of defense coming over there. Leading run score. Um, when we, we, we look at the season, Alex Atenez, 647 runs, high score of 141 with an average of 64.70. Um, really making a statement. And next in line set would have been D Darren Bravo, 446 runs, um, 100 not hour, average of 55.75. Sonny Lambris, we break for a while, we was dismissed cheaply. <coughs> Bang on target. I just think that Hodges just going set hard at the ball, really. Yes, a bit too hard, and he, he is a good batter. Hodge, uh, who would have been in the thick of things. Uh, for quite some while, should be one of those who can make some impact, and his test would be, I think, this innings. Well, he scored 287 runs in the just concluded um, for the championship, an average of 38.70 with a high score of 137. Sonny Lambris, 363 runs, high score 79. You feel very disappointed that he didn't score 100, 45.37. Um, and then we we talk. We, you know, I spoke about Leon Johnson was retired now, 388, high score of 150. The, the issue with Ambrose, even though he didn't get 100, at least there was some consistency in terms of the pattern of scoring. What you find with some of the players, for instance, Bravo had two centuries in one game, but ended up with four, four forty-six. Forty-six. So you look at that, you know, lack of consistency in spite of a big game. Yeah. Leon Johnson, 150 from 288. Here is Graves squeezing this one through cover. We'll get a couple of runs now. Smith the serving up an easy half volley. If they want, they can get three. They have shut down. But, but you spoke then of Atenez. That was just consistency through and throughout. Yeah. In five games, getting over 600 runs is always a plus. It's always a mark. Only in the old days 
when you had a fixed champion West Indies team that a player with over 600 ones would not get into the team. Mosley 355, Karen Powell 347, Zachary McCaskey 303, Kevin Sinclair, not a bad season set, 285 runs, high score 77. And to complement that, he would also have some wickets, 18 wickets as well. So he earned a uh, Machu Nandu. Um, you know, he, he started off with 100 here at the Survivorated Stadium, ended with 273 uh, when you all look at it. So in, in terms of the batsman set, is what you were talking about, the, the consistency. Yes. Walcott, um, he only scored 253 runs as compared to Jama Hamilton, the Leeward Islands captain, um, 241 runs. Um, and, you know, Jama has is, is, is got that class, that capability. You know, he can score more runs consistently. In fact, he's good enough to maybe even get into any team as a batsman. Could leave again. He has one test to his name. Yeah, one would have for been the, the meantime. Would have been the A-team keeper, wicket keeper for a while. And I still consider him to be the best keeper set in the Caribbean. Has good his, hands. His glove work has just been amazing. Um, it's just for him to be able to, you know, recap back the form, you know, around about 2016, 2017. And he's got so much power now. He's a little bit more older, and he thinks that he can beat the leather off of the ball sometimes. But when he cashes in, you can guarantee you can get some runs from him. Well, an injury forced him out of this game because, as you know, he had an injury in the previous game. Did score 50. Did. Did uh, score and a good half century a in the context of the century. game. But once he was injured, then he has been ruled out of this game. So... Unfortunate, we have had at least three injuries uh, forcing players out. The Pitman issue, we have also had the Mosley issue. So, Mosley for Ambris, uh, Robin Simmons for Pitman, and now we would have seen Hamilton being out. Another leave again. Now, Smith coming into this championship with some 18 wickets 362 runs has not looked himself here at all no he has not he he has been in my mind bowling off stump not just off stump line but way outside off stump both to the right handers mostly to the left handers because he has bowled mainly to the left handers given the composition of the academy team and now seeing him uh, opening the ball in this game uh, bowling to both Nando and Powell. He has really just been wide out there, not really threatening the stumps. But now he has come back for a second spell. Needs to get into that wicket column early. Much better line. They just need to be a little bit more fuller. So two runs coming off of the Niles Smith over. Uh, six um, over so far. And really by... His comparison, he would feel maybe, don't want to say on the ball, but he's really not stepped up to the mark yet. He maybe can have a long day in the field, providing that things change. 65 for 5, 22 overs bowl. Yes, when you looked at that, that batting card, Powell at the top with 23. No other batter has gotten double figures. And that has been a long time. In fact, Powell was the first to depart. So the batting has left much to this to be desired, especially for uh, Team Headley so far in this tournament. If you take Joshua De Silva's uh, 100 out in the first innings and then the supporting knock uh, from Akeem Jordan in particular, it's not looking good for this batting team. Reefer, bang on target to Hodge, who just plays it quietly into the cover area, gets a single. So rotation of the strike is going to be also very important. These two teammates also, Justin Graves coming from Barbados and going to the Windward Islands to get an opportunity to play. And like I said, coming up with some 16 wickets. Leading the way for another season again, 212.2 overs, 502 runs. The big man, the vice captain of the Leeward Islands Hurricane, Rakeem Kong with 35 wickets. Next in line, Pomal, who will be looking to, in this game, maybe pick up 600 first-class wickets. I was trying to write down 600 set. <laughs> <laughs> he 
600, for a while. 600 first, first class, class wickets. wickets. That wow. speaks <laughs> volume. <laughs> you get to that uh, achievement. And it's and like, uh, it's uh, like uh, Kim uh, Roach, 500 first class wickets as a fast bowler. Yes, <laughs> and, and that's a big feat. He has been around Pamal with, along with the Vindra Bishu for Guyana for years. And uh, they basically came into the Guyana team as young teenagers. And now Pamal is still going. Yeah. Tormenting Bishu. Caribbean batsman. Yes. Hodge. It's back and cracking that. He'll get a couple of runs here. Carty is, is after it. Yeah, he just uh, and at the top of the ladder, you mentioned Raheem Cornwall with 35. Uh, that is an astonishing feat. Seven wickets per match. Five wicket hauls this season. Four. Ten wicket, and if you look at that career, that always amazed me. Someone bowls season after season consistently, bowls the most over along with Pramal, but yet has a difficulty being considered a mainstay in the West Indies setup. And these are some of the challenges that we face when we look at selecting genuine players horses for courses in any condition how do you deal with that well in the top three akim jordan stands out as one of the leading fast bowlers 139 overs 382 runs with 22 wickets will break as reefer bongs away hodge is just turning this to the left of the square leg umpire shanda paul comes around nicely can't stop the single and Hodge goes to 10 from 37. Justin Gray is 4 from 9. We're approaching lunch. It's 11.49 here in Antigua and Barbuda. Let's shift the equivalent. And I just wanted to make this comment quickly. If a batter scores 400 in five matches, hands down, he's okay. When a bowler takes four or five wicket hauls in five matches. Well... Different panels have their, their, their options. You've got somebody like a Brian Charles, um, off spinner from Trinidad and Tobago, as the over comes to an end. 23 overs bowls, 70 for 5, 172 overs, 524 runs, 21 wickets. Marquina Minley, 117.4 overs, 341 runs with 19 wickets. And like I said, Kevin Sinclair, his 121 overs, 29, 299 runs, 18 wickets. Beaten, you know, he picked up 18 wickets. And McAllister in his first season, 18 wickets. Niall Smith, 18. Shem Holder, 18. And Preston Maxwell, 15. And Jeremiah Louis, um, 13 wickets. So the one round of, of five first class games set. Um, guess Cricket West Indies will have to win the T20 World Cup if they get there and try and see if they can find some funds so that we can have an expansion of our regional four day competition. From 5 to 10. That's a good idea. 5 to 10 or a few more of this type of series. Or if you can't have from 5 to 10, perhaps extend the season to a playoff after the league. These are some of the considerations and continue with weeks headly. But we can also have some second team cricket to set because we, we have to start making an evaluation as to what's happening at the franchise level. And we were talking set... Let's look at somebody like a Dominique Drakes. If you have a full Barbados lineup team here, will a Dominique Drakes get into a full Barbados lineup? As much as you know, we want him to play red ball cricket. I'll come back to that discussion. Lovely shot here by Kevin Hodge. Short ball. He had nothing on it, and he slapped it into the square leg area for four. I really like that shot in particular. He was able to rock back on the back foot and he pulled that one forward of the square leg umpire. Playing it with authority without playing it in the air. It, if you look at it, a shot of a batsman with confidence and a shot of a batsman in form. Coming into him over the wicket, short. And let's look at it. Nicely with the front foot in the air, right the back foot, right in the crease and hammered it in good style he looks good has looked good for years a number of years has sometimes run hot and cold he's 14 leaves alone a delivery for
from Niall Smith. So I was coming back to the situation set. Uh, we started the conversation. Let's look at a, a young guy like Kevin Wickham. Kevin Wickham would have made his debut for the Barbados team this year. Um, when you have all of the stars and the Kyle Mayers and company back home, I'm, and I'm talking, on, I'm, I'm looking ahead next season. Will a Kevin Wickham get into a Barbados team? So, what is going to happen to a young Kevin Wickham? Well, um, he, he, going he would forward? still be at the age for the academy, I, I would assume. Yeah, but the academy would not be in the four-day competition. Yeah. So you, you see, you see, you see, this, you see the discussion where I'm going. So we have to be careful in how, how do we manage and systems that we put in that we put in place. No run. And I say that in the backdrop of. Are the, will the selectors be brave enough to figure out that we're going to give a young Kevin Wickham an opportunity? We're going to give a Dominique Drakes an opportunity to advance and go forward? Um, I'm not too sure, but I'm just thinking ahead based on what's going to be happening. Well, I guess selectors have to be bold at times. Uh, you, you'd have had uh, unique situations in the past. Fidel Edwards, how he made his way into the West in this team. It was, he was sighted in the net. Do you take the risk? Bang on target again. Straight bat here by Kevin Hodge. But these are serious conversations that, that we, you know, we need to begin to have. We, we're talking also about the cycle of test cricket. Um, and so the conversation has to take place. The new cycle is going to come out soon, Set. Um, I think it is unfair to a superpower like Cricket West Indies that we go to Australia to play two test matches. Right. Well, With well the balance we need is at least three test matches. But again, if we're not competing and we be competitive enough, then you know we'll be just more or less offered the crumbs that are on the table. By delivery here by Niall Smith. Over completed. 74 for 5 if you're... Viewing and you're wondering what has gone wrong for Team Headley is simply that after what looked like a good start between Powell and Nando, the team really has fallen apart due to some good bowling on the part of, of Dominic Drakes, who has had three of those five wickets. A run out, a, 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 an indiscreet second run uh, that also caused the fall of Josh De Silva's wicket. And uh, we also saw a wicket for Jair McAllister. Powell getting 23, but did not carry on. And we saw a bit of indiscretion with some of the batters, uh, particularly that shot that got Sunil Ambris out, hitting across the line at a delivery from Jakes that was coming across. Similar situation with, Paul, with Powell trying to go across the line those were factors young Matthew Nando just uh, a little bit disappointed uh, about his outcome Walcott didn't give it away got a decent delivery uh, but was also playing the, with the face of the bat turned towards the onside and got nicked off so somebody needs to stem the flow here and Kevim Hodge looks as though he has the intent. And how long Justin Graves would stay around. Both played together uh, for the windwards in the first class season. The seamers have really done the job here for Alex Atenez. They picked up five wickets before lunch. I'll be searching to pick some more wickets up here also. We would also remember or recall that was also the ploy uh, in the first, well, the academy did something similar against Team Headley. Had five wickets early, and then they struggled to get through the middle. So, would there be a rear guard action, or would there be a blocker in the middle? Hakim John would have scored his highest first class score in that innings. He's, up, he's nicked off. Justin Graves. He was neither forward nor back. That's a delivery there. Justin Graves goes. Good sharp catch by Devon Thomas going across him. And he just pushed the hands. And the six wicket goes down. Yes. It was a delivery from Reefer. Not a lot of pace. Pitch outside off. Holding its way. And then he just 
nibbled at it with no conviction. He was not going through for a drive. He just he was wide. <laughs> Think he could, you know, when he when he looks back at the television replay with his vision is right in front of him, he could have maybe just left that alone. But he was committed. And that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. He was committed to what? <laughs> to the ball. <laughs> he was committed to playing. That's why he got it nicked. That's why we play this wonderful game set. He, he was committed cricket. to nicking. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He was not committed to a drive. Yeah. He was not committed to a, a fully defensive stroke. But, but Thomas could have dropped. Thomas could have dropped it to set. No, you, you're not going to find Thomas <laughs> trying catches <laughs> like those. <laughs> so that's why, that's, that's why it's called cricket. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Because well, we've could seen have probability, low yeah. probability scenario. Yeah. It is up to the batter. That's a soft dismissal. It to is. be fair. 74 for 6. And Akeem Jordan comes out. Perhaps he's going to say, okay, I did the trick. I don't have Josh De Silva with me like I did in the academy team. But, he's but he has Kevin Hodge. Hodge. So and he then he, he has still to deliver. start again. How important this is, it is important for Akeem Jordan not just to establish himself uh, as, as a good uh, seam bowler in the context, but one who can show that he can bat and bat consistently. What I like about Akeem Jordan is his work ethic in, in, in both batting, bowling, feeling. Because he finished his spell and he can still go and feel at first slip or feel at gully. So he's, de he's developing into, as you would have to say, you know, quietly uh, a bowling all around there. Um, and, and to complement that, he got 22 wickets so far. He scored his highest first class score um, in the first game. And he'll be looking to try to make sure that he register. But he's just slowing down Raymond Reefer for a while, making him wait. Well, some guys would, would, would want to knock us to suggest that he's uh, uh, coming in to be an all-rounder. Because, yes, he has had some decent scores. But in the days gone by, a Bernard Julian is going to tell you to be an all-rounder. You've got to produce more with the bat to be called. Franklin Stevenson is going to be beating down your door. <laughs> because I can remember the 165 <laughs> that he scored against the Leeward Islands. And could still come back and take five wickets. Yeah, and these guys would be saying, what all-rounder are you talking about, yeah. Vernon? Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a work in progress um, <laughs> when, when you look at it. And you could see Jordan improving as, as, as the time goes on. Well, right. And he's an improving uh, batter based on oil. based on opportunities that are available because we only can judge Jordan from what we see here in the Caribbean I can't judge him from anything else um, you know what I mean so what's in front of me I'm hoping I like so what then I you see call so Louis an all-rounder Louis is a, is, is a, a heavy all -rounder. scorer yeah. one who scores consistently yeah. because he's saved then are the bowlers he's, who he's saved Lee what he saved the Lee was lower half many 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 a seasons but I think it's gone unnoticed Ooh. Jordan, on the other hand, is emerging into that that it's bowling uh, reliable <laughs> batter who can uh, become an all-rounder. He would like to increase that column from uh, transitioning from his first first class half. So it's lunch here, set seventy four for six. It's not a a happy out in here at all. No, for Team Headley. It's, it's in fact one of the lowest scoring period in f in terms of the first session. That we have had 74 for six. And you look at the batting card and you'd see why. Only Powell with 23 runs. The other batters, they have failed to get double figures apart from Kavim Hodge, who is 40 not out there with Akeem Jordan on, on, on three. Nando four, Ambers four, Walcott eight, De Silva five, Justin Gray's four. Sound like a phone number. Yeah, nothing much to shout about at all here. Um, but take no credit away from the, the, the bowling figure set. As e you exactly, go to that. because there has been very good bowling. I think the standout there is Dominic Drake. He's three for nine from eight overs. That tells the story. Excellent bowling. Not just moving it away, but bringing it in. And he has shared, uh, well, the other two wickets being shared by Raymond Reefer, who has just gotten his first. And Jay McAllister, who has won. Uh, the other, Josh De Silva, was run out. And I think at the start of this game, it is Team Weeks having bowled 25 overs, feeling that they have had the better of the morning split. So until then, 
just before you go set uh, a total of 122 dot balls and no partnerships have been strung together so far 34 for 6 1 for 35 2 for 35 1 for 31 2 for 35 3 for 46 4 for 56 62 74 they need some partnerships they need something to be able to be happening after and their savior here as we would have to consider it would have to be the man himself akim jordan and kevin hodge so it's 74 for lunch on behalf of the entire team set um set burton malachi nickel joel and vernon a springer as we sign off here for day one first session of this important game team headley and team weeks
Good afternoon and welcome back to beautiful Coolidge in Antigua and Barbuda. It's a post-luck session here on day number one, match number three of the Headley Week series. Team Headley, they won the toss this morning, opted to bat. But since then, it's not really gone their way. Last week is at 31, 35, 46, 56, 62 and 74 for six. They are now at the crease. Kevin Hodge, he's there on 14. And Akeem Jordan, he's yet to get off of the mark. I'm joined uh, by Nikhil Utam Tanjani, and we're going to take you through uh, the first period here after lunch. The ball in the hand of Dominic Drakes. <coughs> uh, the first runs after lunch go to hoping for in day number one. Yeah, I think Joel, they'll be disappointed, uh, especially after the silver won the toss. Had a look at conditions, and I mean, yes. At Coolidge, you tend to get that variable bounce. It could be a bit challenging. I still think this is probably the best day you'll get on the surface. And you look at some of the shot selection, that to me will be the biggest disappointment from a Team Headley perspective. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, shots look to be positive towards aggressive uh, this morning. And because of that, the situation that they find themselves in now, there's some six down and a job to be done. Calvin Hodge, he's someone that's found himself at the crease when oh, the Windward Islands Volcanoes have been in spots of bother. I do know they've got a century. I think 387 runs in total is what Calvin Hodge would have gotten. And he'll be hoping uh, that he can do something in this situation similar to what he had to do during the first class championship. Yeah, Hodge was consistent. It was consistent this season and needed to be after he already struggled in 2022. But this innings, if he can kick on and get them something competitive. Would merit a lot, I think, in terms of on his report come the end of the season. Because after this, you think he'll be wanting to be one of those names going to Bangladesh for that A-team tour. And he's been in and around the Western East side for a long time. Went to England in that 2020 tour during COVID. So he's been around the setup, but hasn't been able to break in. Drake's once again. Starting as he finished uh, before lunch, picking up uh, those three wickets. And he's really challenged on both the outer edge of the bat as well as the pads of Team Headley, Nikhil. Yeah, he's been brilliant, to be honest, Dominic Drakes. And yes, he's bought some challenging deliveries. I think that team line has been the key. But what's the big standout for me is eight overs on the truck. Hungry, wants to do well. Of course, as I say that, Joel, was a rank full toss. Funny thing about it, given the pressure that he's been able to build up, he gets away with that one. But Drake says, I would have heard you mention earlier on commentary, young in terms of you know, the longer format of the game, but he's showing great skill. I do remember he got a chance versus Trinidad and Tobago in the first class champ. He went about it quite well. And beats the outside edge to close out uh, the first one after lunch. It's 75 for six. Yeah, another brilliant over from Drake's. And that final delivery was pr perfect way to end, really. Again, where he's gotten the wickets today, challenging the outside edge. For me, though, the killer delivery is the one that comes back. We saw Ambrose fall victim to that leg before because it can sharply come back a bit late. And, of course, they've added Raymond Rifa, who's going to come into bowl now. I think in the last game, watching them against the academy and Kurt McKenzie when he got that double, it just seemed like they lacked a bowling option, a seam bowling option. So Rifo will help their exploits. They had Davin Thomas as well, but he's behind the stumps. Yeah, certainly inclusion of Raymond Rifo has bolstered uh, the seam attack for team weeks. Uh, 
Uh, I mentioned Dominic Drakes and what he would have done. Uh, but it was actually in Trinidad, not versus Trinidad. So it was in Trinidad but versus the Lee Words. And he picked up four wickets in that game after that. And he had a bit of a niggle that kept him out of the side for the final two matches. But yeah, without that experience, he's really shown up in, in the games that he's played. I think Team Headley have to look at this situation. 75 for 6, I know it's a dire one. But given the way Jordan batted in the last game when they were in a similar crisis, got to 50, in second innings got to 28. Hodges spent now 45 deliveries at the crease, so he's built a solid base. Surely they have to be thinking if these two can bat this entire session, you get yourself somewhere close to 150 and you can touch and scramble to 200. Might be in a competitive position on this deck yeah certainly you want to ensure that you get first innings runs on the board and that's where team Headley kind of suffered somewhat in the first match and you mentioned the partnership in terms of Akeem Jordan in fact was a fantastic one between himself and the skipper Joshua De Silva which really Got them up to what was a very respectable total. Similar position, similar conditions. Probably this surface is a touch drier than the one that they would have played on in match number one. But definitely, as you mentioned, the best time to get runs. First inning runs will certainly be crucial uh, across this encounter, especially when you think about the fact that the dryness of the surface will favour you know, the legs of a Versami Pramal coming into the back end of it. It's also s the similar pitch that they played on in that match against the academy, pitch number four. And this one definitely seemed to do a lot more than pitch number six, which they played, the team, which Team Weeks played on in that game that ended as a draw. So if that's something to go by, we can't expect a lot to happen. We've already seen six wickets go down in just 27 overs. Some balls have kept low. Haven't seen any spin into the attackers yet, but that'll be interesting to see because they are cracks and they will begin to open up as the days go on. I made an over from Reefer. It remains 75 for six. Yeah, another good period of bowling from Team Weeks. That's something I think they did really well in the first 20 overs. And really and truly, look at the breakdown of the two 10 over periods. Almost periods of two halves because they were cruising. 31 for one, going out above three runs and over in the first 10. And in the second 10, just 30 runs on the board, but they lost three wickets. And it just seemed like a complete contrast of what they had done to build that resolve and keep the concentration when Matthew Nando was at the crease. Surprised, Joel, that they've not opted to keep Darren Bravo into the side? Well, in terms of Darren Bravo at the toss, the news from De Silva was that he had a bit of a stiff neck. Okay. Yeah, and that was the reason for Darren Bravo being left out of the side today. And looking at the form, I guess that certainly would have been a question. But, uh, yeah, it was because of just a slight neck issue for Darren Bravo. Missing an absolute full toss there it was Akeem Jordan. Yeah, missed out really Jordan on runs because that entire offside is vacant because of the amount of slips that Drake's is operating with. So massive gap between the cover region. Really thought he should have done a bit better, Jordan. Yeah, it was so interesting to see him look across uh, to umpire Gregory Brathard and question the height of it. Uh, I don't think that height was much of a factor or a question. There was more so a case of sight and the fact that he probably didn't see it and missed it, Akeem Jordan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 
thought about one. And he heard him exclaim there with regards to Hodge and maybe not necessarily backing up and looking for the single Akeem Jordan. Still or not, and as many know, you want to get off of the mark. Akeem Jordan is still remonstrating almost with regards to the fact that that could have been a single. I really think this is a massive innings for Kevin Hodge. When you look at the fact that in the last game, didn't really get going 10 and 8, the two scorers. Had a big season, very productive season. This first class season where he got the 387 runs, averaged just a touch under 40, scored 100 as well. But if he can close out today after being in a real tight situation, if he gets to the end of the day unbeaten and keeps Team Headley in the middle, this innings could do a lot for his confidence. Yeah, it certainly can. He will certainly be hoping that he can do it. As you mentioned, you know, he's been in these types of situations already for the Windwards this season. And he's really dug them out of a hole on, I think, one or two occasions, certainly across the championship. Another wonderful opportunity for him here to do that again. He can have faith and confidence in the fact that Akeem Jordan will stay up there and back with him as well, given that Akeem Jordan places a price on his wicket. Short and wide. And to close it out, remains at 75 for six. Yeah, another maiden from Dominic Drakes. And just putting a lot of dot deliveries together. The clusters, and I think that is what's helped build so much pressure. Because you mentioned the fact that what led to the senior Amber's wicket, they had gone 15 deliveries without conceding a single run. And people say, well, you know, dots in red ball cricket, Joel, is pretty common. But I think people underestimate the value, especially when you have pressure being built from both ends. It can cause you to play a false shot like we saw from Amber's earlier in the innings. Yeah, certainly pressure is a big part of the game, especially somebody like Amber's who enjoys forcing things They are those types of batters who enjoy feeling bat on ball. And when you starve them of that you know, opportunity to score runs, you set good fields and you bowl you know, to your fields, you're able to capitalize on mistakes made. Very happy to see Ray Marie for bowling as well because I didn't expect him to take the new ball, but for me it's a sign in of positivity in the right direction because he's struggled with a knee injury that has kept him from bowling a lot. He's had a hamstring problem plaguing him as well. He, yep, in 2022, when he pl last played the regional four-day season, he only picked up nine wickets but averaged 14, and that's because he just didn't bowl the volume of deliveries because of the injuries, but every time he has the ball, he can be a that real impact player for you. I saw him in that Zimbabwe test series, bowl some critical overs for the West Indies as well on some placid surfaces. But I think if he keeps enhancing this bowling and can get back to full fitness, and you tell me what you think, Joel, but I think that will help enhance his position in the West Indies side as an all-round option. It certainly would, and I think that is where Raymond Reefer needs to be getting to in terms of we, we know what he can do with the bat. He's shown signs of that. But in looking for options that can help you in both departments, and we think about somebody like a Kyle Mears and those types of all-rounders who the bowling aspect is being used a bit more. Raymond Reefer certainly falls in to that category as what you would consider your utility player, whereby, yes, he slots in down the order, the, the, I guess you could call it that middle order, depending on how things shape up, might find himself, you know, stepping up one or two places. But if he can actually deliver, let's say, a spell of 10 here and there in between with the ball, pick up a wicket or two, keep things tight. That is certainly what he should be looking to 
here and beyond, especially at the highest level. Yeah, and it's been an interesting career path for him as well because mainly you would say he was a bowling all-rounder in years, in previous seasons in the CPL when he was at the Barbados Tridents and contributed massively for them. It was with the death bowling and his main expertise was his left arm seam. Then one season in 2022, just went up the order and batted at three for Barbados and from there got into the West Indies side and hasn't looked back since. Uh, three runs uh, from that over. Score moves on to 78 for six. I am eager to see, though, where he bats in this side, whether he bats at number three. I think that would give us a clear indication of what the West Indies could be looking to do in the future in maybe an India series coming up. It's been interesting, the mixed reactions from him batting at three. Some people feel he might be better suited a bit lower down the order. Has been resilient. That's the one thing we can say in the series that he's played. He's provided those innings of real grit, but just hasn't quite got the runs that you probably would desire as yet. Yeah, as we would say, he's gotten those starts. Uh, as I mentioned, where he's shown these signs of a player who can kick on and score those big runs. But he's still looking for those types of figures and consistently at that. Yeah, and speaking about consistency, Dominic Drakes is just that uh, across uh, these spells that he's bowled today. Had a long spell of eight this morning. And he's back for his second spell. No! Yeah, very impressive for me because when I looked at him in that first game he played against Academy and we, we always remember... I think we always think that, that Trix is so experienced, but he's only 25 years old and he's played so much cricket outside of the Caribbean. The drastic difference in his bowling from the first match when he bowled the 26 overs didn't get a wicket to today. Just seems that he's learnt so quickly in the space of a week. And he's someone that does his research and really will try to enhance and get better every game. He's done that. Uh, he certainly has, and I think back to, to that first game versus the Academy and for Dominic Drake's with a case whereby he had periods where he, he found the right lengths and lines on the surface that they played one, which is just to the left of where we are currently. But he, he had, let's say, periods of one or two overs where he was there or thereabouts in terms of where he needed the ball on the lengthy lengths and then kind of strayed a bit, got picked off here and there. You know, some great batting as well on the part of the academy no doubt but in terms of the consistency that we saw here today it wasn't necessarily there in that match changes to uh, around the wicket now i find this quite interesting because drix has looked so menacing from over the wicket because of that delivery that's coming back into the right hander now going around it's a different angle of attack targeting the stumps but I think your slips, and he's got three slips in place and a man at a close catching point. For me, I think they are less in play. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, certainly with the ball going across uh, the right handed batters, you would have favored. That slip card in the man at point comes into play, especially on the drive. Uh, I think for Dominic Drakes, it can maybe a key come on to those pads, maybe get one to maybe hold its line, and still those slips come into play. But I guess just offering a different proposition uh, for Kevin Mahard, who has looked relatively decent at the crease, maybe think probably it's a little different, maybe change his setup ever so slightly, cause him to just close up a bit. Oh, Honing in on those pads uh, to close out. Another Drake's over. It's 79 for six. Two runs and three overs conceded by Drake's. 18 deliveries bowled with just two runs. And that, I think, is a testament to how consistent he's been, but also how skillful he's been. Because for me, the line has been the key. He's been very aggressive. And he's almost created that indecision outside of the offset when he's bowled from over the wicket. It's excellent stuff from... 
I can call him a youngster. I think he's still relatively young. The man from the other end, Ray Marifa, much more senior. Wonder when they do get McAllister back into the attack for a burst after lunch. It's interesting that you mentioned McAllister because in that game versus the academy, he's who took the ball directly after lunch. And uh, it was a different type of spell for him from there. Before lunch, he was given the ball, uh, as I mentioned earlier in commentary, just around over number 10. He was given the ball in over number 11 today. And he bowled it well in that game. Had two short spells with the ball. But then after lunch, things kind of got away from him. I wonder if they're looking back to that match and saying, okay, maybe bowling, let's say, the new ball at the start here. They are bowling directly after the intervals. Puts a bit more pressure on McAllister in terms of the type of the start that the team is looking for. And because of that, are going to say, okay, we're going to get through a couple overs with the more experienced guys. Then we're going to come and have a burst with him in terms of that pace that he has. And I could be completely wrong about this, but I just find watching cricket over the years, a batter, especially in red ball cricket, might be most vulnerable in his first 10 deliveries. I just think you have someone like a Hodge who's been comfortable at the grease. Bit of extra pace from McAllister, even if it's for two or three overs. I wonder if that could just create some sort of uncertainty. But clearly, Ali Athens believes that Rifa can do the job. Let's see. Comes around the wicket and I'll refer instantly, causing a slight bit of a problem. And there's where we, we talked, even with the Dominic Drake's aspect, just having Kevin Hodge adjust his stance, the angle of the ball, just a, a bit different as well. Coming back towards that off, the type of shots that he has to play, he must probably kind of question a little bit now. one on line more so than length because it certainly did not get up there I would be inclined if I was at Athens to maybe try an over two of a Versami promo from this end that Ray Marifa is bowling from because I've seen some big cracks right around the area of where Kevin Hodge is batting you can see on your screen a bit of roughage even if it's one or two overs just to see if the ball is doing anything I know it's a relatively new ball still only in over number 31 Of another maiden over uh, from Reefer, 79 for six. Yeah, impressive stuff after lunch, but they'll want to keep getting wickets team weeks because Headley still have those that are capable. These two at the crease for sure. A um, capable partnership. We've already seen Jordan get a 50 in this series. Hasn't scored yet, but he's been resolute in his defense. Anderson Phillip. Got that 43 against Australia just a couple of months ago at the test level. So we know he can bat as well. Shem Holders contributed with runs for the Barbados Pride. So not all lost as yet. Dominic Drake still continuing. Joel, 12 overs on the, well, not on the trot, but 12 overs in relatively short span of time. For me, that cannot be easy. It's very hot out there. Yeah, certainly a heavy workload for Dominic Drakes, and I guess that's the reward for bowling well. I'm not sure if you want to call it much of a reward, but uh, to date he's been handling it quite well. Hasn't looked as if he's been weary from it. Uh, it's just a wonder of maybe how much longer he will continue. Uh, had to go get my notebook very quickly because of the fact that you mentioned Pramal and uh, the possibility of him bowling from this media center end. And I do recall in the match versus the West Indies Academy, in fact, the end, the choice end for him was that CIU end. It wasn't one that was very fruitful for him, especially in the first innings. 
Bowl some 27 overs from that end, I believe. They're driven nicely by Jordan. He finally gets off the mark. So it'll be interesting to see if they do give Versami Pramal a goal first of all from this media center end. Yeah, the only reason why I'm suggesting from this end is because when I looked at the surface this morning, bowlers bowling into that end, for me, I think there's a lot more roughage and a l less grass to work with. So I think you could get a lot more spin bowling to that side. But I think on day two or three, Joel, you might see both ends begin to spin just because of how humid and dry conditions are at Coolidge. Yeah, I, I do believe that I'm inclined to think the exact same thing as you in terms of the fact that spinners from both ends come into play probably from, I would say, the second half uh, of day number two onward on this surface, especially if the sun continues to bait down on it as it is currently. Flags aren't fluttering uh, too much here at Coolidge, so not really a really cool edge. <laughs> Forgive me for that one. Lovely shot uh, by Akeem Jordan. Brings up his first boundary. Yeah, and I think that's a bit more of what Headley will want to do because the intent to score. I mean, yes, Drix is in an excellent spell, but there's only two fielders in the offside. So a lot of acreage to score. And Drix has missed his length a couple of times and they haven't capitalized. Jordan seems to be a bit more comfortable at the crease now. Yeah, just a bit of width. You can see what he's trying to do, though. With the angle... Full at the stumps. Almost a, like a T20 mode of attack. Wait, wait, wait. Pulls back the length. There's Drake to close out the over. It's 85 for 6. Yeah, much more like it from Team Headley. Six runs from that over. And it's the real first time we've seen Drake's miss his length more than once in the over. I wonder if that could just be a sign... Of the end of his spell. They do have other options. But it will be Rifa continuing. Still a lot of work to do 14 weeks. This is far from over. Given the batting that they have to come. <coughs> Who do you think has been the standout for you, Joel? Someone that has seen all three of the matches now. From team weeks. Which ball do you think has been probably the most menacing? In terms of menacing uh, from Team Weeks, given how things have gone because of the fact that, well, uh, versus the academy, there was not much menace <laughs> in it. It was honestly brilliant batting on the part of the academy. Uh, I would have to say that, for me, there were short spells that I enjoyed because... The bowlers of Team Weeks, a bit of a fumble allows them to come through for one. But yeah, the bowlers of Team Weeks would know that they didn't necessarily hit the straps that the coaches would have wanted them to hit you know, across that uh, academy match. So I would say that for me, in short burst, I would say Jeremy McAllister stood out to me, especially in, in what would have been his first and second spells that he bowled to the left-handers for the academy. I would say Dominic Drakes as well. It stood up for me once again in short spells also, or short burst. As well in terms of some of the areas that he was able to hit, some of the questions that he was able to ask of the batters of the U.S. Teams Academy. For me, for Samri Pramal, probably was overused at one stage, especially given that there wasn't much in the surface for him. Absolutely fantastic from Akeem Jordan. Yeah, classical. And mention Akeem Jordan. He came back. There's a reason why he got a 50 in the last game. Came in good time as well. 
64 deliveries for his 54 in that match against the academy. So Weeks need to ensure that they don't let up because this could easily turn into 150, 200, which could be competitive, but that is right out of the textbook. Attempts him with one outside of the off stump. Again, Raymond Reaper probably asked him to play a similar shot to that one, but on that occasion, probably just a bit more wide. And the edge certainly could have come into play there. But yeah, just in terms of the bowling, like I said, a, I wouldn't necessarily say that there was much in terms of standouts, but there were short areas where they did what they were supposed to do in terms of the execution. Because I think back uh, to the coaching board that I was able to get a glance at. Five runs uh, from that Raymond Reefer over 90 for six. But yeah, just very quickly before we go into Keel, I was able to glance at the coaching board and it said for the bowlers, it was challenge the batter's defense, be disciplined in hitting good areas, work out plans on how to get batters out. And, and over the course of that game, we probably felt as if they didn't necessarily look as if, because I'm not sure that I could 100% would certainly say they did not have the plans to work the batters out. But it just didn't look like that especially given that the surface wasn't necessarily responding how they might have liked and it didn't look as if they were as disciplined in how they went about the bowling performance today though you can say that there's been a, a stark contrast yes they've been helped by some of the shot selection but overall you have to say that they've bowled a touch better than they did in match number one after a four of a spell after lunch now smith replaces dominic drix he will have his work cut out for him because this partnership is developing nicely. Punched away. Should have the legs to get into the boundary. It does. Uh, quite a lovely looking shot uh, by Kevin Hodge. Something that we've seen uh, across all of his batting innings especially in the recently held first class championship as well enjoys playing off of the back foot hodge on this occasion the the timing was truly the hallmark of that one not really looking to over hit it on that occasion allowing the ball to come to him uh, just timed it beautifully uh, through the offside oh my goodness uh, the pace of delivery there is probably what undid Kevin Hard. Got on top of the bounce quite nicely, though, and worked that one down towards Fine Legacy. Say good afternoon to Vernon Springer. Yeah, good afternoon. 95 for 6. Strong but falls well short of Athenes at slip. A lovely partnership here growing of Renan 21 for Team Headley. Uh, they will certainly be hoping that this could be the one that kind of shapes or sets up their innings. I think the balance of the, the attack here is, I guess it's just what Athenes has to work with. Um, they came back after lunch and Went for Reefer and Drakes. Um, Niall Smith is really not settled in, is really not found his rhythm so far in the series. Ball just dying here, more or less. And this is a complete different track. Ball has not seemed wrong today as much. Just needs some more effort ball. Dominic Drakes has bowled well. Raymond Reefer has just been there, thereabout. Nothing much to shout about. 
And maybe soon Alex Atenez will have to be thinking about maybe even a Sinclair, six wickets down. You maybe want to think maybe to have seam from one end and spin maybe from the other end in Permol and Sinclair. Well, shaping back in nicely, but handled well by Akeem Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're able to get three from it. Yeah, certainly a conversation with regards to when we see yeah. Sami Pramal being introduced into the attack is a, a very good conversation to have, especially given that he's on the verge of... A lovely little landmark from. I said little, but it's certainly not little. He's currently on 599 first class wickets for Sammy Pramal, looking for his 600th in this encounter. Oh my Honing in on those pads. Nell Smith, an area uh, that uh, Kevin Hodge has been able to navigate at the end of 34. It's 98 for 6. Yeah, 98 for 6. Not a good showing so far from Team Headley. But it's almost like recovery time. Akeem Jordan, 13 from 32. And Kevin Hodge fighting on 25 from 68. Still continuing with Reefer. Don't know if this is a, a run out for Reefer. Uh, this is almost like his 13th over, one for 35, three maidens. Into his fifth over after lunch. You probably thought that, okay, since it started with Reefer, maybe it would be maybe a stint of three or four, and then you could see maybe the introduction of McAllister, maybe the introduction of a spinner. The track is so flat that, you know, you're down to six, you got to have different options. I mean, you come up with a plan, but you've got to look to try and change that. And the ball is just dying and dying. Um, so I really don't see any much of a penetration there because these two have really not troubled the spear in Jordan and Hodge. Yeah, Jordan doing the job that's been asked of him. A partnership, a six-wicket partnership for them in that match. Number one between himself and his skipper, De Silva, was 105 they will be hoping that something similar it could occur here uh, for them for this seven wicket partnership between himself and Kevin Hodge. Still on 98 for six. Not a lot of options here. I welcome Mali as Joel step out quietly. Deciding to go for Drake's mm. Reefer Smith. I, I just come to apologize for, for Mali. Uh, I had him uh, occupied this. Apolog <laughs> <laughs> what you were saying? You, you're not. You're not too impressed with the options used so far. Well, the, the penetration has certainly not worked after lunch, Mali. Mm. I'd, I'd they, agree. And they haven't really done anything exciting. So I'm saying it's like you come out to the master a, a book and you just, you know, you're just turning the pages. I mean, you've got to think differently right now. But to be fair, I think in the context of this match, in these conditions, I think Team Week's way ahead of the match at this stage, 98 for six. <laughs> Having Team Headley 98 for six, to be honest, in these batting-friendly conditions. How many batters do you think it's? Vernon, if you look through those six wickets. 
Fair enough. And your your assessment, I just still want to see some more innovation. Mm. Um, with, with number six, with Hodge and Jordan batting, just just something different. Maybe try Permal, you know, maybe, maybe Sinclair. Somebody will be searching at the pads just above the eye line. And we saw what happened. Jordan got out to a spinner when he got his first first class, his highest first class score. A different option. And he's looked good as a batsman, hasn't he? He certainly has. Um, Akeem Jordan. He's improved as, 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 as a cricketer. And that's why I was saying, Mali, I, I like his work ethic. I'm not trying to match him up to, to anybody yet, but I, I look at him and you could see him fast improving. Every time you see him, you could see a bigger effort. Got a, a sneak in to go to, you know, South uh, Africa. South Africa. And he taste of yeah, the international yeah, so he, environment. He, know, he knows what it's like. He's come back um, to the Caribbean hungry. And you could see every time he gets a chance when he finish, finishes his bowling, he goes and he works on his batting. And you could see him. He looks like a student of the game. Yeah, he's got a solid technique as well. Looks, looks like a genuine batter, really, at times. Hakeem Jordan, you think back to that team, Headley versus the West Indies Academy, scoring that half century. What, some 70 or 80 runs in the match and wickets? You know, the half century in the first innings. And his hard work has certainly paid off. It just shows you sometimes that you have to be patient, but it's not everybody... Um, is lucky enough to be patient. Some people get through, some people don't get through. That's the, the beast, as Mali would say, of the nature of professional mm, sport. Mm, mm. My main concern, Mali, is, you know, we'll see all these young players. We'll see the McKenzie and, and company and Anderson and company. But it's just like a year will roll on, and by the time you look, they might maybe only play five, six first-class games. Um, as compared to other players from around, we'll be getting a bigger opportunity. Economically, they will be in a different standing. And we have to face the reality, the fact to understand that, you know, as much as we're talking about test cricket, the white ball is, is certainly pushing folks away from, from test cricket. Squeezed away. Pass backward point. Don't think it will have the legs to go down. It does. So... A wide half volley there from Niles Smith again. Getting off track. And Kevin Hodge doing enough to just squeeze it past the gully and backward point and down to the boundary for four. Yeah, Kevin Hodge now the main batter at the crease here for a yeah, full toss, really, outside that off stump from Niles Smith. So he's looked a bit off color today, it must be said. McAllister ran in, so did Dominic Drakes. Dominic Drakes looks serene at times. But you can tell now, Smith just looking a bit down on energy, down on pace as well. Yeah. It's not the same now, Smith, I saw earlier in the year, Mali at the Savivan Richard Stadium. Um, even against the Windward Islands, I, I think he picked up a couple of wickets there, five wicket haul. But sometimes. Moods on different days. You don't know what players are going through. 100 up in the meantime for Team Headley. It's on days such as these where you've got to find a way, though. That's the difference, you know. That's what separates the truly good from the great. Half volley again. And Hodge punks in on it. Square this time. Into the cover point boundary for four. Yeah, Hodge now. Just starting to grow in confidence. That fluency through the offside, especially in this over. Just showing good hands on that first one to run it down to that third man boundary. And this time, just applying a bit more force. Getting a good stride in. And quietly, Mali, this partnership is 32 of 67. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Still not over here, as we were saying, because you stress just how good these batting conditions are. Speaking offline to, off air to, to assistant curator Kadeem Philip as well. You know, he stressed just how good a batting wicket this is, especially at this stage. 
Can it be fair enough, Mali, for me to say that these are the conditions that they will get in Bangladesh, except that they will have some spin bite as well? Yeah, it depends on what the Bangladesh curators decide, to be honest. They might decide to bounce out the West Indies. Yeah, well, the last time West Indies went there, they opted to go for spin. Spin heavy attacks. Managed to lose that series. End of that Smith over. 106 for 6. Yeah, we were saying. So, losing that last test series to the West Indies at home. You think back to that Kyle Mays, double century, Craig Brathwaite, Nick and Kuma Bonner coming to the party as well. I anticipate maybe. I'm not sure. They, they probably try something different because they have invested in pace, haven't they? I was just about to tell you that. We're talking about the A team. They might mm. want to see where the, where, the, where the new ones coming through. Yeah, Bangladesh oh. have really invested in, in trying to find bowlers who can bowl consistently above that 140 kilometers per hour. Per hour. Everybody is. And it's, it's, and it's maybe something that we seriously maybe need to look at to Mali in the West Indies. Once again. Once again, you know, I, I think we almost, almost everybody is like bowling medium pace. And we really don't have anybody out and out. Um, and I know a lot of people are going to say, well, what about the surfaces? Yeah, well, hey, if you're a fast bowler, you're a fast bowler. On drive by Jordan. Misfield by Vasame Pomol. He took a long time to recover there. Wonder if he's okay. They got two runs in the process. McAllister once again from this media center end. And I'm going to ask a question like you. Why is he not I'm bowling tired, from I'm the CIU road end? In fact, I, uh, I, I think at the break I need to go and ask I feel like a broken question. record, to be honest, <laughs> if I say it again. <laughs> like, it's actually quite unbelievable to think that we've come into this match once again. He's not even, it's not even been tried. If I you think back to three spells, actually, Dominic Drake sort of bowled like three spells in versus the West Indies Academy. First from this, the media center. Then, then he was the switch there to the road. Come then back he came back. back. <laughs> That's within his first <laughs> eight to ten overs. I don't understand it. I don't get it. There has to be something that you said. You maybe told him, beautiful York again. He's bowling a fuller length. So I asked, well... You know, I try and get as much information as I can. So I was chatting to, to Kadeem, Kadeem Philip as well, yeah. off about, you know, the pitch and the like. And we started talking about McAllister and what we thought and his ends and, you know, his choice of ends. And he, he was telling me that McAllister every day actually bowls from <laughs> the road end in the warm-ups. <laughs> so it's just strange, you know. You at least try someone from the other end. You at least, at least one over. At the very least. But not to bowl one delivery. Maybe he's made it clear to the captain. Nope, I'm good. It's the only thing I can think of. And even then, you know, the captain, you know what some captains are like. <laughs> I think it's a cricket game. You would love to bowl from any end. Yeah. And we were talking about that because when we looked at Yuan Lane, who on debut picked up five wickets from the CIU road end, Barron, he got four there and then picked up his fifth from the media center end. It's just a difference. Uh, and I'm, I'm just saying that... Kelvin Pittman as well. You yeah. saw the difference when he was switched to the CIU road end as well. Yeah. There's something about this end in terms of it's just slightly more uphill. It's the... It's, it's, you understand why McAllister is doing the majority of the donkey work from this end. He's probably the strongest uh, of the fast bowlers in this lineup. Dying, dying to Thomas in the end. Um, at lunch, they bowled Mali 25 overs. Since lunch, they bowled like 12 overs. And they're really not in the conversation anymore. N not much happening. And they need somebody to come up with some spark. It looks like it might be Vasami Pomal who's marking out his run. Well, you call for it. Once again, it's Vasami Pomal from the CIU road end. 
We saw that marathon spell that he would have bowled <laughs> in the last game. So I think Alec Athen is probably just lacking a little imagination here. Probably just showing a little inexperience as a captain, to be fair. He wouldn't have been a captain very long. Uh, probably his first season, first or second season, captaining the Windward Islands Volcanoes. So Thanks. just showing a little inexperience here, to be fair. Maybe just not necessarily doing the homework necessary. You think back to Rakim Cornwall where he would have picked up the majority of his wickets. The majority of his wickets in uh, f here at Coolidge is from the media centre end as well. And, and talking about strategy, now Pumal has come on. Now I know that they've gone for a short leg, but I've go also gone for a silly point. Um, he's on 5.99 and there's an apprehension. Yeah, just one away. Yeah, there's an apprehension in, in, in the batsman. I can't give him this one. You know, ju just because spin for the first time for the day. You want to give him that encouragement. You want to treat him like a champion bowler. Okay, and not only that, at 108 for six as well. You want to keep applying the pressure here. You put pressure on that front foot this defense. Kevin Hodge, you probably catch him not quite pushing out as far. Who knows? One goes on with the arm, hits the pad. There's Sammy Pomal is in business. Got to be thinking of ways to get batters out, to be fair. Always thinking of ways to get batters out. And uh, because they're not going to give you their hand away. I mean, I, I just look at Reefer and I see where Reefer is. He's almost like a wasted man there. And I'll bring that man up into an attacking position. But that, and that would just be one more to dismiss so that could come from that silly point position, as you said. Another one, he could back pad it to that man. Even... McAllister down here on fine leg. Um, I, I, I almost just think it's just almost like a, a wasted. Um, in my reckoning. This is the first time we've seen spin for the day. So you want to give them something to think about? He's on 599. 599 first class wickets. Psychologically, whoever is facing, they're going to be thinking about that. I don't want to be the batsman. To be the 600. To be the 600. Yeah, it's, a men it's a mental thing. He came into the previous match on 5 9 6, I think it was. He was four away. You see, you could look there. You see, Hodge wasn't really right to the pitch of that ball. He was in two, he was in two minds. Yeah, yeah. Just get Raymond Reefer up a little uh, closer, force him to, to play something different. Made Nova on the money. Day one, no real turn and, 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 and bounce just yet. But as you said, on the money. That's what we get from Ve Sami Pumal. Especially at times at this level. Not at times, but consistently at this level. And the, and the mindset of, of, of batsman Mali is that if Mali Richards comes on the ball, my, my objective is to come forward. Um, not looking to try to rotate the strike sometimes. And I think that is one of the things which tend to kill Caribbean batsmen. We don't look to try to maneuver to figure out how we're going to get a single. Yeah, especially when it's hot such as this. You know, you really put pressure on the fielders and the bowler. It plays into your favor, you know. But it's also, Vernon, it takes a toll on you as well, your fitness. That's what was so good, I think, about Mackenzie and Wickham and Kevlon Anderson as well. That's where the fitness really comes in. Think of how many loose strokes those guys would have played, to be honest, in those long innings. Not many, to be fair. You think back, Mackenzie almost cut his loose strokes in half. Last night in the conversation on Mason and Guess, um, Kevin Wickham... Oh, you listened to that show? Yeah, uh, well, I was, I was on, on the panel, so that's why I, I, I got to listen. <laughs> it was a situation where um, Wickham said that Mackenzie was getting tired. Mm. And so he decided that he was going to, you know, take most of the strike and, and oh. farm out. Good delivery. Good judgment here, indeed, by Akeem Jordan. I think that's... He's probably left that on length, and he's probably lucky, to be fair. Uh, that's 
just bounced over that off stump. Let's see what Ronnie has for us here. Slightly splayed front leg. Oh, just going past, actually. And I want to say something, Mali. Yeah. He got everything right there in that delivery. Very much His so. leading arm, everything went up. Clipped away. Beautifully. Won't go for four. Shanda Paul is after it. And they can walk three. I think they only picked up two in the end. But they should have been able to be thinking about yeah. about, about three. They could, uh, notice what I said? They could have walked Walk three. three. Yeah, only picked up two in the end. I think Akeem Jordan did. Probably just a little guilty of all watching, thinking he, he, that he, that he, was going to run over. away. Well, he, he maybe didn't know that they've been having some rain mm. in Antiguan Barbado. Kind of plugged in the outfield. So as much as it is might be hot here, um, almost every morning we get some early morning showers. These guys have done a remarkable job here on the outfield. They need something, Mali. They need a spark. There's nothing happening. The partnership is just growing. 36 from 86. The wickets fell at 1 for 31, 2 for 35, 3 for 46, 4 for 56, 5 for 62, and 6 for 74. Don't want to say rebuilding time, but trust me, needs more than rebuilding right now. Here's Jordan back and clipping this one to the mid wicket area, down to the boundary for four. This time he made proper contact, yeah, proper contact. Well, well, in front of square there by Akeem Jordan, made a pretty thunderous sound in our headphones here. Just timing the ball so sweetly. And to be honest, in this lineup, in the two matches we've seen, it's probably looked the better ba the best batsman. Alongside, well, apart from Josh De Silva. It's been Akeem Jordan. Come Pretty simple that. technique, doesn't he? Yeah, it keeps it simple. Keeps it simple. Not a and lot looks like he could go wrong. And he uses his leave as well because he's a tall guy. He is. He uses his leave as well. You could tell that he's a student of the game. You know, he's somebody who studies the game. He understands what is happening. He would have looked around. They're having a complaint now about the ball. And they've been trying this for a very long time, Mali. They've not been able to convince umpire leslie reefer jr looks like they've done it now yeah, no i'm not too sure um mr C uh, gregory bratwett is very particular about changing a ball doesn't seem to be going through that at the moment somehow seems to be oddly shaped His umpire reefer's trying to squeeze it through he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to justify <laughs> um, having Nigel do it, come on. <laughs> They're having a good chuckle as well. <laughs> They're like, it's not fitting. <laughs> so, just a, a small hole up. They're having the discussion about the ball. It looks massive there, to be honest. It does. <laughs> it certainly does. I wonder if it got wet somehow. I, um, I, I'll try to figure that mm. one out. How many boundaries we had in the last over? We had one that went... We had one dressing room yeah. area, so I don't just know if the yeah. is, I don't know if maybe the water from that area maybe might just spark that. When will we see Sinclair? Is a, uh, another big question. And everybody is just admiring Akim Jordan's bat. Yeah, it's, so it's making some good sounds. Yeah. That's why you know, and other cricketers, even on the opposing team, they really appreciate a good bat. You know when you got a good piece of willow. Yeah. You yeah. remember your first willow from Desmond? You're going to move a bat. I do, I do, I do, yeah. How many runs you scored Custom. with that bat? Well, I was a little young at that time. Oh, maybe so you wasn't worrying about runs? No, yeah. <laughs> I was, but I wasn't. But was it, was, during your time, what was, it, what was your favorite bat that, that, that you can remember? Mm, I think Grey Nichols at the time. Uh, the scoop. Especially those are the ones that Brian Lauer was scoring all those runs with. Mm. You know, it's got like it's less back now. You do, you wouldn't make them like those. You know, like they would make them today. Mm. Uh, you're actually taking wood out. Uh, mm. You know, it was that's why it was called a scoop because they had a scoop at the back. Yeah. 
less wood than you would see so different today. Day. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a amazing completely different it's different in terms of the here. equipment the way they can make the bat so big and light today well let's see if we can bring home this 600 wicket for for sammy pomal and our Sam. colleagues um in set burton and joel manning will take over after this 39 overs bold 114 for six I would like to see that silly point right in front of Hodge for Pomar. Hodge back and punching that true cover. Sinclair's after it like a deer. He'll pull it back. He's got protection there. Just as well. Just just pulling it back. I just still want to see Mali some, some urgency in the run, especially when the ball goes into the deep. Um, you know, you know, still try to get three. I know it's a hot day. But I'm saying runs is runs. You never know what's going to happen later in this game. Good bit of time in there from Hodge. He did. Footwork was superb. Got deep into the crease yeah. also. Oh, yeah. Where he just pressed forward and then used the depth of the crease to buy himself at that time. You Timed it sweetly. You almost look like he's trying. He wants to make a statement here. 35 from 82. But maybe it's a good thing that he has put his hand up here. Despite all of the wickets falling. Yeah, he kind of flies yeah, under the radar, like doesn't he? To yeah. be honest, he's a little under the radar. But if you look at his record, especially in the last couple of seasons or so, it's been pretty consistent for the Volcanoes. Oh! The good thing about it is he's been relieved of the captaincy. So I don't know if that has been like a burden that has been like lifted off of his shoulder. Sometimes, you know, some people handle the, the captaincy well. Some people don't. But it seems like he's got a good relationship, though. Yeah, he does. With Alec Athenes, so I'm sure that transition was pretty smooth. And I think for the team-wise, you, you always would want that, especially when you have a, a young captain, and a young captain will feel well to know that, hey, Seth Burton was a captain before, and he's coming to support you. Yeah, it definitely helps. Coming up to the first hour. Oh, that's a beautiful delivery. Was flighting his long time. I haven't seen Pomal flight at delivery. Mid um, two runs coming off of that over. And 116 for six. The hour, first hour of play comes to a break. Drake's three for 17. Reef for one for 36. McAllister one for 23. And Hodge fighting. He's a top scorer with 35. Powell and Jordan. I'll give my colleagues a chance. Joel Manning and Seth Burton. They will come in after the water break.
Uh, good afternoon, Seth. Good afternoon once again uh, to the viewers watching match number three of this Headley Week series. Any surprises? Uh, none really, to be honest. It's been, I guess, up and down day, you can say, in terms of the batting. We're seeing a wonderful partnership for us, a partnership of 42 between Kevin Hodge and Akeem Jordan. Certainly, what is providing, I guess, a bit of respectability to the total, which at one stage was 74 for six, at a stage where we saw the bowlers being quite dominant on day number one. Uh, they'll be hoping that they can continue uh, this partnership and continue to dig their side out of the hole that they're in. Kevin Sinclair, he's going to be introduced into the attack for the first time today. Well, and he comes in uh, just after Vera Sami Pomal was brought it's into the attack. It has been the medium paces who have done the trick. Ah! It could be an interesting period because the similarity that I'm seeing here for this partnership that is building is with Akeem Jordan, Josh De Silva, though we are long away from from that scenario when they put together nicely a hundred a partnership over a hundred runs in the opening game, but it's Akeem Jordan once again to the rescue with My God. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <what? laughs> You reckon that was a chance, but it was not. It did go into the air, but Kevin Sinclair, he somehow thought <laughs> that <laughs> Raymond Reefer could have gotten to that. Reefer stands there looking at him, but his excitement is understandable for a spin bowler. Uh, Reefer certainly would have needed wings <laughs> and an extra hand span to get to that one. You can certainly say, though, it was uppish and for some time, and hence why the excitement of Sinclair. Playing across the line, obviously uh, that one was going down leg. But St. Clair is a guy, he likes to be optimistic. He's always optimistic. And he heralds the appeal in a manner that you'd believe that it's all over. The, coming over the wicket, pitching, and going down. Clear by the shot that Akeem Jordan played. But Jordan, though, has to be careful about going back to the old spinner. But perhaps he's so confident. Well, Sinclair asking questions. All three deliveries. Well, the final last three deliveries that were bowled by him. Both some 21 overs versus the Westerns Academy. Picked up two wickets for 71 runs. Well, he will tell you that at least he may have deserved a wicket by his appeal. He may tell you that it could have been an attempt, an attempted catch by Reefer, which Reefer would defer. <laughs> but at least he would say, I started well, and it is definitely a good eye-opening over from Kevin Sinclair. Yeah, he certainly would say that the signs are there in terms of the possibility of taking a wicket. Kevin Sinclair, usually when you're introduced into the attack, you want to say, you know, take a couple of deliveries, settle in, start to find your lines and lambs. He did that immediately, uh, Kevin Sinclair. Twin spin, do you have any uh, other option that you'd have That's gone for at this stage? The interesting thing about it and the discussion that came up coming out of the last yeah. match for team weeks was the interesting nature of the fact that uh, across uh, the bowling overs for team weeks you never really saw a combination in terms of spin coming from one end and seam coming from the other where Sammy Pramal and Kevin Sinclair have been used in tandem you know, for extended periods across the match for the West Indies Academy and it looks like we're about to see that here again for Sammy Pramal operated predominantly from that CIU end oh. 
And we remind you that Vera Sami Pomal is on 599 first class wickets. 136 first class matches for 34 year old Guyanese. He has really been doing well in first class cricket. And when you look at his, he has a very high conversion because 35 five wicket hauls, that is a tremendous feat for this player. And that one was nicely uh, bowled, but I thought well negotiated in the end by Hodge. So he is a landmark away, a very significant landmark. And he came into the series with that in, in, in prospect. Only had three wickets in, in the first game. But now he has an opportunity, and when he gets there, it is a landmark that ought to be celebrated. Yeah, it ought to be celebrated. I know he's certainly looking forward to it. They had a brief chat with him this morning at the possibility of shaping an interview with regards to feelings before when he gets that wicket and then having a conversation with him should he take that wicket afterwards he said i i kind of just want to focus on you know going out there and actually taking it because the funny thing about cricket is that at one stage in that match versus west Indies academy there was an extended period for which he did not pick up any wickets well 20 plus overs That's before right. he picked up a wicket in that game and as such you know the, the funny game of cricket Is one where he could find himself faced with a similar task where he's bowled a long stretch of overs, hasn't picked up that wicket. But we certainly all would want him to be able to get to that landmark. Oh, that one should have been taken. That one went uh, to the left of the diving first slip field. And Kevin Sinclair, he's feeling the agony, uh, Joel. He's not happy. Uh, thought that effort could have been a better effort. It was a very sharp chance, you would have to say, uh, to the left of Alec Athenes there. Uh, Slip, he got a bit of a hand uh, to it if first glance said correctly. Akeem Jordan just going at that one, and that's what we saw. That just pushing out at it, going a bit uh, to his right at first. Athenes having to shift the body weight back, and that's probably also what contributed to the fact that I was able to get past him because he had no base on uh, which to start. But like as I mentioned, St. Clair, from the time he's been introduced, asking questions. Definitely going down the leg side. Akeem Jordan missed out. Yeah, he might probably tell himself he missed out on a couple of runs there. Maybe one or two, given the fact that there's a man back on the deep mid-wicket boundary. But with almost every delivery, St. Clair is looking, asking questions, appealing. And that was one. That asked a lot of questions. That was a special delivery. We want to see that again, Ronnie. It is... I, I got the first impression that it went too straight. But, oh, that one had some bite. And it really came back. And Akeem Jordan was deceived on this occasion. No. The Sinclair appeal is a very <laughs> striking, impressionable one. But he has a very solid umpire, umpire Brathwaite. Yeah, he just asked a question of umpire Brathwaite whether or not it was going down instantly. Brathwaite said, yes, it was heading down that leg. And you see, there's some sharp turn and offer for Sinclair. So we wondered if there would be turn. We expected there to be turn, given the dryness of the surface. And we're seeing that here now uh, from Sinclair. Yes, and the fact, uh, 124 for 6. The fact, though, that we expected turn on, let's say, the second day, but with the heat conditions here, which was already forecast, well, we had a forecast in the morning to say between 10 and, and 4, you'd have expected the pitch would have really dried out. And I think it did uh, by the time we got to lunch. And this has been good bowling from St. Clair. And no one better to back him up than his countryman, Vera Sami Pomor. Yeah, fantastic bowling so far from St. Clair. He's been in the right areas to challenge you back. The fact that the ball is turning as well Oi boys Sammy boys Sammy boys let me get this over here boys Spinners are bringing on some pressure He just wanted it to be similar purchase for 
Versami Pramol from the CAU end. Oh, it's interesting because earlier on commentary, the question was posed with regard to whether or not Versami Pramol could probably come from this media center and given some of the cracks that are out there at the opposite end in front of the batters, the roughage that is there already as well. Well, but I guess uh, the way in which Sinclair has pitched, and not that it negates the argument, but that there could be justification for Sinclair coming from this end. Good tight bowling on the part of Vera Sami Pramal. And this period is crucial because the batters looked as though they were middling things well. Against the seamers in that the partnership today is a quick single. And they get it in the end. Casey Carty was unable to hit. Had he hit, perhaps it would have been another run out to join that of Josh De Silvers. I actually felt like as if the, the real danger was for Akeem Jordan at the non strikers end. Or well, running towards uh, the strikers end, in fact, given that. Kevin Hodge actually set off quite early for that single. Akeem Jordan, however, wasn't necessarily looking for it. Gets home comfortably in the end, though. I think I understand the approach by Hodge. Yes! Well, this could be it. No, it falls safely away. <laughs> I see what from he, Kevin Sinclair. Joel, I see that you're really anxious for the 600. <laughs> well, no, you see, the, it, it, it went into the air. It looked as if it would have been going directly uh, to cover. But it was a big uh, shot on the part of Akeem Jordan, perhaps trying to uh, break the shackles here. Fortunately for him, it went away from St. Clair. I believe exactly what Hodge was trying to avoid. I made a comment. He, I believe he forced the single uh, in the penultimate delivery of the over because he wanted to be on strike realizing that Akeem Jordan had some challenges with St. Clair but now he ends up uh, Jordan again having to face St. Clair and you can hear the chatter they are making adjustment to the field bringing Chandrapal in off the boundary at long one tickle this one fine and he will get four or will it be, it will be pulled up? Oh, yeah, wonderful work by the skipper Alec Athenis uh, to pull that one just back inside of the boundary. They complete three runs though. Yes, three runs. Athenis only being able to save one. Partnership mounting well, 55 for the seventh wicket. These two are batting well. Jordan as though he is saying, I am putting my hand up. I can stem the flow of wickets if I'm given the opportunity. But Hodge will have to play a knock, similar to what Joshua De Silva did in the opening game against the Academy. Because it's obvious that Team Headley's top order, they are not really a consistent batting team. One, two, seven. In fact, one, two, nine for six. Hodge do look quite compact and composed. His inning so far, he has mixed it up in terms of his approach uh, to the seamers and his approach to the spinners.
good rotation once again. Over completed. 131 for six. And you see those two. The two stand out so far in this innings. Jordan on 34. And Kevim Hodge on 37. Yeah, this partnership continues to do the job. Answered them by team. Come on, Riff. What's going on in the middle? Headley. Jordan, what's going on? What's going on? Devin Thomas asking Jordan if he doesn't want to bat. You coming, boys? Think coming, Sammy? That gamesmanship. <laughs> Trying to put pressure <laughs> on the younger player. Jordan would not have that, though. He has shown a brim of confidence from day one of this tournament. <laughs> you had ball down, so you thought perhaps it <laughs> did it the Bills. It's part of the play. Come on, keep making an adjustment. <laughs> You're hearing the chatter. Exactly. Devin Thomas on, reminding him of his 50. Yeah, tell him he's on having a rich vein of form. Ball. Oh, hey. Well, that it's one ball couldn't bowl him for sure. Break. Because he did well to steer it down to it's the short third man fielder. <laughs> but it's quite intense. You get the impression that the fielders are even making it okay, Sam. more challenging for the batters. Hey. Oh. What do you say in a situation like this? That one went through him. All you can say is wow. And this is the reason why he has 599 first class wickets versus Sammy Pramal. Skill, guile, craftiness. Words that describe him. Sometimes you see figures and you don't see wickets and you comment that. They didn't take a wicket. But the impact. Oh. Well, Jordan must be filled with confidence because he chose to leave that one alone. That one definitely went away. Could have gone straight through. But he's still there on 34. Yeah, he was tempted with that one, Jordan. It was slower. He had to flight as well. And it was just wide of the off stump. Probably could have played a similar shot. Or rather, invited to play a similar shot to what he would have done on the last ball of the previous for Sami Pramal over. But one thing I can guarantee you is that none of them want to be 600. I remember Kieran Powell, Powell this morning saying that he will not be Pramal's 600 wicket. A lot of them out there do not want to be that wicket. They do not want to go in history as that man. But the question is why? You just want to play. Why, why, why would that be foremost on the mind? I don't want him to get me. But the thing about it is that in terms of the record books, <laughs> nobody wants to be known as that person, whether or not the, the bowler on the end of the six sixes. The, the bowler uh, that would have won when Lara was batting and got into the 400. You know, all these little things. When you go down in history, you're on the wrong side of history, they would say. And if you're the batter to be dismissed by Versamir Pomal, you would technically be on the wrong side of history. I remember for something that you don't necessarily want to be remembered for. I, I could understand the bowler with the six sixes. But 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 uh, if Vera Sami Pomal is is a is a great and outstanding bowler in the Nash in the regional context, if I'm the 600, I'm the 600. I just want to play good innings. But that is lingering on the batter's mind. That is interesting. So then there is a mini battle. <laughs> always, always. I mean, Apart from, from, the from personal from the egos <laughs> involved as well, the chatter that goes around. I mean, yes, you would want to play a good innings, and you know anybody can dismiss you. But on a day like today, where they know that a everything is. is going to be surrounding, <laughs> all of the information coming out of this is that for Sammy Pomal is on 599, who will yes. be the 600? <laughs> they simply don't want that to be you. Quite an interesting scenario there. They're coming through for a single. And they certainly don't want to get run out here. So 132 for 6, Josh De Silva will tell you the agony. Of being run out at lunch, he was saying he thought that he would be able to recover from that stumble to get back in the crease. And that's why he even dived. But at the end of the day, 
he was short. So, question: Would you choose to be the six hundred, or would you choose to be run out? <laughs> I don't think there's much of a choice involved in terms of the route for the dismissal, but certainly uh, you might prefer the run out. <laughs> You get the impression that Kavim Hodge is very conscious of that because he really pushed for that single. And as we mentioned, he's taking more of Virasami Pomol than he's taking Kevin Sinclair. Yeah, I don't think it really factors that much into their mind. It's just that little banter that goes on out there in terms of who it might be when the plaque is done up. What's the name that's going to be on it? Oh! Beautiful ball, Certainly all out there looking to play hard, competitive cricket. And that's what you want to see because I, I think the top half of Team Headley are disappointed uh, once again. You didn't get that hard, tough cricket from the batters. We, we cannot discount uh, the, the, the bowling at the top of the order. I really thought that Dominic Drakes really represented himself well. Uh, really showed why he why he is here Oi. but i also got the impression that the top batters uh, some of them were a bit loose probably looked good and then had that what i would have called a swipe across the line we saw a few batters getting tentative not with the intensity no run there those sinclairs in the deep so you got that impression that they were, they, none got start I, in the top five uh, apart from uh, Powell. And then that told you that these guys were not focused on what the objective that they may have set before the start of the game. And hence, Akeem Jordan has to come to the rescue once again with Kevin Hodge on this occasion. Clear continuing. Thanks very much, Seth and Joel. Mali Richards alongside me. Good afternoon, Nick. Good afternoon to the watchers in the region and around the world. Yeah, excellent partnership developing up in the middle. They were in some real trouble. Team Headley. The spin as well in operation from both ends. Mali seen a bit off the pitch as well. Yeah, especially here, Sinclair to Akeem Jordan just seems that Jordan isn't the most comfortable against Kevin Sinclair Perlmore from the other end as well just doing what he does yeah, they came together on 74 for 6 mm. so have done excellently well to rebuild the innings and I know Jordan has caught up to Hodge in significantly less deliveries but for me this innings from Kevin Hodge is extremely valuable because of the time. Yeah, he's put that high price on his wicket today. Hate to use cliches sometimes, but that's exactly what he's done, you know. Uh, just 38 now. But he's really uh, led the rescue effort for Team Weeks. Team Headley, sorry. Down the track. That is excellent use of the field. Mid off up in the circle. Kevin Hodge, what a knock this is turning out to be. Into the 40s now. Yeah, and he's earned the right to, 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 to possibly go big. You know, he's absorbed the pressure, as you said, you know, coming in when the chips were down. But now, just looking to apply pressure back onto the bowlers. Sinclair, in particular, good bit of footwork from Kevin Hodge advancing. No real turn on that one. Hit over long off. Good shot off the off spinner. More runs coming for Team Headley. Could be four of them as well. And just gets there in the end. So back-to-back -back boundaries. All of a sudden, things looking a lot more progressive for Team Headley. End of the 49th over, 141 for six. Yeah, this partnership 67 now. And that shot in particular, that's a shot he's played really well today. That punch off the back foot. Just looking to press forward in case that ball was fuller in length. But... 
as we said previously in our last stint, just using the depth of the crease is Kavim Hodge really well. Picking length really well here. And he times it so sweetly off the back foot through the offside. Yeah, it really is the perfect, could say premeditation, but probably could have expected that Kevin Hodge after hit a full one over the top, then expected Sinclair to pull back the length, mm. hit it into the covers for four. Oy. I think Jordan looks like he wants to go on the attack as well. And I think that's what the best players of spin do as well. You know, they almost use that press in which to almost signal them advancing down the wicket. The bowler then just drops a little short and then they rock back using the depth of the crease. Brian Lauer was so good at that as well. Mali, it's now been... This will be the 10th over that Promola and Sinclair have operated together in tandem. I just wonder, given the fact that this partnership is now race to 68, they've looked a lot more comfortable against spin than seam. Would you be inclined to maybe go back to one of your seamers? They've all put in big workloads. Yeah, and you probably look to to to, to Jaya McAllister in terms of how you use him. Short, sharp bursts, probably from the CIU road end. You know, tell him to run in, be aggressive. I think that's the perfect time for that, even in these conditions, you know. Uh, Dominic Drakes, I think he's been the best on show so far. I mean, Raymond Reefer, he's been steady, but I think Dominic Drakes, he's been the best seamer on show. So I think it's all about rotating your seam bowlers, no? Rotating the seamers. And also, you've got that luxury of rotating a couple of spinners in your attack. Mark, you know, your Sinclairs and your Vesami Pumars. <laughs> but that's what I would do. I would definitely look to rotate my seamers from the CIU road end. Give them an opportunity just a bit more downhill. I know you're saying, you know, people have been talking about this breeze. But if you look at, you know, the flags, it's every now and again. It's not that consistent. Oh. Ends the 50th over. Well past halfway in the day. And it's been probably team weeks for now. However, this partnership is slowly bringing Team Headley back into the game. Remember, this is the last match of this tri-series. And especially for Team Headley, who lost their first game. They need to win to have any chance of winning this tri-series. They definitely, definitely need to win. But Akeem Jordan just backing up that form that we would have seen previously, you know, in his first match in this tri series. I tell you what, I think he's underrated with bat and hand. I think so as well, to be honest. He looks a real batsman as well. While he nicks off and it's. Oh! Oh! Yeah, it was an excellent effort by Alec Athens, the captain. I thought he held on. I think he did. It came out at the last second. Would have been an absolute stunner, that one. It was the length to entice Jordan into the drive. It was a thick edge, so it would have been tough for Athens. Almost on the second attempt. Yeah. I don't think you mind that, though, if you're Athenese and Sinclair, because Jordan is clearly in an aggressive mindset, something that we didn't see against the seam. He is looking to play shots now. I think he's just recognized, or he's signaled an opportunity in which he can, he can score more easily. And he's looking to take it here. But Sinclair so far has been up to the test. Especially in this matchup. Ah! The only thing he hasn't done is really taken the wicket to have that catch go down as well. I think a couple overs ago, a couple LBW shouts. Just seemed all at sea, almost. Down the track this time, but doesn't connect. Hakeem Jordan. That tells you. That shot tells you that. It's 
Probably not feeling quite as assured against the Kevin Sinclair here. Just need to get off strike. Something like that. Well played, young man. Yeah, Sinclair is making things happen though out in the middle, especially against Hakim Jordan. Just one run from the over, 145 for six. Yeah, this partnership 71 now. And as you said, Kevin Sinclair just creating little opportunities now, showing his worth, all round worth as a cricketer. Kevin Sinclair, maybe not the biggest spinner of the ball, but he looks an improved off spinner, that's for sure. Is his his guile, his variations, especially his variation in pace. <laughs> Good little banter happening out in the middle between <laughs> Devon Thomas and Akeem Jordan. <laughs> Did he get bad on it? Yes. Yeah. He'll be disappointed with that shot. Akeem Jordan was looking to up the ante. Massive wicket and massive partnership broken. And that's the 600th first class wicket for Veer Sami Pramal. Akeem Jordan on the edge, actually. Probably just lost concentration in the last couple of overs or so, Nikhil. Tell you what, Versa good catch as well. Yeah, sorry, man. Even no, Versa from all 33 years old, 600 wickets now in 136 first class matches, an average of close to 20. He has been a stalwart in this regional game. And what a performer! That will mean a lot to him. It will indeed. Real wide on the crease is Permal. The little turn just took probably the toe of the under. The under edge. Jordan has to go, but we were just saying, probably just lost a bit of concentration. You noted the conversation between Thomas and Jordan previous to that delivery. Must say, I'm surprised by that because A3 deliveries at the crease, yes, I know there was that intent against spin, but the way that partnership was developing, clearly team weeks were a bit on the back foot. They were a bit... Rattled, you could say, trying a bit in terms of with the field setting from Captain Ali Athenes. May have just let them off the hook. Nonetheless, though, Shem Holder comes out to the middle. Yeah, the second batter we've seen succumb to the slog sweep today. <laughs> one off pace, one off spin. There's definitely a lot of chat out there, as you can hear through you our hear. excellent stump mics. Which is a good sign that Team Weeks are still engaged. They're still in way... No, sorry, I should, still, I should say, they're still way ahead of the game and in great control. 145 for 7 after losing the toss. You take that. In these conditions as well. You know, they'll be very happy with where they're at. Especially when wickets fall like that. But I did mention those two slog sweeps for a reason, Nick. <coughs> and those shots almost seemed to come out the blue very random indeed both from kieran powell and akeem jordan similar shots but random considering the situation and just how much in control both batters were at the time Tell you what, the Kyron Powell one against the seam after looking in majestic touch. Mm. First ball of the innings, a sweet punch through the offside, then a cover drive to follow it up, hit a maximum as well. Mm. I thought he could really go big, but surprised by that shot selection. This is a thing. Can you imagine if he was still at the crease now? Just He'll be probably battering these bowlers into submission at this stage, but you've got to earn that right, you know? You'd probably okay, think Sammy, okay, Sammy. even the older guys could learn something from what we saw from young Mackenzie. Oi! Application. You know, you could tell Mackenzie would have learned something from what he would have seen from even his teammate, young Anderson, with the way he applied himself in his 150. A scarcity of, of lapses in concentrate concentration as well. Oh. Oh. Holder can't bat. He, he'll need to support Kevin Hodge. 
if they're to get anything competitive in the 52 overs, 145 for 7. Yeah, successful over there for the veteran. Where Sammy Pomar, what, 8 overs now? As you're saying. Just 7 runs con conceded. Wow. To bring up 600 wickets as well, especially at this level in the West Indies, you know, to play 130 odd games. Testament. As well. Testament to the fitness and the skill of the man, especially at the first class level. I know some will say that he probably hasn't fulfilled. His, his potential, especially at the international level. But he's also won us games at times. He's played his part at times. Ves Sami Pramal. Especially that partnership with Devendra Bishu. You know, th that partnership would have gone a long way in securing those a lot of titles for the guy in the Harpy Eagles over the years as well. Oh, a bit of turn and bounce now. Now, this is a clear plan from Kevin Sinclair. I've watched him in the last couple of deliveries, and he keeps trying to engage Zachary McCaskey at that short, fine leg position. Pulling the length back and trying to get that bit of extra bounce with the overspin. Almost had his man here, Mali. Yeah, almost. Probably just not quite taking the glove. You can see, though, the line. Very straight and trying to induce that flick shot. Hodge is playing it well, though. He's looked really good today, Kevin Hodge. Yeah, he has. But what do you think? What I've seen, Sinclair, uh, it seems like he's been working on, especially recently, is really delivering the ball from its highest point. So he's looking to extract as much bounce as he possibly can as well. That release point seems to be a lot higher consistently and at times because of that just forces him to over pitch slightly S something like that yeah, excellent over again from St. Clair. Just the one run conceded. And Team Weeks bowling well in the last couple of overs. 146 for 7. Yeah, they'll be looking to bowl out Team Headley here for under 200. That's for sure. There's the three wickets remaining for Team Headley. See Devin Thomas having a laugh out there. Do you think Devin Thomas knows there's a stop mic? I'm not sure. I'll probably let him know. Yeah, he probably does, to be honest. He's aware of a lot. <laughs> oh! Well, man! I don't know! <laughs> Very animated. <laughs> That's how he keeps himself going out there. Especially in these conditions. Steamy. Steamy conditions indeed. At times, you almost feel the heat. Hush. Coming through the glass. Oh! What is that yeah, definitely love Devon Thomas. He's been behind the stumps for a number of years for the Leeward Islands. Interesting bit of medium pace as well, though, Mali Richards. Mm. Something I think can be an asset for he the West Indies. It. He loves it. He loves it. Oh, I'm searching for this run to get into that 50. Can't find it just yet. You can see, though, he's constantly looking, trying to get to the other end. Plays it late, and there it is. A 16th first class half century for Kevin Hodge. And what a knock this has been. Full of patience, concentration, and grit. Yeah, exactly what you said there, Nikhil. He's really led this recovery. If you want to call it that, to be fair, because wickets have also gone down regularly, apart from that partnership with Akeem Jordan. But Kevin Hodge. Just showing what he's all about here in this innings. Quite a nuggety, determined player. 
willing to work hard for his runs. No, and no short amount of skill as well. A fair amount of school, skill, to be fair. Think of those punch shots off the back foot, especially off the spinners. Sweet bit of timing. I think he just slightly goes under the radar, to be fair, Nikhil. Yeah, and as we end the over, end of 54 overs, 148 for 7. <coughs> a quick look at the bowlers so far. Drake has been the standout with his three. One apiece for Permo, McAllister, and Rifa. But to that point, Mali, I think mm. somebody I thought about watching him back today. Mm. The style of play, and it's why I admire him, because as much as the game of cricket is growing and we're seeing the bass balls and the aggressive play in all three formats, Hodge throughout the years has been very consistent in the fact that he's going to be as patient as possible and wait for any small inch of width to pounce on. Other than that, he's going to keep his defense intact, mm. and it's worked for him. Yeah, he really knows his game, especially in the last couple of years, as you would have said. Would have really developed and matured in, in the way he would go about his innings. Just trying to give himself the best chance possible. Especially at the start of his innings. To play as straight as possible, as full face of the bat, as much as he can. And I think just slightly underrated, to be fair. Especially when you look at what's been the West Indies Achilles heel batters just not being able to bat for any significant amount of time consistently. I think we need to start looking for batters with those qualities. You know, which is also a skill concentration, is a skill. Craig Brathwit is just as skilled as any within in, with his levels of concentration. Leading edge there, possibly? Yeah, it was a leading edge, but luckily for Holder, that square leg feeler was wide, so it got away with it. But just on Hodge, it's been interesting in terms of the journey because initially selected in that West Indies tour that went to England, mm. he's been in and around the setup. But in 2022, he only averaged 21 with mm. the bat. And I felt could just see the disappointment on his face, Mali. He was really not happy with that season. Went, went back, worked really hard at his game. And this year, averaged close to 40 in the five matches. A massive turnaround. 250s and 100. And then, after not getting many in the first game in this series, a gutsy 50. You could almost say this innings could be worth 100 because of the way things have gone at the other end. And shots like that should be a boundary for Hodge. Yeah, it just comes out with one. There is Hodge just showing all his skill. Just slightly getting inside that one. Using the piece of Sinclair. I wonder Good. if Sinclair, sorry, Mali, is getting a bit predictable with that line. Mm. Very straight. A bit too straight, to be honest. As you said, he's trying to, 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 to get Zach McCaskey in business there. Keep him interested. But at the same time, it's not the most difficult to play in terms of right arm off spin to the right handed batter. End of the 55th, 154 for 7. These overs are actually racing through. I think it's the amount of spin that they Yeah, hold. especially the type of spinners as well. Sinclair and Bermal in particular, they really get through these overs. Can you imagine if Rakim was, in, was here as well? Wow. They only pulled 25 yeah. overs in the first session, so they've made up for it massively with Bermal and Sinclair in mm. tandem. Oi. You think they're the type of bowlers that you could possibly... Finish the session with, given the fact that they haven't conceded much runs. Promo literally nine runs from his nine overs. Sinclair on the other end has been a bit more expensive, but has now kept things tight. Oi. Yeah, I think so. Maybe a rotation of him, um, possibly after T. Uh, you probably given the, the fast bowlers a bit more rest. They probably come back a bit fresher. The good thing is, as you said, they've bowled well as a tandem. You know, Sinclair hasn't picked up a wicket, but he has looked threatening at times. 
and Pramal, he's been economical and picked up a wicket. Oi! Yeah, the time. pace at which they're bowling the overs, all of a sudden you look around, the last five and a half overs now, they've only scored 10 runs. And it's because they just keep tying together the dot deliveries, over after over, took the crucial wicket, broke the partnership. Oi! Happy yeah. with this from Hodge, or do you think maybe he can look to expand a bit more? Well, I think he just continues playing in the same vein, you know, uh, at least up until the eighth, well, definitely the ninth wicket, I think. I think he's just got to look to continue to, to, to bat, to be fair. Conditions are still good for batting. End of that per mile over, 154 for seven. 56 overs now gone. Yeah, I wonder how long these two go forward. And mm. T is not far away either. Seven minutes away, the tea time interval. So I'm pretty sure they will f go into the break, these two. But I think Alec Athene's young captain, surely he'll have something in his mind on that second new ball and wanting to have a fresh Dominic Drake's given the way he bowled earlier today. I don't think there was any touch there, but... Round the wicket here to the right-handed holder is Sinclair. Probably just going with the angle across holder. Interesting line of attack from Sinclair. What do you make of it, Mali? Because... You don't tend to see a lot of off-spinners to a right-handed ball around the wicket simply because of the leg before. M most deliveries tend to pitch outside leg. Yeah, he's, he's trying to bring the outside edge into play here, Nick. He's got that slip. There, he's got Captain Alec Athenes as at first slip. So he's just trying to bring that outside edge into play, hoping that... Shem Holder probably pay, plays for a bit of turn. The ball just goes on with the angle, takes the outside edge. Just trying to add a mode of dismissal here. That's okay, that's okay. Good but he's taken a couple Good out of the equation as well. So just to balance, I think he's just had a look, just having a look. And I quite like that from Kevin St. Clair, Mali. This is a 23-year-old young man. He's only played 14 first-class matches. And the fact that, yes, he was creating pressure with one angle of attack, but he's trying different things, trying different things to understand his game a lot more. <laughs> yeah, good rivalry between the two off-spinners, Holder and St. Clair. 155 for seven. Uh, Sam Holder you do the you do the bowling, I do the batting, and let the umpire umpire. <laughs> so things just getting slightly heated out there. I do like that though. It shows you the com the competitive nature of these guys. These guys really want to win. At the end of the day, want to put in good performances. They're all fighting for for spots on teams and advancing. Or advancement of their, their careers. That last delivery was an interesting one. I'll get back to it after this delivery. Oh, no. Swept that so late, Shem Holder. He left alone the ball, Mali. It hit his back. Does that constitute in the rules? You know that they've changed the rules now, the ICC, to if you don't offer a shot, you cannot get any runs from it. But the umpire gave Holder the single. It used to be that... Once you were taking evasive action, it wouldn't matter, right? But he wasn't there. Just not, just not sure. Probably just missed one there, umpire Brathwit. Hey, Sammy. Hey. That is a top class shot. Too full from Versami Promo. First time, really, in this spell that we've seen him vary in terms of the length. Kevin Hodge says thank you very much. Yeah, tossed up that one, actually, Nikhil. You could tell he really went for the flight there, but that ball didn't drop out of the sky quick enough for him. Just a long half volley in the end, and Hodge. 
Oi. Looking good, especially when he's getting that big stride in to the spinners. At times, just plays from the crease, and he can get into trouble when he does that. But his footwork, I think that's been a hallmark or a trademark of this innings of 60 so far, is the footwork, just how decisive it, it's been. Hey, has taught it really hard, Kevin okay, Hodge. The concentration, the focus. 142 deliveries now out there. Mm. It's been hot today at Coolidge. Steamy. Does well. Does very well, Kevin Sinclair, because had it beat him, would have been a certain boundary. Five from the over, though. A good one for Hodge and Team Headley. 161 for seven. Yeah, just showing his all-round ability there, Kevin Sinclair. Mali, let's talk a bit about the overall initiative. This is the first of a Headley Weeks tri-series. What do you make of the overall initiative and thought process behind it you think it's something that we could see in years to come yeah well i'm hoping it's the first of many to be fair i hope i'm hoping it becomes the the typical end of the first class season uh uh showpiece event you know uh, that's what i'm hoping for also it could be the start of something where you know you give a glimpse of Well, more runs for Kevin Hodge. A bit of a risk because there is a leg slip in place, but Hodge backed himself. And the run's beginning to flow for him and Team Headley now. Yeah, he moves on to 65 now. And as you said, he's just looking to be slightly more positive here in terms of grasping, grasping scoring opportunities. And he's timed the ball so well as, as well today. Doesn't seem like he's a particularly powerful guy, is he? Quite short, quite small in stature, but really does pack a punch. Times the ball, so sweet. Oh! This time outside the off stump. Now two fielders, as you can see right of screen, catching close to the bat. I wonder if that changes. It didn't change for the first delivery. Hodge still went after him. Would he do it again, though, with a leg slip in place now? That one that he was beaten outside that off stump, probably just for the first time, caught a bit in two minds. We didn't see that decisiveness that, that we've seen throughout this innings, that positivity in terms of his footwork. But yeah, as we were saying, yeah, it's been a great initiative, Nikhil, to be honest. Get to see the past, present, and future of West Indies cricket. Should be the last two deliveries before T. Someone just seems to be in front of the side screen. Okay, groundy. Just gone past 2.40 p.m. local time. So it should be the final delivery. Should. And Hodge will want to ensure that he remains at the crease. No issues. He's played well with soft hands, Kevin Hodge. What a session of batting that's been from him. And time has been called. So a good fight back from Team Headley. Yeah, and Kevin Sinclair, they're just really worried, especially in that spell, to Kevin Hodge about getting hit through that offside. So probably just a little too straight in his length and lines. That's something that I think he'll definitely think about and come out in this after the resumption. A little different here. But Kevin Hodge leading the charge, but definitely today has belonged to Team Week so far. Yeah, still work to be done, though, because you get 220, 250 even, all of a sudden, game on. So, Weeks will need to come back, maybe with the second new ball after T, and try to get these remaining 
two, three wickets, correction. And in terms of the bowling, well, Drake's powerful burst after lunch. Four over spell, continued to threaten, but couldn't pick up any additional wickets. Promo getting his 600th first class wicket. And one apiece as well for Rifa and McAllister. 165 on the board. Should be a, a cripping last session of cricket. Don't go too far. We'll be back right after tea.
Welcome back to our coverage here of Game 3 of the Tri-Series, the week's Headley Series here at the Coolidge Cricket Grounds in Antigua. Well, the news is that on day one of this encounter between Team Headley and Team Weeks, Team Headley winning the toss and deciding to bat, they're in a spot of body at 165 for 7. 165 for 7 after two sessions and we're just about to start the final session of the day's play they started out looking good looking solid but then pleated away in a manner in which you thought that they would have well been bowled out below 150 but there was a partnership between that man there kavim hodge who is not out on 66 and akeem jordan who scored 37 that really gave them at least a measure of stability but jordan after his departure Shame Holder has been partnering Kavim Hodge. Before that, in the earlier part of the innings, in the morning session, only Kyron Powell with 23 uh, really made an impression. I'm Seth Burton, and with me is Vernon Springer. And Vernon, it has been really team weeks uh, in command, but it's good to see a good fighting knock from the Dominican right-hander, Kavim Hodge, the formerly Windward Islands uh, captain. Well, I think the... They has to go to Versailles Maple Mall. And you know, I, when I was on with you earlier, when we started today, I was writing down 600. And I was just writing the number 600. And to see somebody get 600 first-class wickets, I mean, really, uh, I really have to commend and I have to celebrate Versailles Maple yes. Mall's performance. And while celebrating his 600, I am also celebrating Kemal Roach's 500. 500. Yes, we have. I mean, within the last week, we've seen two servants of West Indies cricket. And sometimes I don't know if our administrators really appreciate the amount of overs. You can imagine how many overs Permal has bowled for those 600 wickets? That's right. And every year, every season, he's always amongst the wickets. And he has always uh, been there serving the guy in a cricket uh, with distinction <laughs> and being a servant of both Guyanese and West Indies cricket. He must be happy. 600 wicket was that man, Akeem Jordan. And he was delighted. And here is he now. Bowling! <laughs> you can hear the call of bowling. Once it's Devon Thomas behind this dog. <laughs> These keepers are amazing. They, he played it with the full face of the bat. Uh, but Devon Thomas is saying bowling. And, and another thing, Seth, and you know, I was talking to you off here, and even when I was on air, the, the Athens has to recognize when he's on top. Yeah, for, for Shem Holder, you, you need a silly point. If you don't look sharp, you need a leg slip. You know what I mean? you you got to know when to prize your action. Even when Hodge came on, the first bowler was Versami Permal. you got to look to prize. The, 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 the objective is to get wickets. That's right, and... I thought they missed the trick when Holder came out. Balling. In particular, because uh, he came out to bat, and then you had still a mid wicket deep, a long on deep, and the opportunity was there to pressure him with a close in field and make further inroads in, in, in this into this team law order. I also feel he'd have to look at his angles. Where Ray Marifa is feeling is just too close. And there were a lot of balls that of Kevin Hodge which went to cover. Those really should have been fielded. You've got to cut off those, especially at this, this, this level. Sinclair's fielded well. Yes, and where Ray Marifa was, Hodge, uh, in fact, Kevin Sinclair was also at backward point. So we'll see who picks up the attack from this the broadcasting end because it has been or had been, well, it will continue to be, the twin spin attack of the two Guyanese, uh, Kevin Sinclair and Vera Sami Pomol. So they're continuing after T. You were saying perhaps there could be a mixture of the seamers with the spinner? Yeah, well, the, 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 the ploy is you have to understand the surface. So spin from one end because you have 30 overs remaining in the day's play. You already were behind in terms of the over rate. So you, you have to seize the opportunities. 165 for 7, you should be thinking about trying to bowl them out under 200. So you don't want to let them rest on their laurels and keep staff Kevin Hodge of the strike. Well, Hodge is looking pretty, and that is an elegant shot. Will not go to the boundary, but between 
cover and point. He will be happy. He gets two runs. It's quite a good flowing knock from Kavim Hodge. It was a wide delivery set. As an off spinner, if you're bowling that wide, that's a badly lined delivery. And I just want Sinclair to relax. I just think Sinclair is just trying too many things. He wants to get in the wicket column. And that's how life goes sometimes. Maybe today is just not your day. And he gets him. He gets him. He went down the track, missed it completely. Devon Thomas, you know he's not going to miss that stumping chance. Sinclair gets the wicket. It's caught behind. Uh, we, we want to check on that. But he could be caught behind that stump as well because he was off balance the, uh, as well there. But, but he has he been given. Good. The standing umpire has given him out, so I think Ronnie is right. He's all caught behind Down the track, Devon Thomas stumps him. Looks like it's, if he's the standing umpire, he should be but the caught behind. the standing umpire puts up the finger. So perhaps... Or is it leg before? <laughs> it either has to be leg before or caught behind. So let's look at so that. So we have some Ronnie clarity here. Ronnie, let's, see, Ronnie, let's see the replay again, Ronnie. Hold, hold, hold a minute. So we're all confused. You find out from the standby umpire. Hold, hold a minute there, Christine. We just want to just make sure that it, did it hit his pad? If it is his pad, he's out leg before. Flight it up. But he was well down the track. He's out leg before. Yes. Because he hit the pad. The standing umpire gave me can't be out caught because he was stumped wow. in, he, he went off balance in the process. Well he, he he made a very big stride down in playing that shot, but I guess we would have that confirmed because the official scorers as well have come to get the peek on what the final decision is which we would have it can't be okay um, it's it said because he, di di he didn't get a nick yeah. so there were two things in consideration he's either out like before or, or he would have been out. given out stumped by the square right. like umpire the standing umpire raised his, his index finger which means that he's out like before because the ball hit his pad first so that is the logical conclusion to this but he got himself in a web there coming down the track and what happens? Being hit on the pad. Right after the break? Right after the break. <laughs> Concentration not maintained. That's too easy. That is too and easy. And Mr. Philip getting off the mark. Got to stop those balls. Nicely with the first ball to him. Second off the over after T. And we have already seen the fall of a wicket, which is in fact the most significant scorer, the top scorer in the team headly game caught so this <laughs> down the leg side on this occasion we are now getting finality that the decision was a court behind so so we had a situation in which there were three options and it turns out to be that kavim hodge was out caught faster one and <laughs> and this philip cracked by that delivery but did well to keep it out at the end of this over um set i'd, I'd like Ronnie to pull that 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 flicker up again really you so have to give the umpire a break yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not i'm not not i'm not saying anything i just i just want to see it again um to be on my conclu conclusion <laughs> and when he's pulling it over, um, you know, he's human like everybody else. That's right. But he was walking down the track. So that's where I could see that it may have been caught behind because no way. I'm not saying no way, but it would have been difficult to be given. LB, look at the huge stride out. That creates a measure. Yes, it was down the track. That creates. And it was heading down. Oh, so it, it could have maybe an inside okay. edge onto the pad. Taken by Devon Thomas. So yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Is is and is is shifted to caught behind. Yes. So it's now caught behind officially. So we are sorry if we Oy! confuse you, but ballin', ballin', ballin'. it was a dismissal that could have gone either way. And now it has been confirmed as Kavim Hodge caught Devon Thomas off the bowling of Kevin Sinclair for sixty five. Wrapped on the pad. This is trouble. He's given. Vera Sami Pramol gets his 601. 601. That is the big guy. Shem Holder. 
trying to play across the line, trying to slug sweep a ball on middle stump. And uh, wicket number nine goes. It is unbelievable. The third over after the tea break, two wickets. And uh, Team Headley, they're definitely going down a bad path. So they're all crumbling here and really unnecessary. It first started with Kevin Hodge, um, who was in two minds to Sinclair. And in the end, Sinclair um, claiming the wicket of Kevin Hodge, caught um, of Devon Thomas. He could have been also out stump as well, That's too. That's right. Um, but I thought that Shem Holder played a poor shot there. If yes. it, when you're sweeping, you're taught to sweep length. Um, you know, you just don't make up in your mind that you, you're going to, you know, just go there. And that, well, that ball was pitched between wicket and wicket. If you know for Sammy Pomal, he bowls wicket to wicket. So Akira Minley comes out. And the Jamaican pacer would really like to stay around and give Anderson Phillip the Trinidadian some comfort because he has the capacity to bat. Now let's let, let, let's talk here again, Seth. We we got number ten and eleven in. We will never silly point. No short leg. You 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 gotta be looking to attack. Pomo beats him again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all fun there for T Weeks. They are the ones who are on top. Hey! From all having two wickets, St. Clair having one, so three to the spinners. <laughs> the man who really got them into this good position. Hey. He's the one who is feeling the ball now, at least yeah, chasing Sammy the ball. Greedy, Dominic Drakes so had three wickets. His earlier spell was yeah, nine greedy, overs, man. well, eight overs, yeah, greedy, so and it. three maidens, three for nine. Santa, and then hey, so greedy, man. McAllister <laughs> had one along with Keep coming, Sammy. Keep coming, Sammy. Smith. Come in. So Get Sammy inside. has two, and well, now they are bringing Hi, in Smith from long off. Oh, oh dropped in just in front of Captain Athenes. So he could have had another in that over. 170 for nine. Have a look at this again. Just taking the outside edge and just falling in front of the skipper. Vernon, you are muted. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, 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 my thought process is that you're on top. You, you have to look to build the pressure. You, you know, you've got to look to bowl them out on the 200. So you, you can't. Uh, just a while ago, Minley just got an easy single uh, wi without any pressure. Well, I guess they're confident they would bowl them out on the 200. So. Oh, another oh. one. <laughs> so you're, you're suggesting perhaps they should be crowded, crowding Minley? Both of them? They would have gotten a wicket there. Oh, I forgot, but it's, you could see it set. It's obvious. <laughs> Another one <laughs> goes a bit in the air. If they were perhaps a silly mid off or a silly point, that could have been an opportunity. But perhaps the bowlers are not calling for it. And this time he gets a hold of it and drives a flowing drive out to. Long off for four. The you extra cover fielder could not catch up with it. You know why, it? Because Sinclair now decided now that he was going to overcompensate by trying to flight the delivery. So he ended up bowling a, a wide yes, half wide. Fighting the ball. Well pitched, but well played. Got Good in the line out. of the ball and 
pound it. It's one seventy four for nine. This would be well if they fall below two hundred. It would be the lowest first inning score of the tournament. So they would really want to bat on. Wait, on on tracks like these, set, you want to make sure set that you bowl the ball into the surface. And Sinclair has got good revolutions. Once he bowls the ball into the surface, he's a more danger bowler. As, as you see that, when he tries to flight, he overcompensates the ball by bowling wide deliveries. So he's got to bowl the ball into the surface. 174 for nine. Team Headley in a huge spot of butter here. Anderson Phillip is on two. Marquino Minley is on five. Kevin Sinclair getting one for 44 from his 12. Vera Samuel Pomol, the man who got his 600 first class wicket, uh, in fact, got another thereafter. Two for 16 from 13 overs, including seven maidens. Vera Samuel Pomol. Is on the move again. Thought I would have seen him coming out after tea with a shirt mark. Figures six, 600. Oh, yes, I guess maybe we're not that innovative yet. Well, perhaps he's got to ask uh, CWI to, to give him the 600 jersey uh, from and, now on. And, and the ball. For the future. <laughs> well, he would naturally take yeah, the ball. He'd have to take that ball. But he would wear the 600 jersey <laughs> going forward. That's perhaps the thinking. I, I, ho I hope so. Somebody might say when he gets to 650, we're, go, we're gonna ask him to change the number from 600 to no, 650. He's comfortable with he's 600. Comfortable with 600. <laughs> Maybe he might. Doesn't, I don't think he wants a bigger number. He likes 94. What I said to you, set this game, he's not been afraid to flight the ball. No, and that's good. <laughs> that's good. In the first inning, sorry, in the in the last game against the academy. He did not do much of the flight flighting. We didn't see much of that. He was flat. He was well calculated. The, uh, the batters calculated him well, and 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 really and truly, he was not looking penetrative at all. Yes! When the academy batted, but this time he looks a different and a better bowler. We is know he, the bowler he and is. He's using the crease too. You know, he's going wide. He's getting closer. Really looks like he's enjoying his spell here, indeed. Thirty-three-year-old still soldiering on. Yeah, servant still for can cricket. continue. No. I think he, he's switched now. He got to keep the pressure on both sides. I think. Oh, I think you're correct. Moving from, uh, uh short point to forward shortly may not be enough it may just be better to have both sides cover 67 from kavim hodge 37 from akeem jordan and 23 from kieran powell but the feature of the day has been the three for 17 by dominic drakes so if you're hearing something in the headphones it's one of those jets perhaps heading into the vc bird international airport or leaving Leaving. Might be an American. These two batters are really showing intent to go after the bowling. Sinclair has to bowl the ball into the surface. Um, and just be patient. You know, he's a, I like his attitude. I like his passion. He feels that he can get a wicket at every over. As you go higher, you have to understand your role. You have to build pressure. Got to get that silly point in there. You know, let it pop up, back pad, caught, innings over. Hmm. They look as though they are uncertain as to what to do. The two batters. And the Sir Philip there. Play that one in the air. A bit uppish. Wasn't quite decisive as to whether he wanted to go over the top. 
this one beats him. And I would have brought up the lawn. If, if the well, there's only one uh, that went down to Chanda Paul, <laughs> and it went on the ground to him. Invite them to hit over the top. Good delivery. It'd be interesting to see Sinclair bowling on, on, on a third day's track set on, on this track. Yes, it will wear as it gets down and shoot is with the heat that is here. Could break up as well. Over completed, 177 for 9. Yeah, soldiering on some 65 overs bowl. And Team Headley, not a strong performance here. And if you remember the first game against the Cricket West Indies Academy, it was their captain Joshua De Silva's innings of 165 that made the 36. entire the, the 36 that made the entire difference. Now that we take away the 136 today and we realize what has been happening, 177 for nine. And if you have just joined us, De Silva he went via the run out route. Said he really intended to bat and keep batting. So it was painful when he got to run out. He was the one who made the call for two. He said he thought that he would have made it, but that's live by the sword, you die by the sword. Well, you see, he d I don't think he understood who had the ball. That's right. I it think. was Tejan Ryan Shandapal. He had the and ball. he maybe might have been gingerly going at the ball, but when he got there, he got it back right into the gloves of Devon Thomas. Who wants, Who wants it? 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 Taken. Who wants it? In the end. Casey Carty. By Casey Carty. So he was in there for a long time. That's why I was asking who wants it. Because no. Niall Smith was coming. Um, and I, I saw Casey Carty coming. And then I saw Niall Smith pulled out. So it had to be. Well. They're all out. You didn't realize that's it? No, 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 no. <laughs> it it happened so fast. It happened so fast. Sits it, it happened so Could fast. Can you believe that? <laughs> 177 all out. Look at it, Set. Marquino Minley didn't really want <laughs> to spend any time at the crease. It, it went miles, miles into the that's air. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Coming it's out coming down. The cloud coming. Wow. That's a good that's a great Excellent catch. catch. By Casey Carty. And good camera work because oh, they picked superb. that out. <laughs> superb, superb. From the back of that cloud, and Casey Carty has good eyes. Superb, superb. And picked that one up. He tumbled over on the ground, but made sure that he had everything covered. A little bit of a disappointment because it just took, what, 4.2 overs, uh, 5.2 overs after T for them to get the, the remaining three wickets and not a good showing uh, in terms of Team Headley being bowled out here. For 177 from 65.2 overs. And I, I, I'm glad that I'm living, at, I'm li presently living, that I can witness this moment where Vasame Pomal, I was here to see him take 600, 600. wickets. Yes. This, this is a remarkable achievement. I want to celebrate with you on behalf of the entire panel. He receives a standing ovation uh, from the coaching staff and from the rest of the players. Stuart Williams coming out and recognizing him. And that is a tremendous achievement um, from young Pomol. I have to call him Young Pomol because he's still active. 3 for 16. 14.2 overs. And he's just a mad thing. He's just a, a, a miracle set compared to what would have happened a week ago. Yes. Um, you know, when he was against the Cricket West Indies Academy, he had one for 100 and something. Uh, now today, um, he's in the wickets column. That's so how Powell, goes. Powell 23, Nandu 4, Kevin Hodge 67, Ambrose 4, Walcott 8, Eight, the silver five, Graves four, Akim Jordan. He continued his good batting form. Thirty-seven, Shem Holder three, um, and then we have Minley who got out for seven. Anderson Phillips was left not out and three. Devon Thomas had a great day. He had some four catches. He was a live wire. And when we, we we match up now, we see in terms of the bowling figures. What can we say about the bowling figures, boy? Anything to shout about? We'll find out. Um, just well, Dominic you know. Drakes, I, I, I think we can shout about his 3 for 17 uh, in two uh, decent spells of bowling. Good to see him coming from the CIU end and really uh, getting uh, at least a couple of LBW decisions. Uh, Well-deserved, uh, Ambrose and also uh, Powell. 
uh, those two would stand out. Uh, Nia Smith, nothing to write home about. Raymond Reefer, he did open the bowling. Uh, looked a bit ordinary, but in the end, got one wicket. Uh, J. Mac Alistair, he had some good, 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 good uh, spells, but not really uh, hitting anybody over. One for 23. Vera Sami Pramol, though, 3 for 16 from 14.2 overs. The Guyanese left arm orthodox spinner becomes the first person in the history of West Indies cricket domestic uh, from that side. 600 wickets, in fact, earlier. He eclipsed, what, five? We would just get that for you. you. 599? Yes, 599. Yeah, he came into this came game, into 599. This game on 599. Yes. But he also would have been one of the players to have, well, let's look at this. 181. No, that's innings bowling. We're just trying to. And well set, sorts itself out. Just to give you an idea, 317 dot balls. The wickets fell 1 for 31, 2 for 35, 3 for 46. 4 for 56, 5 for 62, 6 for 74. A revival, 7 for 145. And then we had a, a, a major decline. 8 for 167, 9 for 169. And all out, 177 of 65.2 overs. Like I said, 317 dot balls. And nothing much to shout about here from Team Headley. Well, nothing much to shout about. But I, I was just looking back at the Vera Sami Pramal situation. He is 130, well, this is his 137th uh, first-class match. But he has only played nine test matches. And in those nine test matches, he has only gotten 31 wickets. Could it be a situation that this man may have been more deserving of that opportunity at the highest level? Because his other... 500 and, 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 and what, 569 matches, 569 wickets uh, would have been taken at either the regional level or, or the first class level? Yeah. Well, we will be left to ponder a whole lot of things, Seth. Um, but the, the most important thing, I don't know if he played test cricket again. Uh, and you can Are never you say never. Vernon? And you can <laughs> never say never. <laughs> Uh, we never know. We maybe maybe horses for courses. Maybe one of these days he might get a farewell test match. <laughs> but at going from 33 to 34, no, they look like they have moved on. It look, look like it will be Moti, Cornwall, Chase. I don't know if Pumal is in the conversation. And I might be wrong. Well, I'm not quite sure what Desmond Haynes and, and Butcher and the other guys are thinking. But I think for a man who has bowled that well, that consistently, uh, five, what we say, beyond outside of the test matches, 561, 569, I'm sorry, uh, wickets. He's a man who is deserving of anything. And 33 is not a bad age. Yeah. I wish you luck with that set. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I will say to you. <laughs> I wish you, I certainly wish you luck with that one there. I, uh, I want to see an investment set in, in, in our wrist spinners. And I, I would hope that, you know, going forward, Cricket West Indies will get someone. I know at one point in time we had Ad, Abdel Kadir, who was in the Caribbean doing some work with our spin bowling coaches. I think that's where we, we, we're falling short. We've seen a little, when we look at our, most of our major competitions in the Caribbean, it's dominated by spin bowlers. But when they get up to the next level, um, are they given in, in enough long enough haul? Um, and consistency, um, that is another problem which, you know, I and, think and that we need And that's perhaps the, the challenge that Pramod found himself. So, found himself so we, we, we have a lot of work to do. And like I said, Seth, whether we like it or not, with the way how the International Cricket Council is looking at the ICC Test Championship, it is always going to be a challenge for Cricket West Indies if you have eight, ten test matches in one year. It... it, it how do it you do, how do your balance? How do you balance by if if you only have eight ten test matches? How do you balance that? It's a it's a real serious situation that we we seriously have to address. But we'll be back, set. In fact, it won't be us. It will be Joel Manning and Mary Richards who will be coming back out after the break. And just to let you know that Team Weeks, yeah, will need 177 in their first up. That will be their first task at hand. 
They need 178 more. Well, they'll have to get 277 for us to maybe make a match out of this. And based on what is happening in the set, let's see if there's a disease in fall of wickets. That's all I will say to you. One hundred and seventy-seven all out. <laughs> Team Headley after winning the toss this morning and uh, opting to bat for certainly not the total that Joshua De Silva and Team Headley would have had in mind at the start, especially when we talked about the conditions here at Coolidge. The fact that we, we believe that these certainly are the better conditions for batters at the moment. Mally Richards alongside of me. Uh, to take us through this first half an hour of play into team weeks from batting innings. Mali, what do you make of that total? Uh, to be fair, well, well, well on the par, as you said, considering the conditions here at the CCG. This pitch in particular, uh, really good for batting here on day one. Probably as good as it's going to be. I anticipate it gets a little lower. Uh, we see more inconsistent bounds as this game wears on especially in these conditions hot dry i think very much the team weeks will be happy very very happy with their performance to be out of the field well within the first day so they'll be happy with that effort but interesting to see how akim jordan does with the new ball here Joe we would have spoken at length about him especially in these conditions slightly different maybe more grass covering on the previous pitches he would have bowled on maybe not quite as hot as well swung and seamed the ball quite a lot here ball one oh. and there's that <laughs> moment that you talked about and I Instantly cast my way back to the dismissal over Taysom Wright, Shander Paul, and Naeem Young at this ground. From the other end, it was Naeem Young, but that was shaping up to, to be something similar there. Very similar indeed, just shuffling across the crease. Just struggling, you know, planting that front foot, struggling to access the ball, especially early in his innings. If you get through this period, you'll see the footwork and everything just become more cohesive.
Opting to start around the wicket. To Tej Noreen Shandapal. Akeem Jordan. And we've seen him do this with the left-handers. We think back to Kirk McKenzie as well and the approach that he would have taken there as well with the left-handers that are batting within the West Indies Academy setup. Stands tall. And that one similar to that punch up we would have seen from Kieran Powell. What ball one today? Wickets just held up, but just recently maybe just not only flattening out, but just getting lower and lower. This ball is a new ball, obviously, but that first delivery would have been of some concern. Oh, so Akeem Jordan probably not the type of bowler to hit the deck as hard as probably a McAllister, even a Dominic Drake's not quite as tall. More looks for that movement through the air and for whatever assistance he can get off this pitch. And so far, just scooting through quite low through to the wicketkeeper De Silva. Actually, interesting to see Josh De Silva taking right. the gloves, Joel, in this match. I think it would have been Walker that would have kept. So yeah. Taking the opportunity to just keep his skills quite up there, really, quite fresh. Doesn't want to let them deteriorate too long. Or deteriorate without a, a, a stint behind the, the, the stumps. At the end of the first over, it's none for none after one. Yeah, just taking that opportunity to hold the gloves, uh, the silver. I wondered if it was just because of that long innings that he had mm. and knowing that he had Tevin Walcott in his side that he opted to ask Tevin Walcott to hold the gloves on the occasion, whether or not that was the team plan uh, from the start. That we will never know. But yeah, holding the gloves here in match number two for the match number three overall. In this Headley Week series. Just a bit to you. That's middle. Yeah, it's going to be Marquino Go Midley. Over. Right arm over uh, to get things going from this media center. And he will appear, Akeem Jordan. Just see two wickets for him in the first match versus the West Indies Academy. Two for 47, his figures were. As you can see, he's got the two slips, the gully, man up point, extra cover, mid off, mid on. Key man here, though, in this situation is mid wicket. That mid wicket is telling me that Marquino has probably recognized that this wicket at times is going to keep a bit low. So he's probably going to look to employ a more straighter line as well, especially with the new ball here. Which is good. Tight on that off stump. Every now and again, he'll just look to be a bit straighter. So he's given himself that protection which I think is pretty good, pretty good reading of the conditions here. Can he execute though is the question. To go back to your question on what did you make, what did I make of Team Headley's innings? 
to be fair, if, if the only substantial partnership you're going to get is 71 from the seventh wicket, that tells you everything that you need to know. Sweet. First runs for them. Well timed by Zachary McCaskey. He'll be bringing some form into this match. 93 and 31 for him in the first match here versus the West Indian Academy. Certainly looked as if he was set for 100 in that first match, but then played at one from Kirk McKenzie outside of the off stump. Took the leading edge and it carried to point. Uh, but outside of that, he certainly looked uh, the, the correct opener, as you mm. would say. That's oh, close. this one looks good. Yep. And he's got to go. Marquino Minley gets the early strike. And that's the one I was talking about, uh, Joe. Can he execute when just going a little straighter here? And he does. Probably just looking to hit that one a bit too square, a bit too early in this innings from Zach McCaskey. When we saw him play well, uh, he was looking to play more often down the ground, using that full face of the bat. But the early wicket taken here. So you see Marquino Minley going full in length. Just gone straighter now. Mm, probably. Probably. <laughs> a little unlucky there, Zach McCaskey, to be given LBW. But he has to depart. First wicket goes down. Team Weeks, two for one. There's yeah, a bit of movement towards that leg side after pitching. Any question there would have been clipping. The legs simply know many technologies employed. Uh, certain questions are there as well. Especially with umpire's call, you know, he was given out. So then really, if we go hypothetically, if there is a DRS system, we go upstairs. If it's just clipping, it's probably going to have to depart as well. Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, umpire Gregory Braffitt thought uh, that it would have impacted the stumps. Zachary McCaskey has to go for two. It's two for one. Yeah, but that's good bowling there for Marquino Minley. Recognizing the situation here, recognizing the conditions, probably would have learned something for what he would have seen from Team Headley in that first innings with the ball. Just mixing up the, 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 his lines here, but he's got the adequate protection in case. It's just over pitches. Instantly going around the wicket. Uh, to the left-hander in a Raymond Reefer. The closeout, a uh, very successful over for himself and uh, Team Headley. It's a two for one after two. Yeah, successful over there. The first for Marquino Mini. They'll be happy to remove Zachary McCaskey. Looked in good form. Stroked one nicely on the previous delivery to, the, to him getting out. Well, it does look a good player indeed, and you're not going to score runs every innings. Unless you're uh, Don Bradman or someone like that. but Looks a good player. Looks definitely a player that one can work with. I think we can even unlock another level. He can go to another level. Zach McCaskey, as he gets more comfortable at the first class level. Well, the big question was with regards to where would Raymond refer bat in this lineup. There have been some who have been calling for him to bat higher in certain setups and uh, he's walked to the crease at number three today where he's been more uh, recently for the west indies especially in test cricket he's occupied that number three position i think he's done quite admirably to be honest since getting there scoring what some two half centuries And he's a plucky kind of player, you know. He comes with intangibles, is Raymond Reefer. Overstepping. Zakim Jordan just striving for that extra piece. As you could tell, that one just zipped through a bit more from the young Barbadian. Hitting the bat hard and in behind it quite nicely is Shandapal. Yeah, he, he 
he would want to back up his half century in the second innings versus the West, in West Indies Academy in the previous match is Tej. So he looked a lot more fluent in that second innings. It's just touched down and left him. It's gone away slightly. There from Hakeem Jordan. So we're seeing the skill on show and he's one of the bowlers. He tends to, regardless of conditions, against tends to get movement regardless you know especially with the new ball in hand some guys are gun barrel straight but for whatever reason i think it's because of that wrist of his he's got a nice strong wrist keeps it behind it upon upon uh delivery and if there's anything available out there akim jordan will be the kind of bowler to, to extract it are you certain about especially early on with that new ball mm. in hand as you would have mentioned and that certainly has uh, i guess been a blueprint for him in terms of how he's gone about his wicket taking across the first class championship the reason why you saw him uh, being taken across to south africa as well mm. with the test side is because of the movement that he gets in the early breakthroughs that he usually gets as well just tends to just take wickets every time he bowls as he bowls yet another no ball so he'll have to redo that one again Especially in these hot conditions, can be quite frustrating for for the bowler himself. So he's probably best served to keep that. What what, what size is he? Size twelve? Uh, roughly about there. Yeah, <laughs> behind the line. It was interesting, Mali, to see the type of shot that was rehearsed by Tage Ryan Shadapal in terms of the the height of that one. How he had to jam down, get down on, on it. it. Especially against Jordan. You know, I, I think that we, we can begin to understand how Akim Jordan is looking to pick up the wicket uh, of Tej Narayan Shandipal. One, he realizes that the surface is sort of in his favor, almost in terms of the bounce that he's getting. He's really honing in on the pads of Tej Narayan Shandipal, looking to maybe sneak one through there. You can say the front pad is in trouble. Not necessarily stumps because he's really always been getting behind it, especially in terms of the type of stance that he has. He gets behind the ball. And he gets across the stumps, as you say. So just honing in is Akeem Jordan. The end of that over, what is it? The end of three now, four without loss. Yeah, probably just looking at uh, the type of setup. So probably, as we saw, one or two, just slightly off. So probably drag him across slightly, then starting to get straighter, straighter and straighter, and looking to see if he can just get past the bat of Tage and Ryan Shantipal. They had three O's, uh, as you would say, in terms of close calls uh, from a bowling perspective. Everybody he thought that could have been the one that snuck through. So in terms of that, uh, moral victory to the bowler. He, he, he's, he's done what he set out to do in that over, as you said. He's looked to, to, to bring him across, bring him across, keep, keep dragging him across with the first two or three deliveries. Then he's just honing on the pads. But the good thing is, Tage kept his eye on the ball. And that's two down. Oh, oh. he's dropped him. No, no ball, in oh, fact. Oh, wow. He caught. Wow. Third one. What happened there? Well, that would have been the ideal start for Marquino Minley. A, a wicket in his first over would have been a wicket in his second as well. Catching height, it was perfect for him. He took it as well. And just. Uh, slightly going over that front line he took it and then he dropped it because of that no ball call and but that's the shot <laughs> insult to injury almost he would have to say on that occasion driven back down the ground quite beautifully by I'm Raymond Reefer not sure if Ronnie could play us a replay of, of the actual drop catch again but uh, you could see the bat face just closed upon impact on that one whereas the four wow just managed to keep that bat face open was raymond reefer yeah look see how it closes you're almost seeing the edge of the bat there 
Hence why it went straight back to Marquino Minley in the air. But on the four, got to the pitch. Clean, smooth, you know, backswing and threw the ball from Raymond Rifa. But will they rule that miss, Joe? Well, we'll see that uh, as we head through uh, this final session of play. And it was interesting because Marquino Millie was going once again for that similar type uh, of delivery. But in terms of the four, no, the length was just slightly different uh, to the cotton ball. The length was fuller. And Raymond Rivers was actually able to get to the pitch of that one. Didn't necessarily look to force it. Either just allowed it to come to him and timed it perfectly back down the ground. Whereas the one that was the cotton ball, he kind of strode, uh, strode out uh, and attempted to force that one. Not quite as balanced as well he was on that one. Almost just falling over slightly. And that can happen early in your innings. You know, he's only faced the six deliveries now. That would have been, what, his second delivery? Raymond Rifa. And he's the kind of player you really can't afford to give chances to. He's quite a plucky. He played seven test matches now as Raymond Rifa. So... Well, average of just 25, about 25. That's overboard. Goes looking again, does Mindley. Uh, but refer equal to the task. Nine for one after four. And to be fair, that's not going to happen again. Now, you know, you've been given your chance. Uh, don't anticipate you're going to get another one in a similar vein, especially with Raymond Reefer. He's just that type of guy you really do have to take your chances and especially in this situation team Headley have a bit down in the dumps to be fair they've probably been the least productive of the three teams that we've seen so far just just being honest It'll be interesting to see if Akeem Jordan is able to bowl all six deliveries again at Taser and Shanipal. What his pitch map could potentially look like. That one, you would have to say, just making impact. Just I would say just fractionally outside uh, of the off stump. Just looking for the same, really, more of the same. But what he'll be hoping will be different here is that he could breach the defences. What he can do is find that length, that perfect length. He apologizes. Yeah, he went looking with mm. that delivery. So we would have seen in, in the over before this, he, he delivered maybe two or three before he went towards looking for the pads of Tate and Channel. On this occasion, just the one delivery, just around that off stump, then going over the angle down that leg side, looking to make him pat with those pads. And patience applies to, to, to bowlers as well, not just batters. It's better. He's better off just being patient. That's what. That's the challenge that a batter like Tejan Ranchandapal will pose to a bowler. Is he'll play on that patience of yours. You probably think, yeah, he looks. He's got that kind of technique where, yeah, I can just go for that any right away. But you still got to set him up, or else he will pick you off. He will frustrate you. Just like that. It's the type of shots he plays as well. That was almost like a... It was a leave, but he played a shot as well. Like It was a solid leave that hit the bat. It's crazy. Just the way how he would end up. Very unorthodox. These kind of things uh, will almost just get on the nerves of a, of a player. So one always has to still keep one's composure. Hakeem Jordan and his patience in this situation. <laughs> you have to say he probably enjoys bowling uh, to right-hander. Just a bit more than he enjoys 
in bowling to left-handers, especially given that he enjoys right-handers who, who like to get that front foot out and drive the ball with that big booming in swing. It's like different proposition when it comes to the left-handers. Guys that like to hang back and, and play from the crease. Just like that. Closes out a maiden for Jordan. Nine for one. Yeah, just more of the same there from Akeem Jordan. Maybe not quite as good an over as the, the one previously, but economical none the same. Just trying to drag Shander Paul across this crease. Even take the outside edge. We saw just a couple just hit and go away from the left-handed batter, but probably just started a bit too wide. Since then, Shander Paul's gotten a lot tighter. He's played within himself in terms of within his body. And have left those deliveries, even the ones close to the off stump as well. It's going to be Minley again. And he's greeted with the outstretched arm of umpire Gregory Brathard. Another no ball signal, so a slight. I wouldn't necessarily call it a no ball problem just yet. Just but yet. Yeah, a few instances where bowlers at either end have yeah, been guilty of overstepping. What, the fourth in five overs or so? It's a bit too many, to be honest. One cost you a wicket, a valued wicket in this situation, Raymond Reefer. So it's already come back to hurt them. So is it the benefit of the basics, just staying behind the line? Something that you think would be pretty academic. And to be fair, I think Marquino Mini is a bit of the same as well. Prefers bowling to the right-handers. Probably feels like he can really finic finish his action the way he wants to. Really pulls through. Probably seems a bit more short, assured of his lines and lengths to the right hander. Uh, it was quite interesting to watch Nandu sprint in pursuit of that one. Not the tallest of cricketers, his legs. Really doing a, a quick rotation there in pursuit of that one. It's always interesting as you look around and feel the, the various body builds mm, that you have. The shapes. It adds to the color of cricket. Yep. Middle this way. That's middle. Tage takes that right middle. Room. That's off stump. Stump guard. Took off as well. Interesting to see where he sets up. Looks like he's set up just on that middle stump. Yeah, he sets up on middle. When he's completed his trigger movement, he gets to outside the off stump. Yeah, pretty much fifth stump, fifth, pretty. sixth stump. Yeah. yeah. And he makes the impact with the ball outside of that off stump as well. And I think that way is the way in which he's assured of where his off stump is because he knows with his movement he's already outside there so anything outside of that outside of his line you know his nose will be would be wide works that one into the offset just so interesting how different batters mm. employ Work it different out. techniques mm. and how we realize that to because at one stage the conversation was always about you know this is is the way to go about getting your run this is the way that you need to set up but as we've gone through the years or come through the years we've realized how many different techniques can actually be successful for batters two left-handers at the crease right now two completely different setups for them remember refer i guess a little more conventional in terms of the look in terms of how he stands up at the crease and makes the impact with the ball. 
but the fundamentals such as watching the ball closely, those are the things that are the same. You know what I'm saying? You never see a batter be successful not watching the ball closely. You just have to watch the ball as closely as possible. But you're right, different techniques, different modus operandi. Some guys have a trigger, some guys don't. You know, some guys trigger with the feet, some guys trigger with hands. Six bold here in the evening sun of Coolidge. 13 for one. Yeah, it's turned into quite a lovely afternoon, to be honest. Quite picturesque here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. Here at Coolidge. And at 13 for one. Could easily be two down. Ray Marie for now marking his guard. He's almost setting his stall out. Will they rue that no ball and that missed chance? Here's Akeem Jordan continuing. Good day to you, Mali Richards. Hi, Nick. 177 on the board. Nowhere close to what you think would be par on this tote surface. I've seen a lot of T20 cricket recently. That's why I'm saying the words par and par score. But I still think Joshua De Silva would have looked at it today and said, surely would have wanted at least 300 and would have wanted to bat the full 90 overs. Oh, for sure. I mean... Very, very disappointed with the output from Team Headley, to be honest. But, as he said, bowled out well within that. Only 177. No real partnerships. No scores of substance. Uh, Kevin Hodge, Hakeem Jordan to a lesser extent. Akeem Jordan has consistently gone around the wicket in his first now 20 deliveries. does have that tendency to try and get the ball to swing away. So with the angle, attacking the left-hander, maybe looking for that late movement. I wonder though if he can change the approach because Remory has that comfortable, Mali. He has. And since that, that chance, uh, he's really looked good. He's played straight. He hasn't struggled to access the ball. He's, he's got a full face on it, more importantly. Oi! Jeez. Yeah, that one kept low. And, and came back as well, yeah. Because on this surface, you do have those deliveries that do tend to keep low. The interesting one about this, though, is that you don't tend to see the new ball because of the hardness of it. It doesn't keep as low as much. So that is surprising. Yeah, it came back a long way. It may have been some sideways movement. I, I, I think uh, we're seeing that especially from Akeem Jordan because he's because of the type of bowler that he is. Probably doesn't hit the deck quite as hard. Just looks to kiss that 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 surface. Down the ground, and he has driven the ball extremely well today, Remarifa. I think it may just get to the boundary and does. Full face of the back once again from Raymond Ree for good footwork as well. Probably didn't get the foot in the way. Allowed that ball to come and punched it down the ground on drive. Looking like a man in good form here. Has played a few of those, Reefer, in this inning so far. Into double digits now. It would be important for him to bat the rest of the day as well because he will want to start fresh tomorrow, especially given the platform he's built. Stayed a touch low. Four from the over, 17 for one. Look at proceedings so far. A day that's belongs to team weeks. 
after just about 72 and some overs. You never know though in this game of cricket. Still a number of overs remaining in the day. 15 of them to come on day number one. As Seth Burton joins me. Seth, good day to you. Yes, good day, Nikhil. Not such a good day, I would say, for Team Headley. Because the prospect would have been there for them to bat the entire day and to see them bowled out being bowled out with over an hour and a half to go i thought that was not just what we expected especially given the higher uh, first innings performances that we have seen both from team weeks and also the academy team so and we will continue Open the bowling. It has made that happen a couple of times. Seen some balls off the inside edge. And it hasn't been convincing for Chandapal. He's still there. But it has been a bit of a struggle. Just his second run in 23 deliveries. It Who's impressed you the most today, Seth? Well, I think I really like what I saw from Dominic Drakes in terms of the bowling. Uh, he was pretty good, a much improved performance than in the previous game. And Kavim Hodge did show some good skills in terms of his batting. Apart from that, not m much to write home. Akeem Jordan, once again, coming good with the bat. Uh, as a lower order batter, I won't say as a tail ender because he shows that all round tendency. And once you're consistent, which he has shown, uh, that is good. And then he's shaping up as good as usual with the ball. Still two slips in operation for Marquino Milley. And a wide man at gully. This will be runs. Clipped away pretty comfortably. Rifa has looked at ease so far in his time at the crease. Come back for an easy three. Yes, he's looking quite confident, quite comfortable. That's what a uh, test match opportunity can do for you as a batter, as a player in general. Would have been more on the lower order end, but has been transformed into that top order batter in the number three position for the West Indies most recently. And I think he would have to reflect that, that he has gone past the Raymond Reefer of domestic cricket. Oh, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Don't think he'll have the legs to go all the way. But it just shows the ease of Tejnar in Chandapal. Well, he would like to bat as long as possible, although we, 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 we are, we are uh, speaking about Raymond Reaver. He would like to bat. Yeah, just look at how late he played it and positioned it well because there was a gap in between that point and gully fielder I should say point and cover fielder correction Seth when we look at the journey of Ray Marifa a man that's been with the West Indies team for years but now really getting his opportunity what he did in 2022 to go up the order for the Barbados Pride bat at number three got runs in that position as well do you think based on that he got some 345 runs at three that season. Average 49 with three half centuries. After this delivery, based on that, do you think he belongs at number three for the West Indies or he should bat a bit later? I think you like to throw me in the hot seat, uh, <laughs> Nikhil. That has been a debate that we have had uh, going back to the West Indies team facing Bangladesh uh, last year or year before. And um, at that time, we really thought that he would not have been suitable for number three because in those games against Bangladesh, he really struggled, and I believe it was more a pressure situation. Uh, since then, he has gone on to play uh, in, a, in a couple more test matches in Australia and in Africa. So those would have given him that confidence that he needed, and I think he has done well so far, two half centuries. You give and take. 
and can it transform him that is the big question that we may ask if he, he keeps that position can't blame him he has grabbed it well on the other hand if he perishes in that position there would be the naysayers who would say well he did not fit so it's a tough situation to answer that question i must be honest with you yeah some will look at his statistics and because say 345 would be let's say below average or around average of of some of those players who may look into force their way back uh he came in with perhaps one first class hundred you know that would you'd you'd certainly want your number three to be more you know having a bit more experience there were some schools of thought who were saying perhaps uh, one of the openers at that period when Tangerine Chan Taj Chandapol came into the team and you had Craig Bratwit opening. We were saying perhaps the two are almost similar in terms of temperament. So you could have had a different opener to accompany Craig Bratwit and perhaps Chandapol could have come at three. So there were many uh, permutations or many possibilities. He has gotten it. He has started to make use of that opportunity and until then good luck yeah, when i look at remarifa and analyze his seventh as much as at the highest level he's only now begun to bat at number three and i think people have been fast to criticize him in terms of the performances but for me what i look at is the grit he brings i think the mindset that refers similar to kevin hodge mind you that just resolute defense that he can come out there with. He's a real crisis man. Can get you out of a crisis. And I think probably deserves a bit more opportunity. Got that 62 against South Africa. Got in a couple starts. 53 against Zimbabwe. I think he deserves a few more opportunities, Seth. No ball signaled at three before we can decide whether he's the man for the job or not. Well, we look at where the future could be in terms of test cricket it would be perhaps india before anybody else that's another testing attack similar to what you'd have had for australia and south africa uh, can he maintain it for me he was a bowling all-rounder and that was the issue that i had that he was you know it seemed as though the the position was tailor-made for him because there may have been questions otherwise um And let me just say, bowlers like Kagiso Rabada and Anrik Norkia, even Gerald Kutsu, who's just made his debut, Marco Janssen, when we forgot that 62 in that partnership with Blackwood, he looked like he was batting against a different attack. Looked extremely comfortable. It's a real pity he couldn't go on to get the 100, but for me, it shows that he has the ability to be able to bat against high-quality seam at the highest level. And the question is going to be consistency. You know how consistent you can be. Test cricket is so rare these days. You you may not be tested. You may be tested in one situation, do well. There may be a couple of other situations you may be tested and don't do so well. So how many opportunities would come during that period? I think only he can answer that. He has gotten the opportunity. His responsibility is to seize the opportunity. And if not... The selectors would have their say. Be looking to cash in here, given this start. A couple of sweet drives, a couple of boundaries as well. That's another one. Add that to the collection. Right out of the top drawer from Ray Marifa. Really a, a lovely shot. He actually walked into it on the front foot and he just played it without any power. Just sheer timing using the pace of Akeem Jordan. And he will be happy with the four of that quality. Yeah, Jordan just qu isn't quite getting that ball to straighten off the pitch and not bringing the slip into play. Rifa though, too easy for him. Mid off up in the circle. Looks good so far. End of nine overs, 28 for one. Yes, 28 for one. Uh, a good response so Jordan far right after losing uh, the opening bat. I think team. Weeks would be thinking that if these two uh, remain together overnight, they could well not just eclipse the score, but they could really give Team Headley quite a bit to chase. 
but they would have to show the dedication we see a change at this end Justin Graves who was equally impressive in that first match against Team Academy picked up three wickets built some really good pressure someone that I think is very similar to Dominic Drake's in the sense that they're both all rounders Seth but both aren't the quickest. Graves probably a lot slower than Drake's, but still, I think both understand their game a lot, understand it well, and Graves can really get the ball to swing. Yes, we're seeing that from him in this series. Just seeing the ball die on its way to Joshua De Silva, and it tells you about the surface, especially for bowlers that don't have as much pace. This is good from Chanapol, though, because we've seen at the test level that he can play his shots, but I think there's been a clear intent to just ensure that they can get through to the day. Just about 45 minutes or so remaining in the day's play. That's a good delivery, Nikhil. That one really nip back. <laughs> and the funny thing is, Remy out there and Justin Graves, their story is almost the opposite. Graves, known as a top order batsman, opened the batting for the West Indies and won the international cricket. But now, after going to the Winter Islands last season, has almost been seen now as a bowling all rounder. Well, we have even seen players in international cricket <laughs> shift in perspective. Uh, you know about the KP, the Kevin Peterson situation, Steve Smith. You go on and on. They're players who transform themselves. Oh. He's hurrying Shander Paul on that occasion. But that's a player. You're a cricketer. You, you, you can't just see yourself as a batter, as a bowler. But what you see, opportunities. And you take them. And that's what the good cricketers do. As I spoke about Raymond Reefer, I think his focus must be to transform himself into that frontline batter and uh, not necessarily that he would trade the all-rounder option because he's first was first the bowler so whatever opportunity comes grab it and grab it well yeah, Graves still trying to find that right line I can see the intent trying to be full trying to go across the left-handed channel pole hasn't quite attacked the stumps just yet or even brought the outside edge into play with graves though you can see that he's built for fast bowling maybe a top order batter he's built for fast bowling and he has been relatively consistent in his spells uh, during this series again too wide ends his first over though with the maiden so not bad from Justin Graves. 10 of 10 overs, 28 for one. Yes. Uh, didn't concede any run, but struggling a bit uh, with his line, trying to decide whether he should be closer to the batter or whether he should be outside the off, wide outside the off stump. I think he's comfortable, though, because the truth is Chandra Paul is not going to heave at anything that is wide outside the off stump. So he has the luxury of working on his spots and he has done so far. He has done that so far. The question you, I, I would reverse to you, Raymond, refer at three. What could have been the other options in your mind? I think maybe where he started his career, when he came in for Jason Holder, batted at eight. I think he has the ability to be attacking as well. So if he bats at six or seven, I think he's a very viable option, especially if he does what we saw today and bowl a lot more. That's where I see Raymond Reefer, to be, to be honest. Can anyone just to come back at Reefer? I still think, though, Seth, given what we've seen with the three half centuries in Southern Africa, to me, it says that he deserves a bit more opportunity. Maybe the India series about at three, maybe England at the end of the year. Well, England would be basically white ball. True, that's true. So that may be a different... And that's the problem for the West Indies again. Not enough... Enough test matches. I do wonder, though, if the selectors was 
opt to have him go to somewhere like a Bangladesh on an A-team tour and test him at three there again. Well, well, I read into that from the selection of the in, uh, the first game when I realized that himself and Devon Thomas were basically left out of the team. I read it that day as saying, okay, you guys are going off to Bangladesh, so you know, let's see what others have to offer. And if they do, they're within their rights because I do think without any other cricket after this, they would need to keep focus, refer as your number three. I'm even thinking that Josh De Silva possibility, a possibility in that setup to keep playing cricket because that's the only way they're going to get better. That's the only way they're going to improve. I think on that A-team tour, for the players like Rifa or Joshua De Silva, and I know Rifa's been in and around the T20 international setup, but for those players who probably will not be in that West Indies one international squad going off to the qualifiers, that Bangladesh tour could be a real great opportunity for them to get ready for India. But on the flip side, you have some young players like Alec Athenes, who probably will be going as well, but some other players who have done well regionally that may want the extra cricket as well. Can only carry maybe 14, 15 guys to Bangladesh. So you have to try and find that, that balance. It's tough. Well, certainly. But there are some who have already written their names uh, down on that sheet. Kirk McKenzie. We, you're looking at Kevlon Anderson. They have already done that. I like what I'm seeing of Kevin Wickham. So they have already written their names to some extent, barring injury, barring something. I, I also believe that balance must be with some of the senior players. You really don't want to go to Bangladesh and find yourself, you know, losing an AA series. So it must be a, a, a good mix. I just wonder if Jordan could maybe change this approach. All six of his overs now have been from around the wicket. Hasn't really got many deliveries to go past the outside edge. He's forced the batter to play. Haven't seen a lot of those plays and misses. And he can swing the ball both ways, Seth. Yes, that's one of his attributes. We have watched that for a couple of years. Uh, and I guess he will be boosted by his inclusion in the West Indies touring party. That has some implications in terms of confidence, understanding where he's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, f well, I was about to say, well, fielded, but it goes through. <laughs> um, an additional couple of runs. Chandapal ends the 11th over. 32 for one. I think on Hakeem Jordan, it would be interesting, Seth, to see the way he's used. Again, the problem being that there's only one test series in the year for the West Indies. He was went to that South Africa series. Then you have a fit Jaden Seals who's coming back. Anderson Phillip as well who was injured. Been on the last West Indies, last couple of West Indies tours, I should say. So there's a lot of decisions. Marquino Mindley as well went to Australia. One, yeah. two, one, decisions for the selectors. And didn't play. Well, played and had to pull out because of injury. And then found himself out of reckoning. So quite a lot of decisions. But I think eventually uh, they should get it right. This presents the opportunity for them to get it right. The players themselves, the selectors, can only respond to the performances of the players. Drinks break. And 32 for one after 11 overs. 31 partnership developing between Ray Marifa and Chanapal. Rifa's been the main aggressor. Yes. 17 from 29. And his aggression is, was quite, is quite measured. It's not the aggression that he's going over the top recklessly. Calculated aggression. You look at it. His 17 ones from 29 deliveries already have three fours. In fact, all the fours struck so far in this innings, they have come from the bat of Raymond Reefer through the offside, really top-class shots. Yeah, and still a lot of batting to come. Davin Thomas, his West Indies teammate. Alec Athene is the captain so far. Good work being put in by Jordan. Six overs on the trot. Graves just the one over. Hasn't conceded a run just yet. Wonder, after we saw Promol and Sinclair get something off the surface, Seth, I wonder how important Shem Holder will be as the days go on, maybe tomorrow. Well, uh, we would wait. Uh, the surface is now dried out. It is evident that there is some grip uh, for the spinners. 
uh, the question would also be how would the captain, when would the captain bring him in? Because if we notice that it took quite some time before Vera Sami Pomol was brought into the attack, but that was against the background that wickets were tumbling uh, to the seamers and the captain made the right call to, to persist with the seamers and eventually uh, Vera Sami Pomol had his opportunity. In terms of ho holder, I think it depends on how far this partnership goes. I would not expect to see him bowl this evening. But if this partnership remains, don't be surprised if perhaps after the first spell tomorrow morning, you'd expect to see the spinner. But there was a debate, a discussion Vernon and I had off air. It was the selectors' reluctance to play the spinner in the West Indies team. Uh, we have had, you look at Vera Sami Pomol in doing the analysis of his 131 first class matches 136 I make that prior to this he has only had nine test matches who were the spinners given the opportunity yes nine for Cornwall uh, Chase as an all-rounder uh, during Sammy Primal's time a bit of Bishu so they have been very reluctant in playing the spinners so the question is as we see all these spinners in this setup are they looking for one are they looking for two good akesh moti he's the one in current standing so i'm i'm not quite sure how many spinners they will be looking at at this time justin graves to continue things tell you what seth you mentioned spinners the man from this country rakim cornwall I would like to see him back in the west indies test shirt very soon india is an important series expected to be played in trinidad he's taken the most wickets in the two first class seasons well certainly he should always be a part of that mix the, uh, the test squad i know that you know they have been mixed uh signals to him and those mixed signals have been not just in terms of his performance but in terms of his selection uh, because for the australian to tour he was selected and then you could call it deselected <laughs> that selection was reversed and no clarity so you know there's some psychological pressure on him as a player yet he came out 35 wickets from five games again topping the bowling excellent distribution in terms of five wicket hauls And I think he has answered the critics. He has answered the concerns because some may say, oh, size. But then he would put his hand up and say, performance. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you're hiring someone in a company and they are reaching all the goals and they are aligning with the objectives of the organization, are you going to, say, are you going to go back to entry level <laughs> and say your interview wasn't the best? <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to use that analogy but he definitely should be and i would just add one more very quickly not to make it a cornwall conversation but if you look at it he has the capacity to play in all formats you look at him you would have been there uh, as at in terms of the list a game super 50 otherwise he has four list a hundreds as a batter outside of his bowling ability and then you look at him in T20 as the opener for Royals, previously Zooks. He has been the, the man who gets you off. So he has much to offer, but the question is how receptive would those in charge be towards accepting that? Yeah, Graves still, though, is very wide in terms of this line. I think he may want to just re-strategize because Chanapol, this is just too easy for him. <laughs> Hasn't looked too challenged. Maybe one or two deliveries that were a bit straighter. Surely they can't just go on with this because nothing really is happening. So here's a question back, Nikhil. Shander Paul, would he be going with the A team? What What are your thoughts on that? He's already an opener at the test level. Thoughts to be considered. Yeah, for me, I would be happy. Yeah. To have Tejan and Chanapal going to that Bangladesh series because it's more experience for a player that I think is very important and critical to the West Indies in the next three to five years, given what we've seen in just 
His first fight or so. Test matches. End of 32. Sorry, end of 12 overs. 32 for one. More from Seth. And then commentary change. Yes. So we have seen a good start on the part of Team Weeks. At the same time, they not out of the woods because a couple of quick wickets could really push them back. They trail by 145 runs. Vernon Springer and Joel Manning Love will it. take you through to the end. And Philip introduced into the attack now with his first. Thirty-three for one. A team weeks. You would have to say that to if they're able not to lose another wicket you know, before the end of the day's play. The day certainly would be long to them. Different version, Joel. I listen to talkers to some players talking, or some of our broadcasters, comrades talking about just test cricket. I think if you're a cricketer, you're a cricketer, and playing almost every format of the game helps to develop your own game. I had a point in time when fellas in the old time days would have played 60 over cricket, would have played test cricket. Doesn't matter what form of cricket it is, it the fundamentals and the basics remain the same. That's something that I think we should be promoting and concentrating on. And that's why I'm kind of very much concerned as to when we talking about red ball and white ball contracts because we tend to feel that somebody who plays white ball is maybe not good enough to come and play test cricket. I think if you're a cricketer, um, you should be given that opportunity. And with the limited options as the amount of test matches that are available, um, I think we should encourage more people to play all formats of the game. I'm just searching say that our off stump is Anderson Phillip. Yeah, it would be interesting in terms of the direction that we start to push future cricketers. In terms of a lot of the interviews and conversations with those coming through the academies, that when younger boys on a whole, they all have that interest in playing the longer format of the game. I think of like a Kelvin Pittman, who in a feature recently released by West Indies cricket we have talked about the fact that he enjoys bowling those longer spells Kirk McKenzie would have mentioned it as well along with Kevin Wickham A lovely first over uh, from Anderson Phillips. Just one from it. It's 33 for one. 33 for one. And talking about cricket in the region, um, just to let the folks know that Cricket West Indies and the United States will be hosting the ICC Men's T20 World Cup in June next year. And so the bidding process has started around the Caribbean and most likely in the United States of America. You're talking about some 20 matches 55 matches coming to this neck of the woods. Um, and by July 31st, 2023, we will know the venues that will be selected. We're looking, hopefully, at one of the venues right here. 
the Coolidge Cricket Ground, Sir Vivian Richards Stadium, Bridgetown, Kensington Oval, you never know. A lot of cricket coming to the Caribbean, so it'll be pretty important. Even the folks in the United States of America, they will get an opportunity as well to have a crack at it. This is the fifth ICC global event that the Caribbean has been and will be staging. So it's a big achievement for a cricketing power nation. And maybe the time has come where our marketing trust and our attitude in terms of how we market that World Cup is going to be also critical. I hope that we would use that opportunity to generate fans in the Caribbean to really participate and move to the Caribbean looking at the World Cup. Uh, too many times I feel that we concentrate on a situation where we feel that everybody has to come to the Caribbean, but we have a lot of Caribbean fans in the Caribbean that just need that opportunity and that drive. And if we move on a campaign to march with our team, I think we can have some success. Finds the gap, does Reefer. And Nadu pulls it back inside of the boundary now. Partnership ticks up to 33 for them. The Stindies have won the ICC Men's T20 World Cup on two occasions, 2012 in Sri Lanka, 2016 in India. And most people feel that with the components of the players that we have available, that we can compete at that level. It certainly would be a good look and a good feel if the US in his side could keep that trophy here in the Caribbean and what it would mean to everyone. It certainly will be a fantastic World Cup though. The, the, the ideal thing, Joel, is if we believe that we can compete. You know, we all have to believe. It can't be some and some saying we don't believe. All of us have to, to, to buy into that concept. A bit of confusion in the running there. Players almost colliding. No damage done and two more to Raymond Reefer. Yeah, certainly in terms of the performances that we've had recently in the T20 format, I think back to that South Africa tour. You can say that uh, maybe once again the signs are there for our T20 side. A lot more cricket to be played before we get to that World Cup, though. I see some notes being written on my paper, but the last time the 2007 World Cup came to the Caribbean, it was almost... We didn't have the Caribbean favour, and so we didn't benefit because we were promised that India would come, and they never came. So, I was involved in that, my buddy. <laughs> oh, they never showed up. Uh, we, well, we don't know if they might show up this time because it's a cricket game, so anything is possible. But it's good. That the Caribbean is taking on this, this magnificent task here. It's just that it comes at a point in time coming out of COVID that a number of Caribbean governments will have to upgrade. will have to spend some extra money, Joel, to be able to upgrade the security. And, you know, it's amazing. I hope that one day, and I hope we don't change the goalposts and move the goalposts, that we all can move to the region. So maybe when the World Cup comes, we don't need to be going all over the place. We have one passport that takes us right throughout the entire Caribbean. For all and sundry, that would be a glorious day indeed. Yeah, the possibility of that one password. But no, it certainly will be a fantastic occasion. The World Cup. I remember as a youngster back in 2007 being able to attend uh, the final at Kensington Oval and what it meant for me and for others to now have that opportunity once again. Uh, to be able to see not just cricket because we get cricket here in the Caribbean but uh, a global tournament of the likes of the T20 World Cup yeah. 
Yeah, it certainly would augur well in terms of not just raising the profile of cricket in the Caribbean, but inspiring another generation of youngsters. Because I do remember, especially during that time, how everyone gravitated towards playing cricket at lunchtime and in the streets, etc. And what it means to be able to just attend a World Cup match. So certainly looking forward to that next year. I also want to see more of our professionals in the Caribbean be given a opportunity in critical roles um, of the event coming to the Caribbean so that at least it can leave a legacy and continue to build the sport administratively throughout the entire region because the business of sports is a billion dollar industry and so if our people in the Caribbean don't get an opportunity to showcase into the areas that you know can inspire not only you, Joel, as a, as a young broadcaster, but even somebody would want to feel that, hey, cricket administration is a way for us to go and to get in there. Too many times I feel that we, we are left in the, in, the, in the background. We're not given that opportunity. And the event will be come and gone, and we won't have a lot of people from the Caribbean benefiting at the end of it. And I say that because just looking back at the 2007 World Cup first, which came to the Caribbean, you had a lot of situations where you, every time you look at some of the top positions in terms of what was centered around for folks in the Caribbean, um, you maybe can count them on your hand. So I hope the mindset would change this time around and that our administrators would realize that this is a time also to help to reignite the game in the Caribbean. Oh, yes, <laughs> this is going to be an interesting period of play, Joel, if this wicket starts to behave the way we see with that delivery. Well, that kind of behavior in terms of service is definitely expected. I think everybody that had a look at that surface this morning, just counting the time until we see a bit more of that just because of how dry it was at the start of today and given how it's played across the other matches that were played on this strip as well. I could be wrong, but uh, I don't think that any match that has been played on this particular surface has gone the distance in days. terms uh, of the four days. They've all been won inside, inside three days. Three. In fact, even the under-15, is uh, amazing that you made that assessment, Joel. Even the under-15 team struggled to even bat 50 overs. In fact, he was gripping and turning very, very, very early at the under-15 level. More preparation has gone in since that time, but uh, your point is certainly noted. 39 for one, 15 bold, seven overs remain. In the day's play. Which is almost like about a year out. I think it's going to also take a united front from the administrators in, in the Caribbean and also the, the governments. The governments have always stepped up. You know, no question about it. The governments have always supported West Indies cricket because infrastructure-wise, we'll come back to that, Joel. Uh, straight as it gets. From Reefer. No, no. And hitting the stump is probably the only reason why it is not carried to the boundary. I was, I was talking about the, the infrastructure. Even when for 2007 World Cup, a lot of the grounds were upgraded. Um, you, you look around in, in, in Grenada. You look at right here in Antigua and Barbuda. You would see that the Silver River Richard Stadium, there's still this big discussion that should the government have moved from Antigua Recreation Ground to go to the North Zone Cricket Ground? I'll come back to that. All right, so we, we, we're talking about change of venues, and you realize that you would have had a, a number of venues which would have been upgraded. Now, since that upgrade, a number of those venues would have been even scrabbling um, to even fill them um, in, 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 in the context of what was expected at that point in time. And so for small populations in the Caribbean, you know, small economy scales of the private sector, um, 
should we have gone that way? But is how it was sold um, to the Caribbean people, how it was sold to the governments, why that investment was made so huge. I know for sure, um, Joel, when I look into St. Kitts, yeah. there was this big cry that Warner Park, the original Warner Park itself, some folks were saying, well, why not move from Warner Park and end up just like Antigua and go to North Zone and build another venue? Uh, you might have maybe built another white elephant, 50,000 people in St. Kitts and Nevis. You're going to build this big, massive stadium that you maybe can't be able to maintain. I mean, you only feel for the people in Grenada. When you look at that situation, you see how big St. George's Park is there also. And the, the maintenance sometimes for venues or for anything, um, that's something in the Caribbean that we we don't expedite very well, you know. We build things, but we, we don't put a maintenance plan in place um, for them. So by the time a, another event comes around, and, you know, we have to find huge sums of millions of dollars um, to upgrade. And that happens throughout the entire Caribbean. We, huh? we can't hide from that. Oh, an absolute beauty of a delivery. A belated appeal. I don't think that he really wanted that. He, he, he sort of, in the end, said, oh, well, let me just appeal. I thought if Justin Graves had went up a lot more early. Cation from the slip court in there on Aptic, and Joshua Silva was the first to go up. And the others had their hands on their head in terms of the ooh moment, decided to join in with the Silva. Just narrowly missing the edge on that occasion. A good decision uh, by umpire Brathwaite. This time pulled away convincingly. It was a nothing ball. They never got up. And if Justin Graves, he was, he batted. And he would also know that in looking throughout the entire day, every time you try to bang the ball in, it's almost like a tennis lobby bounce come up there. He tried to hammer that one there. And Shanda Paul, he punks on that very quickly and put it away nicely. Quite a lovely shot. He to end off the 16th over. It's 46 for one. Team Weeks responding to 177 all out uh, by Team Headley. It's interesting listening to the stump mics. Uh, the players discussing uh, the penultimate delivery uh, from Justin Graves. He won that beat the outside edge. Uh, to hear Akeem Jonas say, I thought I heard something. The Silva was convinced uh, that he heard something as well. Hodge, however, wasn't certain. As we've been to wind down on day number one of this final match of the Headley Weeks Tri Series. You know, there's always another talk, um, Joel, and I'll come back to that in a little while. We, we're talking about the economic value. Uh, we're talking about one billion people that you know will be looking at the at at at, at the at the Caribbean, but sometimes when you look at the the spent that would be made, you you won't see the return on investment straight away. So the the World Cup coming to the Caribbean in 2024, that will be spelled over a period of time because you're talking about so many concessions. Because as a venue, you would have to be in a conversation to be able to have duty free X Y Z there. So you you know you have to wear all of those things there. The other thing would be hotel space, um, would you be able to get X, Y, Z? The, the venues are going to be determined by how much hotel space that you have. And when I say hotel space, I'm talking about hotel rooms. You know what I mean? So you take a place like where you, your hometown, you know, Barbados, you know, Jamaica, you know, they, they will come into the, the, the reckoning for that as compared to Let's say a game going to St. Vincent or going to Dominica where you have less hotel rooms. All those decisions will have to be made when the folks sit down to determine who gets what matches. Some countries might get warm-up matches. Some countries might get the regular matches.
and air travel is also going to be key um, because you know in the Caribbean um, things can get expensive um, whether we like it or not uh, we have to face that that in itself is a huge challenge also wha wha as, as we speak how do you get to the Caribbean for the World Cup um, you know all those are questions that are going to have to be asked um, within a, a six to eight months period in terms of marketing the ICC World T20 World Cup 2024 You know for sure that the, the, the Caribbean atmosphere, a carnival-like atmosphere, is something that Cricket West Indies would want to promote. This didn't happen in, 20, in 2007. You know what I mean? We took away the Caribbean flavor of the drums and the music and all of those stuff there. Since then, but the damage would have been done from that period of time. A lot of pressure also on the, the host country. USA and the West Indies. Lovely shot. Wide delivery there. And put away nicely. He's in a sort, he's like on a driving range. And one thing I can say to you, he's been able to get that stride out. And he stays low to the ball when he's playing into that area. Especially on tracks like these. Yeah, you shouldn't expect those types of shots uh, from Ray Raymond Reefer. Quite an experienced campaigner. And he contacts of cricket a wide delivery that by anderson and philip he just needed to find that gap and there's a very big gap at that between the man at point and cover and he executed that shot quite perfectly they have to come up um, at the end of the over joel as to what side they're going to what line what side they're going to bowl raymond reefer if they're going to bowl Raymond Reefer on the, uh, on the off stump, then it means that you have to close that gap between cover and extra cover. So you have to maybe bring another man in and force Reefer to hit the ball um, inside out over cover. Um, if you're just leaving just the cover and the backward point and you're bowling th th that sort of line and length there, um, that's going to be easy for Raymond Reefer because he stays low to the ball and he gets that stride in and he executes well when he plays the ball on the offside. We saw a bit of purchase from this media center end for Kevin Sinclair. And now it's going to be the turn of Shem Holder for Team Weeks. He's being brought in. He looks to start right arm over. Confirmed there by umpire Gregory Brathwaite. So right arm over Shem Holder. The first signs of spin for Team Headley. A lot of cricket coming to the curb and Joel. We got... Um, coming up soon, CPL. CPL is going to be a long, long, long saw the news there. Don't know, sure you would have seen it. Welcoming news for you. Ravan Powell coming to Barbados. And Hayden Walsh going to Jamaica. So the trades have started. Uh, sure, we'll hear some more exciting news over the next couple of days. Should have done a lot better with that, um, Joel. That was in the air for a long time. Shanda Paul. Well, that's a sharp chance to Matthew Nandu. Dropped. At short leg. Haven't seen many chances, if any, for Tej and Ryan Shandipal. Those are the ones that have to stick in, and it didn't. They're peeling off at the inside edge of the bat. I think this is going to be an interesting contest here. He's already getting... He's looked like a complete different bowler as compared to... When he played against the West Indies Academy, for sure. Especially in his first outing. Oh. And the He's finger out. goes up. So Holder introduced, and he gets the breakthrough for Team Headley. But you know what, what, what caused that, right, Joel? The, 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 the second ball before he was dropped. Shanda Paul now decided now that he wasn't coming forward. He's playing from his crease. And to me, that's a straight ball. He missed a straight ball. Um, there, he was neither forward nor back. Let's look at it again, um, Joel. As one of your man would have got that worked out. And 
that was always the question for me. Where did that delivery pitch? That was always going to be a question. Coming around uh, the wicket is always harder uh, to get those LBW decisions for the right-handed bowler to the left-handed batter. Umpire Gregory Bath would have judged that the ball pitched. Let me see that again, Ronnie. Probably on leg stump there for him. I think it's an interesting conversation because Sean Paul maybe feels that he might have been hit outside the line of the off stump, even though the ball was hit in his left pad. Let's look at it again. Yeah, the first conversation, where did that ball pitch? And he, he squared up also to get pitch outside. Yeah, it looks here yeah. on the screen as if it pitched outside. Sean Paul will feel very maybe undone. If I could have removed the pads and legs of Sean DePaul. To see if it would have hit the off jump? <laughs> not necessarily. Just to see in terms of how much outside that leg stump, if indeed it was, or whether or not there was some of the ball just inside there. But, yeah, another decision where umpire Gregory Bathett believed the ball pitched on leg stump, going on to hit the stump as well. So the second wicket falls. It's 50 for two here as Alec Athene is the captain, strays to the crease. Hopefully the next time Ronnie will have ball tracker. So we'll be able to mark umpire Gregory Bratton a little harder. But at the international level, Ronnie will get in there. Next time we see Ronnie, maybe in a year or so, we'll certainly have that worked out. So good afternoon to Vinod. Success over for Shem Holder. A maiden wicket over. Shanda Paul, the big one. Yeah, indeed. They will certainly enjoy that wicket, a Team Headley. But you always say that in terms of the right-handed bowler coming around the wicket, how much more of a challenge it is, especially for a spinner who is turning the ball to pick up uh, the LBW. Yeah, and always the first question is where did it pitch? Did it pitch in line? Because usually when it strikes in line and not necessarily the fullest of deliveries, you account for that turn as well. So you usually tell yourself maybe that it might have pitched outside of the leg stump to have that sort of impact. So that certainly is the topic of discussion here, whether or not it pitched outside. In terms of where it struck him, it looked to have struck him in line. That part we're certainly fine with. But a you decision nonetheless in favor of Shem Holder. You win some and you lose some. Today was just not Chanda Paul's day. Straight drive down the ground. Who's coming across here? Looks like Ambrose. And he cuts it off nicely. Anderson Phillip. Working up some pace here. Some 14 dot balls within his spell. Score gliding up to 51 for two. I think Team Headley can't wait to get off the park, Joel. Yeah, they certainly like to take at least one or two more with them in these 3.5 overs that remain. That certainly might begin to bring some balance to the scales for them. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> I just asked me a question. <laughs> Yeah, another question with regards to him. Once again, talking about the right-handed bowler coming over uh, the wicket. Remember, if you're just working that ball into leg side, there's still no question whether or not had he missed it, you know, did that delivery pitch? You mean Athenis? Sorry, Athenis, sorry. Yeah, question whether or not delivery pitched outside. But it, it came off the middle of the bat, Joel. Oh, actually, in fact, maybe I wonder if he's questioning the, uh, the LBW decision that was given. <laughs> In fact, it, it hit me <laughs> that the conversation actually could be with regards to the LBW that was given for Shem Holder. It couldn't, it couldn't be that delivery there. <laughs> that one certainly pitched outside leg. We'll run. Uh, it's almost like, and I know you looked at hitting across the line. Uh, you read the book, but it's a Viverita hitting across the line. And most people, uh, you, you, whenever you look at Viverita's position, his head was always still. And everybody was like, oh, he's hitting across the line. Oh, he's hitting across the line. Um, but you, you look at the, the, the finished product as to where the person ends up. Athens, he needs some runs under his belt. Got a duck against the ac ac academy. Pushing at that one. Yeah. Athens, uppish for a while. It's been interesting to watch 
Anthony is go about his workload across the first class championship. Yes, indeed, he didn't get any runs in, in that first Headley Weeks match that they would have played versus the academy. But he's really looked very positive at the start of all the innings that he's played. It's worked for him for the majority of it, and hence why he's the leading run scorer that we had across the first class championship. And it's an interesting point that you raise, um, Joel. And we're talking about identity as West Indian players. If we follow the history of West Indies cricket, um, starting from the, the days of the Everton Weeks and the Seymour Nurses and the Roy Federicks and the Lloyd and the transition coming up, you've always had players who were very, very, very positive, either at the top or your number three or your number four. Somebody would always take the fight to you. And I think sometimes when you look into the present makeup of the West Indies test team, I don't think you, you, you have that. You almost have everybody playing the same particular way. Outside of Carl Mayers, I think, and Blackwood, everybody else plays within a defensive mode. Sweet. That's textbook. Sweet. From Athenes. Oh, That was a good song and a good feeling for him to close out that over. It's 57 for two. Yeah, 57 for two. And the reason why I raised that with you, Joel, is let's look at the, the, the style and the mood in which England are playing test cricket now. Um, as we look at that lovely straight drive there, good skill work there from the cameraman and Raymond Reefer hopping out of the way there to make sure that he didn't interject or participate, but make sure they hopped out of the way to give Atenez uh, his first boundary of the day. 57 for two. Folks on the manual scoreboard, I think it's Mr. Blacks and company. They are four behind. Somebody can just nudge them. You know, it's been a long day. Team Weeks trailed by 120 runs. But I think we have a game on here. Would you agree, Joel? Well, looking at the fact that uh, this surface has only produced results. Even for a ball was bowl, I told myself. And that another result was on the card here today. And looking at that 177, that team had made it certainly opened up uh, the game or probably accelerated the pace of the game in terms of the likelihood of that result. 12 wickets so far on the first day, so you, you're on track, Joel. Shem Holdo. Might have to go to the laundry later. I was diving away there to stop that straight drive. In the days of Lloyd and Richards and company, that might have come back a lot more harder. Those guys deliberately used to hit the ball back at spinners. Find out if you can catch. Uh, they, they were thinking about damaging your bowling figure, your bowling fingers, to put you out of the game, especially if you were the, the master craft. Of looking to spin folks out. So many stories you would have heard from Lloyd and Richards and company. Whenever they were facing spinners, you tossed it up. They would hit it back to you. He's telling himself that Rim River probably will come after him. Just asking. He'll just give himself a step or two. We're back. He's looking for Reefer to drive him. Probably drive him on the up as well. Change his mind this time and squeeze that down to third man for a single. So Reefer is thinking about coming back tomorrow. Well, that certainly should be the plan. Looking at 2.1 overs remaining in the first day's play. Uh, both batters would want to ensure that they're out there. Not necessarily shut shop in the sense of be ultra defensive but just play as we would say smart cricket calculated cricket I think we're already over time six minutes past five over bold interesting day in case you just joined us team Headley 177 all out Kevin Hard 67 Hakeem Jordan 37 and Kyron Powell 23 but the man who was really we have to celebrate with is Vasami Pomal picking up his 600 first class wicket. The wicket of Hakeem Jordan. He'll remember that for a very long time. Yeah, 
he will certainly remember that. And I guess so will Akeem Jordan uh, as well, given that he is on uh, the site of history. Uh, which a good site to be on. I'm not sure if it's a good site to be on, but given that he's not necessarily a, okay, a, a top part of back. No, I, I don't know think since I, I'm glad that I'm on with you right now. So somebody who the the five hundred and fiftieth wicket that Pomar got, um that, that person is not on the side of history? Not necessarily, no, because <laughs> when you look at five fifty, it's like a fifty, it's like a half century <laughs> All right. for you in the grand scheme of it. <laughs> All right, Joel. I think you should be a Tamanchi lawyer the next <laughs> time around in, in your career, Joel. Graves brought back, and that one falls just short. Is that Kevin Hodge? Yeah, it could be Tevin Walker at Gully, but just short of him. That first will be wide, and Reefer just going at it. Yeah, right foot didn't get out of the pitch. The hands went, uh, more or less. Just dying in front of Tavin Walker, who's taking a step up now at Gully. Full and wide. And once again, that ball finds him. A lot more comfortable this occasion, though, uh, for Reefer. It's been a long day here. And when you look at the score team headley 177 20 boundaries and 16 highest partnership of 71 for the entire day nothing much to shout about we were squeezing this one past backward point don't think it'll have the legs to go into the boundary and if they want they can get three runs but they only get two runs quite easily i guess it's just me well, I, I like to see the intensity in the running. Mally Richards would like to tell me that it's a it's a hot day. I was about to tell you, Wilbur. <laughs> oh, you were going to tell yeah, me yeah, also. Yeah. After fielding <laughs> out there, really giving it your all, you're coming down as the sun sets on the evening. If it could even save 5% energy, Vernon, I think they'll take that. <laughs> runs, runs is runs. <laughs> you try and make sure you maximize and cash in when you can. Because you never know what's going to happen. So we're looking at Justin Graves who's been moved from the CIO end. From the media center end. has now switched to the CIO road end. Um, and really trying to work away here. Raymond Reefer. Reefer will have to be careful those wide deliveries you might have to leave or get a little closer to them no breeze it's much better Hakeem Jordan didn't have a, a good start today hopefully he'll have a, a, a big one tomorrow uh, definitely didn't necessarily see the movement that he usually gets didn't ask as many questions as he usually does at the top of the order also you just wonder if the left-handed batter at the top were the reason for that. Didn't have a chance to bowl much at McCaskey. Ooh. Edge found again. He's searching, he's searching, he's searching. He's worrying Reefer here. Reefer caught in two minds, whether to leave, whether to play. But in the end, he survived. 21 overs bowled, 60 for two. Reefer 34, Athens 6. This is ex should be the final over of the day's play. Once again, we want to thank Ronnie and his entire team, 360 team, who have done an excellent job here in Antigua and Barbuda. It's a real pleasure working with a, a whiz in Ronnie, who gets things up very, very quickly. And if Ronnie can't, then nobody else can. Sounds like you're looking for promotion here, Vernon. <laughs> no, I've got promotion already. <laughs> <laughs> Coming over, or rather, around the wicket now. Yeah, no, you see, this is the, this is the impatience level, you know, because I was saying to you, Joel, I'd have brought a silly point right in front of Athens right now, final over. 
put some pressure back on him if I was Joshua De Silva. It's a final over. Make him think. Make him. They brought a silly point right there in front of him. Called him. He might be surprised. He might pick him up. Now looking to employ a second slip. I think he won a silly point over. also. Especially for Shem Holder. And if I was him, I would come back over the wicket. And not around. Give Athenis something to think about. I don't even think I need the deep backward square at this time because Athenis is not going to be thinking. And if not, I'll give him a bound if he wants to go there. Oh. See what I'm talking about, Joel? Put that man right in front of his face. Funny enough, this scenario reminds me of the match back at the Queen's Park Oval. Where in the fading minutes of the day, Athenes came to the crease. The pressure not anywhere near what it would have been for the winners at that stage. But he played at one, driving at one from the spinner. And had to walk back inside. You see, when you go at the, the higher level, Joel, you, you're not going to be given that luxury to be that comfortable. Well uh, they're going to look, especially if you are the prime batter, the, the captains are going to try and apply as much pressure as possible, and you're going to have to survive. And I'm saying we have to pe begin to prepare our, our players and our batsmen for that next level of pressure. You've got to be uncomfortable. Shem Holder is really settled into a groove here. Let's mix it up. I'll bowl one over and one around. Mm. Don't like that there from Raymond Reefer. Joel playing away from his pad. He's got to be careful with that. Uh, so the final delivery of day number one. Providing he doesn't bowl a no ball. Providing he doesn't bowl a no ball, <laughs> will be delivered <laughs> by Shem Holder. <laughs> and Nandu uh, comes to a third slip. Mm. And he's bowled him. The final delivery produces a wicket for Shem Holder and uh, Team Headley. Inside edge onto the stump. And uh, with one to go. Raymond Reefer strides back in. 61 for three they are now at the end of today's play. And you just asked yourself if they could maybe take one more. How would they feel at the end of it? That celebration tells you that they certainly feel good about it. The anguish here from Raymond Reefer walking back to the pavilion. He's cursing himself. And I just said to you, I just didn't like his approach to the... The fifth delivery that he faced there. And inside edge onto his stump. He's going to be a madman in that dressing room. But that's cricket. Team Headley force him back here. 61 for three at stumps. 22 overs bowl completely. What a game here so far. We've seen 13 wickets fall in the day's play. Uh, certainly what a day of cricket here at Coolidge on day number one, uh, the final match of this Headley Weeks in Tri-Series. In terms of the innings and how it's shaped up so far, Tejan Ryan Shandipal, well, he got 12. Zachary McCaskey, he was the first to go. He just went for two. And Raymond Reefer, the final batter dismissed on the final delivery here on day number one. And the inside edge onto his stumps. He could probably say maybe one he could have left alone, but he's back inside. And that means that Alec Athley is the captain. He is the only not out batter at the crease. He's there on seven. In terms of the wickets, well, uh, Shem Holder, he certainly was the man for them. He picked up two, introduced uh, later into the evening. And the other wicket going to Marquino. And the other bowlers used Akeem Jordan, Justin Graves, and Anderson Phillip. None for them. But overall, you would have to say that maybe a, a relatively even day at the end of it. 177 all out. 
Team Headley after winning the toss and opting to bat first. And in replay, Team Weeks, 61 for 3 in 22 overs. It's certainly been a wonderful day of cricket. And tomorrow, as long as there's sunshine, we'll be back here at Coolidge for another fantastic day of cricket. But until then, it's good evening and goodbye.